court will call 20 CR 1358 People versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury's not present in the courtroom. Is there anything we need to take up outside the presence of the jury? Not from those people, Your Honor. Defense? Yes, Do we have everybody? Yeah, I didn't check. Yes. Okay. All right. All right, then let's go ahead and bring the jury in. And after a few short questions, we'll be playing another phone call from here, Judge, so make sure the uh, is connected through podium. Up okay. Yep. Need to turn the TV on too, so. Could have mixed them up because all the jurors are together. I know, that's why I... Um, yeah, but Todd Paul is yeah, right. Good, uh, right. And that's, stronger. yeah, that's what I thought. So, yeah. well, that's right. We're in day what, and I don't know any of these people. And I joke with these guys about. All rise for the jury, please. <laughs> Thank you. You may all be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358 People versus Letitia Stock. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Taking a minute here to make sure I have all of the right people because I understand that there were two jurors, uh, two juries that sort of came in at the same time and uh, wanted to make sure everybody made it to the right place. Um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, again, uh, I'm going to ask you the same question that I've asked you every day uh, previously. Has anything occurred since we were last together that causes any of you to believe you could not continue to serve as a fair and impartial juror in this case? If so, please raise your hand. No response. All right. With that, when we took our break, we were in the midst of uh, some um, telephone calls, I believe it was. Um, and Mr. Allen, how do you wish to proceed at this point? So we were in the middle of... Uh just so the record is very clear. Uh, Exhibit 57. 57 we finished. Actually, I think 58 we finished, Judge. And we had also at the same time um, former special agent John Grusing on the stand. Yes. He's here, so we would just ask him to retake the stand. Okay, Mr. Grusing, if you would uh, retake your seat in the witness stand, I remind you, sir, that you're still under oath. <coughs> Good morning, Mr. Grissing. Good morning. So we've uh, had an opportunity to listen to um, all of the phone calls we've got, still one more to go. How, in your experience, um, as you're working this particular case, are you using the information you're gathering from these phone calls uh, to develop what you talked about on Wednesday, this pattern of behavior for this particular defendant to inform you of your how you're going to interview her eventually? Yes, we were working as a team and talking with Al after each call to determine exactly what happened on that call. And then before uh, we would make contact with Leticia the next day, we would compare what we learned that day to previous days to see maybe what our new strategy would be. Did the strategy change like you're describing from phone call to phone call or from day to day sometimes? Yes, and even in the middle of a phone call, it might change depending upon her answers. I noticed in the, um, I think it was the last phone call, there was a change uh, where you start using the word, or Al does, uh, at your direction, I think, start using the word murder as opposed to accident. That's correct. Why did that change happen? <clears throat> it seemed to us that Letitia was not accepting that this was an accident, even though we kept on posing that through Al. And since she was rejecting that, uh, we encouraged Al to see if, if she would, what she would react to if we said, well, possibly this was a murder and possibly you were responsible. In, um, in that last call also, uh, People's Exhibit 58, uh, I want to ask you about uh, third person. Um, 
In your life experience, have you encountered people that have referred to themselves in a third person? At times, yes. Would that be both professionally and in just regular everyday life? Yes, most of it was outside of the FBI, actually. Um, is that Can that be a hallmark of somebody that's self-absorbed? It can be, yes. Okay. Did you find um, Letitia Stout during these phone calls and even during your interview with her that we're going to get to later this morning uh, to also be self-absorbed? Yes. Uh, almost every call was centered around her and how she was feeling instead of us trying to get her to focus on Gannon. Okay. <clears throat> As it relates to those last two phone calls, 57 and 58, that we listened to on uh, Wednesday afternoon, was there any other um, important information in those phone calls that you used to develop that pattern of behavior in your mind uh, going forward? And obviously this is a very open-ended question, but I want to make sure that uh, you have the opportunity to explain those issues. When Al posed to her about possible injuries to Gannon when he was talking with her about murder, uh, she removed Gannon from the conversation and said, you're saying words like, did I murder someone and did I hit anyone over the head with a board? And she basically took Gannon out of the injuries that Al was accusing her of doing. Um, we were, we were trained to look for gaps in, in a story, like uh, hours missing in a day, as well as illogical use of pronouns, and that jumped out at me. Why does that jump out at you? Because it was very personal, what they were discussing of, of Gannon, and then uh, when she's describing that possible that she would be responsible for hitting him in the head with a board or possibly murdering him, she takes Gannon out of the conversation. Okay. <clears throat> so basically depersonifying de Gannon? Correct. Okay. Uh, this next phone call is the last one that we've admitted. It's uh, People's Exhibit 59. It comes from uh, February 21st, 1.44 p.m. It's 29 minutes long. Um, at this point, Judge, I'd like to go ahead and publish that. It was previously admitted uh, during Mr. Stouk's testimony. And then when this particular phone call is done, we'll bring Mr. Grusing back up. All right, Mr. Grusing, you can go ahead and step down. Hello? Hey. So, hey, you said there was an emergency that you need to talk about? Yes, are you, are you, okay, because I sent you the message about stop and searching and I said are you ready to like work together with me yes I sent that to you okay so what is it what do you mean what is it I'm, I'm telling you oh my god I don't I don't know how to clear to say this do you believe me now that I didn't do anything wrong I, I mean I'm just trying to get you you made it seem like there was some urgent news that you had to tell me and this is you were talking about with the landfill that was old oh so there wasn't really anything urgent and pressing that would help me find Gannon I'm asking you are you ready to work together with your wife to do it yeah I, I, I'm t telling you I'm going off your list number one Gannon so let's let's focus on that okay so you read my list why are people sending this about lies about airports and all this and so I don't know you can't have a straight goal in common I don't know. I I don't care about social media. Never have. Who cares what people are saying? I I I, I, I rode I rode with my mom to the airport. Okay, where are you? Where am I? Yes. I told you I just stepped out of work on lunch break. Like as in the node? No, as in the headquarters. Okay. Are you gonna be like able to like stay with your wife so we can work on this together? I'm not making any promises. I just need, I need to know like now, like starting tomorrow. Well, you're not even here. If you're telling me starting tomorrow. With the dogs. I can't fly the dogs. Well, how did the dogs get to where you're at if you, they couldn't fly? I'm in the car with friends. I have, that's all I've been doing. The dogs can't get on that airplane. What friends? The only thing I've seen, and they've been sharing with different people, some adjacent people to be. 
that works with Harley. We stayed at their house. Okay. We've just been staying ever. The dogs cannot get on an airplane. Okay, fair enough. But I want to I, I want to get back to Gannon. I want you to tell me you're going to work together with me. That's not a problem. Be together so we can burn down everything, figure this out, get a plan in place. But why? Why? Why is why is the safety of a child contingent upon anything other than finding him? I can't help you if we're not together. Yes, you can. I can't do any of that together. The safety of a child is together because we have to write it down ten freaking times and walk through it. That's the safety. I'm at, I beg for this. But I still, I, I still don't understand how. You helping me with Gannon is contingent upon anything else. Not contingent. I am your wife. Did you file for divorce? Did you? I didn't hear what you said. What? Did you file for divorce? I told you that already. No. Do you want me to? Okay. No. Are, are you cheating on me? Am I cheating on you? No. Listen, we need to focus on Gannon, okay? You, you told me you had... Some big plan. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. You're right. It's a big plan to find my son. Absolutely. Okay, so listen to me. You made this, like you always do in these scenarios, you made it seem like we could fix this immediately. You got some big piece of information. Listen, listen. Listen to me and be open minded in order to. And with that comes you taking my side in order for it to even be. Working because if you go against me, you fuck me, you be whatever, you try to do whatever, all these things. We can't get to what you need. Okay, so uh, that, but that's what I wanted you to say because you just told me that finding Gannon is contingent upon what you, you getting what you want. You, yeah, you said if you, do, if I don't buck you or don't be with you and don't sleep with you, yeah, that. that's what you said in essence is that if I don't give you what you want, we don't find Gannon. So listen. But hold on, hold on. Listen, I'm going back in now. I thought you had some emergency. Number one, okay? If listen, if you tell me information I need to know on Gannon, like who took Gannon or what happened to Gannon, then we we talk about this other this other seven parts of your list, okay? But number number one is Gannon. Nothing happens if for anybody in the rest of my life, period, until I get information about Gannon or find him. I thought you didn't have a car. Sounds like a car to me. I told you, I dropped the old thing. I borrowed some old vehicle because I don't have a license. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. All right, number one. I need you to tell me that you have confidence and believe in me. Okay. Number one on the list is Gannon, so. Okay, I believe in you and have confidence in you that you'll tell me the truth. All right. Number one, find again. All right, so why come there hasn't been any kind of, like, locations, searches, anything outside of only where I went. The most concerning thing to you is that the first thing that has to be done. Okay, so tell me why that's not happening. That's a question we need to ask law enforcement, not me. But that's not something that you have even thought of to ask because, I mean, you called me to ask about this landfill that was so false that someone was messing around with your hands, being a dick, but you this. Your guy wants to have asked him this several times? I'm sure. I, yes, I've asked him this. What, why are you searching there? Well, you know, we can't tell you anything. Okay, so then, here, okay, next question. Everywhere that I went okay, was searched. Okay. I just went, I went, I went, I went. Acres upon acres upon acres when I didn't even go to those acres. Tell me. How do we find Gannon if none of those things, he was none of the places that I went, does that not make you open up your eyes and say that I'm not involved, someone else is? 
Yeah, you're absolutely right. I and like back to your first question. I believe in you, okay? But I believe you know that someone else involved in you know who. That's what I, I want. Don't. Okay. So, but but then but see then you keep sending me messages emergency. We can fix this right now, but then you never tell me anything. Number 2, that's the second thing. We know that, all right? My anything I haven't done. All right. So, why come when I gave them the information that I gave them, why did they why did they not look into it? Why did they not believe it? Why? What information about about Quincy Brown? Anywhere. Are you talking about Quincy Brown? What information are you talking about? No, I did not. What information? Okay. You just said they don't tell you anything, right? That's what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So, which means they would have gotten information from me. Okay. So, what information was it? That I told them they have not covered any areas except only the areas that I drove. Okay, but what information are you talking about? Why won't you give me that information? I'm the father of the missing child, Tisha. But I've already told you one time, and when I told you, it wasn't good enough. Well, tell me again. Tell me right now. I'm I'm in believe Tisha mode. Do you, okay, how long do you have? Like five to seven minutes. Honestly, I gotta get back in. Five to seven minutes. Well, what do you need? Tell me what you need. An hour? Ten minutes? Are you on lunch? I mean, I'm trying. I'm not trying to miss you up at work. No, I'm working I'm like not. I'm working like four hour days. So I mean, I come out because I told you I'd come out around this time. Okay, but I I got another hour or some work, and then I'm I'm leaving for the day because they're just trying. Like I told you this morning, they're trying to phase me back in. So I don't want to be out here for twenty thirty minutes. Okay, so then what time can you sit down and talk with just you? Not with you and all your other uh, clan. Right now. So you got 30 minutes to give me right now. Listen, I'll make up some bullshit when I go back in there. But yeah, I got, I'll got. i give you 30 minutes right now. Walk me through it. Okay. Now I need you to answer this question. Why... How many of the videos, so it can all make sense to you, have you saw other than one video? Listen, this is not Albert answers a bunch of questions. You tell me, no. No, you tell me what I'm missing or haven't seen. That That's what this is about. This is not you. Have you seen a video of anyone pulling into our yard after 4 o'clock? Have I seen a video? Can't you see this? Have I seen any video of that? I'm not sitting here answering questions. Okay, I haven't seen other than what's been released. I haven't seen what's other than been released to the public. I'm not sitting here getting questioned. You said you had a story to tell me about this. You didn't say I had a story. Okay. Okay. I'm helping you. Okay. Well, help me. Don't. Okay. I'm listening. Did you see any other videos? I'm listening. I'm not being questioned. Okay. Tell me what I'm missing in the video. Just tell me. Don't ask me. Tell me. In the video, when Harley comes home, and Lena, I'm sure you had to see this. Just tell me where Harley parked her car. I have no clue, Tisha. Tell me what you're trying to tell me. Now you get me upset. You haven't seen this. No, I have not seen anything. I told you that. I've seen what is on the internet on the video about the truck. That's it. Okay. So can you wait by your phone? For five minutes. You said you said thirty minutes, and just if you had something. But I need you to wait by your phone for five minutes because I have this girl's kids in here. Yeah, what? Her kids are in her car. I'm. I drove to get some food. I have her kids in here, so I just need five minutes to pull up in the yard for the kids to get out. What? But what? Why does that keep you from sending a video? It's not seen in the video. What? I don't want to talk about it with kids around. They're, they're, they could hear me. I'm asking you for five minutes. Just give me five minutes. Let me pull in the yard and they get out. Just tell me what you got to tell me. There's no kids in the car. I don't hear a peep, okay? Can you? There is a kid in the car. I knew... 
either you tell me now or I'm just going to put the phone down and go back into work, okay? Because I don't got time to sit here. You jerk me around. I'm tired of you jerking me around. Literally almost to the street. Uh, listen, I don't have five minutes. I got the 30 minutes you asked for. I got that. You start telling me whatever it is you got to tell me. Who cares if a kid's in the car? If I mean, th that, that should be a good thing that you know information that can help you find the missing kid. I'm sure they've heard about it. I don't know if they did. They might have not have. Well, I'm turning on her street. Just hold on. Yeah, okay. I swear to you, I'm literally turning on her I, street. I, I'm right not here. questioning you. I'm in belief Tisha mode. I'm just waiting for some facts that I can believe. Turning on her street. Okay, I believe you. Like, I'm passing the church right now. What church? And then I'm going on to this. All right. So. Church, church. I guess their church. I don't know if they go to church there. I don't know. Oh, you passed by it, but there's no sign. Okay, cool. Yeah, there was a sign. I'm looking at the the road. So I can okay. Make sure the turn. All right. Hey, I, I believe you. I think that I know my way around. I believe you. I'm not trying to question you. I'm just. It was. I just want to know if I knew the church or the right. pastor or okay. anything. Sorry, I'm. I'm literally turning in right now. All I'm going to do is pull over here. Can you go inside with your mom and then I'll just. Yeah, and I'll be in in a minute to let it dogs out. Hold on. All right, give me one minute. So, yeah, okay. You there? Tisha. Yep, I'm here. Let's stay here. And then um I'll get the dogs and I get back and if we just uh no. And then we came in now. Take you out of the work. Okay. Literally. Even though she's getting out. Make sure you do that um, stuff for your mom. All right. Where did you put mine at? Right there? Okay. Thank you. See you in a little bit. Sorry, her daughter is like old age. Um. Anyway, all right. Oh. The model that is telling you is, I need you to believe, Albert. I need you to believe that someone did take in it. I need you to believe that I've already given the police department the description. I've already did that. I need you to quit thinking that it's somebody just made up because it's not. Obviously, I didn't do it. There's no way possible that I could have been hours and hours away in a certain window. I need you to help them re-look at that. I'm telling you, Ganna would have left our neighborhood anywhere between that time frame, and it wouldn't even be surprised if it weren't like the kid in North Carolina. What certain window are you talking about? The certain window I'm talking about between three and anywhere that evening, because here's why. There was a lot of people out and about in the neighborhood, everywhere. So you weren't home during that certain window? Is that what you said? Do what? You said you weren't home during that certain window, or he could have left in that certain window? I'm saying that's when it happened. So, I, by the time I called, okay, Anna still could have been in the neighborhood. But you said when it happened. What is it, Tisha? I told you already. You haven't looked at it to see. Okay, go to the ring. See, we went out the front door. When we left, we went out the front door, okay? When we left, I set the alarm, I went out the front door, I came back in the front door, made sure the alarm was set, went out the garage. You can see that on the ring. 
when I came out, I think it was like 10.07, 10.08-ish, maybe, we left out, we were in the garage. Okay. There was no more, at that time, there was no more um, anybody going in and out, and the dogs do not set off the motion in the house. Right. They don't. Okay. Not, not when they're in their crates, you're right. Yeah, not when they're in their crates. And as sure as heck, if, the, if I'm somewhere upstairs, they're with me. They're not just roaming around doing their thing. They're following somebody that they look. Okay? When we came back, I told you 15,000 times about the car following us at Petco. The reason I left the car, the phone at Petco, you want to know why? Why don't y'all go check the alarm on it? I set an alarm for it to go off. If I hadn't came back in the time frame, to call the police. I set the alarm on there, Albert. It was no intention. I had my watch on. So it was no hiding where I was going or whatever. But wait, wait. So you set the alarm to call the police? Why? No, not because someone was following us. From the house or from Petco? From the house. Okay. To Petco. Okay. Then from Petco, I was going to, that's why I kept walking to the door to look, because Gannon was laying down, and he was playing the switch, so I knew that they knew nobody was in the car. That's what they thought. Maybe I was being over suspicious. Well, so, so, help me out here, because uh, I'm in believe teacher mode, so, okay, just so you know that, but somebody's following you from the house, and you leave Gannon in the truck? They never knew anybody was in the truck. But if they followed you from the house, didn't they see y'all get into the truck? I was not like from the house as in our house, like as in not the area. That all right. All right. Well, okay. All right. Help me be in belief teacher mode. Okay. All right. Don't start spinning. Just tell me. I'm spinning. Okay. All right. I'm trying to. I'm... Let me go through the whole entire thing. Okay. I'll, I'll, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So I get there. I was playing with these period pad things because apparently dogs have periods. Okay, so I'm holding the thing, and I sit down, and I said alarm, just for the alarm to go off. Like, yeah, whatever, whatever, that was for the alarm to go off. Maybe I was being too superstitious, superstitious. I just was being whatever, who, I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Sorry. And now you're yawning? I, I'm, listen, this is, I don't sleep good at night. I haven't for years, you know that, so go ahead. Albert, I was supposed to, like, deliver papers. Deliver? So I couldn't do it, Albert. Deliver papers for what? Tisha? When I went to Nevada, there was this pregnant lady. So I agreed to help the pregnant lady because she was really, really pregnant. She gets in, she gets in the car, which is why Gana was not in the front seat. He was in the back seat. You said, wait, wait, you said when you went to Nevada? I went through Nevada. Oh, oh. I'm like, what? You're in Nevada? Anyways, go ahead. Right. When I realized She's not pregnant. Once she gets in the car. Was this the same lady that was following you? I don't know uh -oh. if they were following us. I just know there was a car following us. When I get off, I turn where Harley gets the eyelashes done because I thought I would lose them. Then I saw a pregnant lady. She looked legit like eight months pregnant. What, what kind of car was following you? Because maybe they can't... I told you this 15 times. Oh, okay. It was like a, it was a blue something, like a blue little car, like a Cooper or something like this. Okay. So like a blue, not red, right? Just a blue one? No, it was a, the, red, the red earlier in the day was nothing. It's already been checked out. Okay. All right. The reason I know that one's been checked out. Because I had somebody in Lorson Ranch do it. 
All right, I'll just make sure I make sure I keep these cars straight. So there's the blue one, not the red one. See, the, you, I'm, I'm, no, don't get upset. Don't get upset. I'm just trying to get it straight. I'm not picking holes in your story. I'm just making sure we're on the on the blue car, okay? So now back to the pregnant lady that gets in the front seat. So the pregnant lady gets in the front seat, but she's not really pregnant. I don't know that she's not really pregnant, but she says she just needs a ride. I felt bad. She looked really, really pregnant, like long, like eight months. Hmm. Huh? I said, hmm, I'm just listening. You know what? I'm not going to help if you're going to do this to me. Listening and believing? I really, really came in this to be honest with you. Okay, and I'm just listening. No, you aren't. You're being a dick. I said, hmm. That's being a dick to me. I don't know why you're saying that, but does a pregnant lady know what happened to G? Does she know where Gannon went? Can I finish? Yeah, absolutely. She wasn't really pregnant. She had about, I don't even know how much money inside of this thing that makes her look pregnant. So you know where my mind immediately goes? Where? What would you think a pregnant person disguising as pregnant but money in her belly means? She probably robbed a bank. Okay, she might have. Or I am. She could be involved in something crazy, right? Yeah, I would. I would be scared of myself, even if it was a woman. Yeah, because that's pretty scary, right? You're making fun of this, like. I, it's no, I'm not. Right? If somebody got in my truck with a pregnant belly full of cash, I'd be worried to death. You're right. I don't know. I don't know how else to help other than to know we were in the wrong place at the wrong time. Okay. Are you talking about Petco? Yes, because Petco, I just was supposed to walk in Petco, look around, be normal, go so drop this lady off somewhere. Oh, so she told you to walk into Petco? Yes. Oh, okay. She forced me. She forced you. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah. Did she have a weapon, like a gun or a knife or something that, like, to threaten you or what? How do you think someone would force you? You're I, I, no, you're a tough girl, so I'm just going to take a lot. That's what I'm trying to say. You're, I mean. Somebody, you're a tough girl? Yeah, yeah. I don't think you'd be scared easy by somebody like that. So, it's. That's just what I'm saying. You probably start swinging unless she had a gun or a knife or something. This is a joke to you. No, I'm serious. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. You, you finally are getting like legit, and you're. I mean, it's a joke to you. I'm sorry you think that, but go ahead. I'm not. Forget it, man. You're not wanting to stand by my side. You don't want to help. I'm right here, standing by your side, listening to the truth. Okay, I, I'm in belief teacher mode, like I told you. Yeah, and then, and then what, you're going to tell me I'm telling a lie and hang up? Uh, uh, are you telling a lie? No, that's what you're going to do. You're not going to believe it. I told you it was beyond your wildest imagination to know he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He was in the wrong place or y'all were in the wrong place? Okay. We was okay. in the wrong place. Okay. All right. I, I mean, are you, are you telling me this? I don't know. You want me to believe you, but I feel like you're just telling me something to make me feel better about Gannon missing, okay? So, I mean, because it was kind of like the Quincy Brown thing. I mean, I mean, now it's a pregnant lady with cash in her belly, okay? I believe you. What's next? What happened next? It, now you're making sense. No, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make sense of all of it, okay? You want me to believe you, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. Tell me the rest of the story. Albert, to sum it up, it's just being caught up in the wrong place at the wrong time with people 
who are money laundering wanting me to want me or whoever they can get to deliver a paper to these Mexican restaurants and you're supposed to get packages back from them. And I wouldn't do it. So that's why we were on County Line Road because I was scared to death. We, I left. So I was going round and round and round to make sure that no car followed me. So is that where they were trying to send you or you just went there because you knew that you knew that was out in the boonies? No, because 25, I got on Interstate 25 and it was backed up. Oh, so you did like we did that one time and took a detour? With nothing to do with whatever. They've already searched the entire area. I'm innocent. <clears throat> That's who has Gannon, okay? The pregnant lady with the cash? No, because I've already given it to the Mexican guy. Why do you think I told you that about the Quincy thing because the whole Mexico? We need to be looking at any routes going into Mexico, and I've been telling you this. No, but you took no. Okay, all right. I'm out of believe Tisha mode now, okay, because you told me Quincy Brown was in Colorado Springs. His family told your news reporter that he's in Mexico, okay? You didn't know that beforehand. And of course, you have nothing to say about that. I'll talk to you later. Mr. Grusing, if you would, uh, I assume that's who you want, right? Yes. Mr. Grusing, if you would resume your seat in the witness stand, I remind you, sir, that you're still under oath. Mr. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Mr. Grusing, um, we talked about uh, just prior to you, uh, us actually re listening to that last phone call about uh, Letitia being very focused on herself as opposed to finding Gannon. Did there seem to be a focus on, uh, from her standpoint, on making sure she was going to stay with Al? Yes. What's the significance of that in your mind as an investigator? She wanted uh, finding Gannon to be contingent upon Al coming back into the marriage with her. Was it fairly consistent that she would um, precondition giving information on at Mr. Stauk uh, promising to stay with her? Yes. Did that help with your uh, billing pattern of behavior um, preparing for her interview? It did. <laughs> Does that also give her a way to calculate the flow of information that law enforcement got? She was, yes. In what way? Well, and Al was doing a good job of deflecting questions. She was probing for what he knew, what he had seen. And uh, as Al and our team knew from now, whatever facts we would give her would shift her story to meet those. Along those lines, was it clear based on these phone calls that she was very closely following the advancement of the investigation? Yes. And would she appear to, from your perspective, use the information that she would get from following the investigation and then explain away things that might be found in different areas? She would. And because it was only her and Gannon together, it's only her story that mattered. Um, did that appear to be an effort to manipulate the investigation? Yes. Is that a calculated move on her part? It was. There was that one section in that last phone call where um, she is expressing concern with areas of searches. Is that showing that indication that she's following the investigation from afar? Yes, you're right. Uh, was she still at this particular point um, trying to imply that she was in the Colorado Springs area? Yes. Um, did you know specifically where she was at this particular time? Yes, we knew she was in South Carolina. Yeah. Talking about uh, her efforts to manipulate, manipulate the investigation, um, did she point uh, throughout all of these phone calls at random um, unknown persons? 
Uh, it's hard to say random. Uh, it seemed to be somewhat calculated. Random from your perspective as an investigator, calculated from her perspective, is that what you're suggesting? Yes. Okay. So we have uh, Eduardo, right? Right. Uh, the information that she gave about identifying Eduardo, so any identifying features, do you remember that right now? I don't. Okay. Um, if it was basically a 5'8", uh, thinner Hispanic male uh, with pockmarked face, uh, is that a very detailed or not very detailed description of somebody? Not if you have extensive interaction with him, which she told us in her story that she did. That was prior to me coming on, so I was reviewing that information. Okay. And then changing it later to say, well, maybe he was actually a black guy like a Puerto Rican. Correct. Um, and then developing into Quincy Brown. Yeah, I believe next she went to Uncle Matt. I was going to get to Uncle Matt here in just a second. Um, do you remember as it develops into uh, the Quincy Brown story? I do. Did that coincide with the same time that uh, Most Wanted uh, release was issued for Quincy Brown in Colorado Springs Media? Yes. And then you mentioned Uncle Matt. Did she give any um, identifying features for an Uncle Matt? She did not. She laid uh, um, the blame for Uncle Matt at Gannon saying this was a Gannon had been talking about Uncle Matt prior to Gannon's disappearance, and then Gannon was jumping on Uncle Matt, and then Gannon disappeared because of Uncle Matt. There's that one portion of uh, time where um, she's at least relaying the idea that she's driving in a car with some other kid in this last phone call that we just listened to? Yes. Um, could you hear any noises um, from that side of the phone call um, that indicated a kid was in the car? We could not. Did you hear any doors open or close like she was indicating she just dropped a kid off? No. There's also reference by her about um, driving past a church. Do you remember that portion? Yes. And Al actually presses her and says, uh, what's the name of the church? Correct. Um, I didn't hear, did she give a name of that church? I didn't hear her give a name. At least I didn't. There was a, an interesting um, quote that she made in that particular call, and it was, I need, I need you to believe someone took Gannon. What's the significance of, of that type of a statement from the defendant? Well, she was, again, the last one with him, and she's now tried four or five someones, uh, and now she's not even, she's not giving us an identification of this pregnant lady. Uh, we were not scripting Al to yawn or do those things uh, during this one, but it was obvious that this was not going to lead us anywhere closer to Gannon. So with, with her not giving us a, a name or anything to follow up on, uh, we were fine with Al just uh, being reacting naturally to this new story okay the leading up to the the pregnant lady with uh some sort of a money pregnancy thing um was there any indication that somebody followed her from the home area of lorison ranch to petco there was not Did, were you aware that she actually made two uh petco visits on january 27th that were basically two hours apart on that day yes was there any indication uh, through the investigation that someone was forcing her to go into Petco? There was not. As it relates to this uh, pregnant lady with the money thing, um, did she ever give any detailed information about a uh, description of this pregnant lady with money coming out of her belly? No. She mentioned uh, money laundering in Mexican uh, restaurants. Uh, Curious your thoughts on that angle of it, that uh, there's a description of Eduardo being a slim Hispanic guy, then she changes it to a black guy or a Mexican guy, and now we're back to Mexican uh, money laundering uh, clans. Thoughts on that from your perspective as an investigator? Well, she goes back and forth whether it's someone involved in the criminal element must be responsible for someone like this, or Gannon is responsible for through accidents. So she's, she's ascribing criminal behavior to most of these people that would have inflicted injuries on him or taken him. Okay. And um, as it relates to blaming others, uh, 
Does she consistently almost try to shift blame onto Gannon? She does. In what ways? It's accidental. Uh, well, it, she did it at the very first by saying he just left, ran away. Uh, but then it, throughout, she will say that he was involved in an accident or he stepped on something or he hit his head or he busted his lip, those sorts of injuries that he's causing to himself. As it relates to those descriptions of various injuries, does that also include the bleeding from the rectum? Yes. Okay. Um, in in those descriptions, it, was she also giving information that only uh, somebody with knowledge of those injuries would have, the actual injuries that Gannon suffered? Correct. Was that significant to you at all? It was, and I believe it was on the... 13th, the very first phone call we had, uh, it's the first time that she mentioned Quincy Brown or the most egregious injuries she ascribed to him. And that was uh, the bleeding from the head, uh, the hands and the knees, and then blood pouring from his face. So she was describing, you know, things. And as we were going, we were trying to have, how can we use that to help find Gannon? Um, but then she would shift later and say, uh, you know, whether it was the burns or the face, that those injuries were not as significant. So we were just back and forth. But throughout, if you look at the, the whole picture of these 10, 12 calls, she was describing a significant amount of injuries to him. As, as we listen to all of these calls, and, and I think we've actually admitted 16 separate phone calls into evidence in this case, uh, were there actually even more than that that were conducted um, that were not admitted in this trial? Yes, I believe so. Um, how did you use the information that you gathered in those particular phone calls uh, that you participated in? How are you using that to build the pattern of behavior for this specific defendant? Well, our primary goal was to find Gannon at this point in the investigation, and uh, we were, uh, information was coming in daily. We had a whole timeline across the uh, their break conference room that we would add new data to each day. So even with the story about the, the pregnant lady and the, the blue car and whatever else we're trying to compare, it will something new give us a clue to where Gannon is? And then secondly, we're, we're looking at building a case against Leticia and working towards a, an arrest and an interview. Okay. So let's jump into that. Um, when was the defendant ultimately arrested? March 2nd, 2020. What were circumstances that led to that arrest as it relates to your involvement? So the sheriff's office and the FBI agents that were assigned the case in Colorado Springs had drafted an affidavit that a judge had signed off on. And uh, our team had been communicating with law enforcement in South Carolina to arrange an arrest and possible interview of her if she was willing to afterwards. Did you, in fact, travel from Colorado to South Carolina uh, to, conduct, to be participating in that? Yes. Was that on March 2nd exactly? Yes, it was. Um, describe for the jury um, how, were you there when she was taken into custody? I was. Describe that for the jury. I was on the very periphery, wasn't close, but it was in a mall parking lot, I believe, and local law enforcement did the arrest. I did come up and inter introduce myself to Leticia and told her I was with the FBI in Denver and I would like to speak with her that we were going to take her to a, a law enforcement facility. Did you, in fact, then um, have her transported to that law enforcement facility? Yes. Was that uh, at the Myrtle Beach um, Police Department? It was. Did you interview her there? Yes. Your may I approach with People's Exhibit 354? Me. Do you recognize this exhibit? I do. How do you recognize it? That's the DVD of the recording of the interview I had with Leticia. I have initialed it and dated it. Is it a fair and accurate copy of that um, interview that you conducted on March 2nd of the defendant? Yes. At this time, I move for admission of People's Exhibit 354. Yes. No objection, Your Honor. Exhibit 354 will be admitted. Go ahead. Do you know roughly um, how long this particular interview is? Approximately five hours. 
And let's go over, um, is there an initial phase of an interview where you maybe are building rapport with somebody? Yes, letting whoever I'm speaking to understand the purpose of the interview, explaining why I, why I am there. Uh, and then uh, because Letitia was not free to leave, I advised her of her rights pursuant to Miranda. Is it typical to do the advisement of rights under Miranda um, when somebody's in custody? Yes. What's the purpose of that? To let her know that she's doesn't have to talk to me if she doesn't want to. She can have an attorney present. And she's free to leave at any time. Is this something that you just talk to somebody about? Or is there a form that you... There's a through? form that I go through. Okay. Yes. Uh, do you actually have them sign the form? Yes. Did you do that with this defendant? I did. Do you know what name she used to sign that form? I don't remember. I'm guessing it's Letitia Stauk. Does it say Tisha Stauk on it? That sounds right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, did she indicate that she understood her rights? She did. Did she even go further than that in trying to put uh, conditions on a specific right as yes. it relates to attorney? Yes. Okay. Uh, did that indicate that um, to you from your perspective that she appeared to understand those rights and, and could contemplate them and potentially even try to put additional conditions on them? Correct. Now, at this time, I'd like to start publishing, and what I intend to do with uh, People's Exhibit 354 is just keep Mr. Grusey on the stand, play portions based on questions that I'm asking. Obviously, the whole um, interview is in evidence, Judge. All right, go ahead. Okay. Here, here, here. Here, here, here. Try to pull that chair back a little bit. There's nothing for it. Oh, we are going to record this. And Judge, I'm wondering if uh, we can check with the jurors to see. This one's a little quieter than the other recorded phone calls, if they can hear this okay. Uh, the other thing is, it sounds as though your plan is to play part of this and then stop it and ask questions during part of it. Is That's that right. Yeah, right? It'll, I'll do this throughout, Judge. Okay. Um, I think for the purposes of the record to remain clear, you just need to identify um, the timestamp where you're stopping. Yeah, I will. Yep. About as loud as I can make it. Okay. Let's see. Can you all hear it okay? So Letitia and John Grusing at the FBI met you in the mall parking lot. Do you know why you're here? Did they inform you, the officers, of why you're under arrest? I'm under arrest? Yes. For what? For uh, damage stops. Uh, a warrant was issued out of Colorado. Okay, but no, someone could have just called me. A big thing I would have called. Yeah, and apologize for that. Um, because of the nature of the warrant, it being a murder warrant, there's, there's, and that's what I'd like to talk with you about today. That's why we're not having a cast of thousands here and whatever, is we would like to get to the bottom of what happened there. Um, I know that a lot of things have gone on with your life, a little bit of how this turns out. Okay. But because you were arrested and you're not free to leave, I need you to explain and advice of rights before we can talk. Well, I mean, so I'm getting charged with what now? So you were charged in uh, a judge in Colorado Springs signed mm -hmm. off. So the way this case worked mm -hmm. was El Paso County got the first, the original case. They didn't have enough manpower to work it. Okay. So they called the FBI. Right. Part of the, for the, for the FBI, um, an extension of the profiling unit, mm -hmm. and I came in and assisted. And I've been helping for about the last three weeks. Okay. So our evidence response team, you've probably seen that on the news, we've been doing some searches, et cetera. And then other FBI agents have been writing warrants. So a lot of warrants have been written. We've gone through the court. El Paso Sheriff's Office and FBI have worked together. Okay. 
and we found enough, you call it probable cause, mm-hmm. for a warrant to be issued. So that's why you're here today. Okay, a warrant for what, though? It was for the murder. What of murder? Gannon, Gannon Stout. So Gannon is murdered. That's what the evidence shows. Okay. And I'm happy to share with you evidence, but we can't have a conversation unless you're advised of your rights. Okay, what am I right? So this is an advice of rights form. I'll fill it out at the top. And you don't have to answer any question. Oh, I am. Okay, so I'm not going to force you to answer anything. If you want this interview to be done, it's done. So we are in South I'd like you to initial these as we go through them. Uh, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions. You have the right to have a lawyer with you during questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed for you before questioning if you wish. And if you decide to answer questions to a lawyer present, you have the right to stop answering at any time. I'm not going to force you to say anything. Okay, so I had already, like, had reached an attorney, but all the information. So it's, it's up to you. I'm not going to force you to say I mean, if you don't I can to- talk to you, but, I mean, the, the last time I asked for an attorney talking to them, I wasn't allowed that after I asked. That's not how this is going to go. This would be a conversation. You have more integrity being FBI that you would do that. Without a family to protect. So I'm not going to violate any. You don't mind doing that at all. Um, But at at any point, I would like to call my attorney. Yes, ma'am. Is that okay? That is okay. Okay. So can I write that in somewhere? Well, that's this one right here. If you decide to answer any questions from a lawyer present, you have the right to stop at any time. And if you need food, water, whatever else, this is not, we're not going to have people with guns standing outside trying to intimidate you. I want this to be your statements and our conversation. Okay. So, I was thinking of a lot of things to say to you today because I've been helping, I've been involved. Mm-hmm. I've unfortunately worked a lot of missing kids mm-hmm. cases. That's why they called me to do this. Okay. A lot of time with Mark, who was the dad. Dylan, who actually was in Colorado Springs with mom, mm-hmm. went to go see dad. This was in November of 2012. Mm-hmm. And uh, then he disappeared. It's a lot like what happened here. What I think happened with Mark is uh, Mm -hmm. and Mark wouldn't let him go. And I think Mark got upset. I think Dylan did some things that irritated Mark. I think there was just a punch in the face sort of thing. Things went downhill from there. Well, Um, I'm not not saying that's what happened with you. I can help you because what you're charging me with is not, or whoever, is not the case. Okay. Gannon is alive, okay, and I can help you. Okay, great. But see, here's the problem. When I reached out to people about getting help, I said, hey, I need someone who's going to help me to help you guys. I couldn't get that from me at we all. We're happy to help you. Okay, so I understand you might say you have, like, whatever evidence that you might say you have, but that's not a case. It did not hurt my child, okay? Need more assistance besides the FBI. You're probably going to need some DA. Probably need a lot, a lot of help. Okay? I'm happy to get whatever help. Okay. How do you know? But I can't to... help you unless people are willing to help me. And I did offer every opportunity to sit down and talk with not only my husband but with Landon to try to come up with the best plan. I really did, and I've been begging every single day. Please, 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 don't think this. You, I know you're expert in your field, okay? I know you may say you have whatever evidence you have, but it's just...
just not true. Okay, not. It's not true that Gannon's dead. I'm not going to sit here and say a hundred percent. I can tell you that there's really things that wouldn't have occurred that I can help you guys with to know that. And it leads back to some things just being in the wrong place at the wrong time. That's, that's the truth. Okay. That is the very truth. And every day that went by, I had to do nothing but not only protect myself, but protect my family in this, protect other people in this. And it's just, that's just what it's been. I think our biggest problem is what happened at the house then. At, at the house? Yes. Well, there's nothing that would have happened at the house that has anything to do with what I, what I'm talking about at all. That has nothing to do with anything. Because you guys have, like, clearly put out this information about him not coming home and then this and that and the other. And I get, like I say, experts. People with forensics are experts. But it's just not the truth. It's not the truth. And until I know that I, I got to get help from some people other than someone just having me in a room. You got to get help to do that. I got to get help to give everyone what they need because I'm going to need my mom protected. I need my brother and sister protected. And most importantly, I'm going to need Harley protected. And on that same note, I'm also going to need other people in Colorado protected. And the people say FBI can offer that protection. I can. How? How? If it involves so that, an so eleven year old, if it involves finding an eleven year old, then we can. And it means that we can have new identities. It does. Yeah. I've had to do that before. We call it an informant, but we can do it for. We can How do, do it for the Who else would you trust? I don't know, like, sir. I don't know. There's nothing that happened at any house. Nothing that happened at any house that would have hurt, harmed, murdered, done anything to anyone. Okay? Wrong place, wrong time. You were in the wrong place or Gannon was? I was. What about Gannon? We we all were in the wrong place. My, even my family was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Even Raina, even Harley. Okay? With all of us in the wrong place at the wrong time. And I well, swear to you on that. So... But I got just, just like help. you have trust issues. Let me tell you where I am. Okay. So from with the FBI, where when a child goes missing, if they're under age, right. then we can get involved, and it's it can be even a kidnapping. So if, if Gannon is moved from one point to another without right. his, you know, will, then it's a child kidnapping. Right. And so that's what we're working with. That. And with me as a federal employee, mm -hmm. uh, with me working a federal case. Because right now it's filed with the district attorney, right. but the U.S. attorney can file it as well. Okay. Does that make sense? What do you mean? The U.S. attorney is the federal okay. uh, prosecutors. Gotcha. Right now it's on the state. When you're talking to me, uh, we are recording this for your integrity and mine. Right. But if you'd rather not say something, I mean, if I would rather you just say I don't want to answer it instead of telling me something that's not true. Okay. Because there's something called false statements, which is a thousand, it's U.S. Code 1001, to where if you lie to us during an investigation, that can right. be a year of prison time. Right. Okay. So that's why I said on this last one, if you want to not answer a question, I'm not going to push you. Okay. Okay. So, so with these people, you know, taking Gannon or whatever else, if it's not true, just say I'd rather not answer that. Okay. Because we're different than your local detectives and whatever else. It's not a felony to lie to them. Okay. Okay, so my goal, though, is to find Gannon. Right. And if you need protection, if there truly is someone out there, right. we can provide that. That's not me. Lying. Happen though, I will need you to explain what happened from that night. Which night? The night that he disappeared. So I've stopped it at twelve minutes, Judge. Um, just as a pause. <laughs> In the beginning portion of that, uh, Mr. Grusing, when you're advising her that she's been charged with murder, um, it appears that she acts like she's confused. Um, what was your impression of that? Uh, 
Yeah, so eventually she asked me, so Gannon's been murdered, but yeah, she appeared to be confused as to why she was there and what investigation might have been going on at the time. Um, she makes a statement, um, you could have just called me? Yes. Was that basically indicating that you could have just called her and she would have come in and talked? Yeah, and that's something I've heard multiple times over my career. Of Why didn't you just call me instead of I have to be arrested for this? Were you aware um, that very early on in this investigation, um, she was resisting calls from Detective Bethel to come in and give an interview? I was. Um, she makes a statement that she's been begging every single day um, for somebody to help her and says stuff like, I can't help if you don't help me. Um, what was your takeaway from that? Yeah, I think I could couple that with when she said that she would need even more help than the FBI could provide, whether it's DEA, and then she rolled into she needs secret identities for herself and multiple people. I think she was giving me a task that she thought I, I couldn't meet, and therefore she might not have to talk about difficult things. Um, is the FBI equipped to do those things for witnesses that need protection? We are. It takes a very extraordinary circumstance, or but they could if they had to. Okay, so I guess the question is, is if that was actually necessary here, could the FBI have provided that? Yes. So you were the right person to talk to if that was the eventuality? I could get the right person for her. Okay. <laughs> You're not omnipotent? No. <laughs> uh, I want to jump into uh, the next section. Um, did you have a chance to uh, talk with her about the calls that you had, we'd gone over those consensual recorded calls. Yes. I'm going to jump to 12 minutes and 30 seconds, Judge. I can find my mouse on the screen. There it is. It's actually 12 minutes and 33 seconds. I can't get that three to cooperate with me. You mean like talking to him? Oh, okay. So let me just let me just explain that to you. And you might think that's like super, like I'm not going to judge you here. Let's whatever. Talk. To him was I. The reason I already knew someone was listening, mm -hmm. but because of him not ever like being like supportive, and I tried originally to talk to him when he first got there. That was the only reason I said those things to him was just because I was out of anger and out of like her and not being able to have like support. It was nothing to do with like, like I'm sitting here going to tell you these That was just anger, stupidity. Council approach, please. Let's pause that 13 minutes and 11 seconds. Picking back up from where we left off, it's at 13 minutes and 11 seconds and playing again from there. And I already knew, like, I even, if you heard it, you heard me say a lot of times, I know people are listening because I know the same time that someone called every time I could hear people. Right. I knew that. So me saying those things to him was just being, what, what is the word you want to call it? Selfish or restitution, whatever you want to call it, just because that was, I was, I was hurt by him not wanting to work together to figure this out because i did have like originally initial different thoughts on certain things and that was me trying to like, like basically read him and try to figure the situation out so i understand that you may have heard those or whatever you may have heard and that's okay because that totally was not it, that was not me trying to be right. that was just being stupid to him to so i have a angry. question so, um, and it's, it's paused right now at 13 minutes and 59 seconds. Mr. Grusing, <clears throat> um, what were your impressions of her saying that she's giving all this misleading information in those phone calls because she's just angry? 
Yeah, I don't think there's much more to comment besides that. Uh, instead of uh, being focused like Al was and the rest of us of trying to find what happened to an 11 year old boy, she was again focusing on her feelings. Does it also though show um, potentially that it's very calculated that she's doing things in response to what's happening in the investigation. Yes, that's correct. Okay. And then we'll just play from here until 15 minutes and 42 seconds. Um, in this particular section, um, do you remember asking her about mental health and sound mind and those types of things? Yes. Okay. So we'll play starting here and go to 15 minutes and 42 seconds. In regards to that, do, were you of sound mind? I mean, were, did you have, are, are you undergoing any treatment for anxiety or any depression or anything like that right now? Or? I mean, like, you mean, like, I don't, I mean, I've had anxiety since I was like 16, 17, okay. but like, as far as like um, undergoing like any kind of special treatment, you know, like sometimes I might have to take like a little rest. Right. But um, I didn't see like counselors or like, anything for any kind of like, depression. And then plus two, like right now, with I mean, already got medical records. I'm mark I'm eight weeks pregnant, so I can't do any kind of okay. like uh. I, I mean, I wish I could because then it would help a lot with anxiety, but right. I can't. Okay. But so I, you were of sound mind when you were talking to Al. You were just, you were upset with him and upset with the situation of him not being by your side through this whole thing. Right. And, but then at the same time, like, I have to sit back and think, you know, in a person's brain, you don't, you hear a hundred different things. You do get, do whatever. I just wanted him to know, because he knows, like, I've been, I've been taking care of our kids. Like for so long, why you? I'm not hearing bash either one. Of them. I just they had a lot of different separate situations going on that I've mm -hmm. always taken care of the kids, and so there's been times I've protected them from so many people. You yeah. know. So it's now paused again at 15 minutes and 42 seconds. Um, why are you asking these types of questions about sound mind and mental health uh, based questions? Well, I spoke with the district attorney's office before the interview, and they suggested that I ask them. Uh, I don't always ask these of um, people that I'm interviewing, but because of the varying stories and because of uh, the district attorney's office and investigators looking forward to trial, we wanted to make sure that she knew what she was doing uh, while she was talking to Al during our investigation, and then while I was even talking to her at the present um when when these types of investigations are ongoing um is the investigation goal to try to build a case that will plead out or do you have to assume that it will go to trial we assume that it'll go to trial um you asked her was she sound mind um during this time do you remember what her response was in that um she said that well, I can't remember right after that, but she referenced the reason why she was doing what she was doing to Al uh, okay. was to make him come back to her in the relationship, basically. In, in, the, in that particular um, call, or I'm sorry, in that particular portion of the interview, it's at 15 minutes exactly when you ask about, were you sound mind? And she says, right. Yes. Um, and then she goes into that description of taking care of the kids. Does this start to build in your mind uh, when we talk about that pattern of behavior and then that pathway to violence that you talked about? I haven't gotten to the question yet. I was going to say, we have to, let's get all the way to the end of the question first, and then we'll see uh, whether it's leading or not. Um, does that information that she's giving you there um, build into uh, that grievance portion of that pathway to violence? Yes. In what way? She was articulating that in her mind, she felt like she was a good mother and uh, she was a good caretaker for Gannon. And uh, that uh, she had over the phone calls expressed multiple grievances. And we actually ad addressed that later on in the interview when we go through her phone searches. Uh, you know, we go into more of the grievance portion later, but just that she brought up her being the caretaker initially. Uh, 
is something that we address later on in the interview. Yeah. Do you remember asking her um, about what kind of dad Al is to Gannon? I don't at this Okay. Point. Well, let's jump to that portion of the interview um, starting at 15 minutes and 53 seconds. I'm actually going to jump to 15 minutes and 49 seconds and we'll play it to 17 minutes and 10 seconds. Like I've had to step in and protect them a lot, mm -hmm. so many times. What kind of dad would you say Al was to Gannon or is to Gannon? Oh, he's a good dad. Like, I mean, as far as like being like there for him and like, you know, how can I say it? Like, if he says, hey, I want to go do something, Albert works a lot, so he's tired and his hours are like, kind of, you know, up in the air here and there. But for the most part, he, like, is always trying to make sure he puts, you know, like, the kids, military first, and always will be, and that's the mindset. And then... Did you go into the marriage knowing that? The kids. That military well, was grew, first? Well, I grew up, like, knowing that my stepdad was here. Actually, that's why I was looking at that guy's name. But my stepdad was here. Um, so I lived on, like, a so, like, I maybe didn't understand it from parent perspective. I mean, I'm sorry, thoughts for sake, for sake of, like, my mom's perspective. Right. But I did understand it from, like, a child perspective. But the thing about it was is Albert didn't have to, like, go do deploying or anything like that. It was mostly, like, work through the night type thing. So it was, like, we were blessed in that way of not having mm -hmm. have to see him go overseas or, or something like that. Right. So um, when you're asking her about uh, how Al is to Gannon uh, as a father, um, she references that she grew up in as a military child as well. Correct. Uh, she mentions her stepdad. Um, at any point, either during the phone calls or up to this point in the interview, did she ever mention any abuse by stepdad? She did not. In that last section that we heard where you're asking her about being in sound mind, um, she mentioned having anxiety and taking lorazepam. Did she mention anything during that section of, of this interview about having any severe mental health disorders or diseases? No. Did she ever mention um, being in treatment for extended periods of time for any mental health issues? No. Uh, did she ever mention um, losing consciousness and uh, not showing up someplace else that she didn't recognize? No. Did you go over family history with her during this interview? Yes. So let's watch that next. And it's uh, essentially 17 minutes and 12 seconds to 21 minutes and 20 seconds. And you guys have been married six years, five years? Five years. Five years. Five years. And yeah. you came to the marriage of Harley. Right. And then Elaine is the youngest. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we had like... Maybe I think four or five went to like kind of midterm this year because we always try to like have kids and I don't know like something must have happened like when I get to a certain point like, what if it, I'm more kids right but, yeah do you think I was faithful to you was he cheating on you um I don't like I never we never had like any conversations until like of course now like recently but like prior to that we never had like a um, like buses or it might be something like Albert type person when he got work he just liked to come home he wasn't like um, oh I'm gonna go do this with people he just wasn't that was the good part because he wasn't you know like not saying you can't like I'm sure you might say if a football game's on you know watch a movie right usually for the most part we do it like do it together do something together but it was never really like having our own people that we did things with but we never like had issues of anything like that. Most of the time, the issues that we always had was I never wanted the kids to ever come back here a lot of times during like, their break and we begin. But he would always say, Well, I have to, I'm obligated. So you don't think he was cheating on you prior to this whole thing going on with Um or Did you subscribe to him? That Albert was cheating me? Mm -hmm. No, the I mean, there's been times in the past where I've thought that he's talked to other women, you know, like on messages and things like that. 
But then he's also like, you got to have my phone in the past. He would have saw that he's always apologized for, you know, like this. Are you guys considering divorce or no? You and Albert? I didn't know anything about any kind of divorce. Like, I know, like, we've used the term loosely, you know, because there was a lot of stress having to deal with, um, like, the situation with Brandon. It was a lot of stress because, like, we fought so hard and so long to get kids mm -hmm. to, like, a safe, you know, uh, situation. So it was very hard to, like, you read someone and they're so emotionally like upset about the kids not being with us and we not being able to protect them that it was kind of hard. It took a lot, you know, told throughout that time frame of like Alaska, I'm sure, right. time in Alaska. So doing that time in Alaska and stuff like that was very hard to, to like have to see him be so upset from so many miles away. Mm -hmm. You know, we get calls that kids didn't have a place to stay. We get calls that they were in the back of their car and people were being arrested and so that took its toll in the terms of like figuring we should not have to like go through these things but then once like we got to Colorado um you know we all could be in like one place and then it was like kind of at first it was like kind of hard because we have been you know back and forth to Alaska for so long because you know if you know the background I had the kids here for their school year, for, right. for Gannon and Lena. So it was Lena was the first grade year, again, fourth grade year. Yeah. So they would have went to school here. So I had them here with us then. Um, still with that, it was both, like being part, going back and forth, traveling mm -hmm. on holidays, right. things like that. So that would have been the most. No, just with time, like, so when I got, we got to Colorado, it was just like, okay, we're here. You know, we are together. And, we said stupid things to each other, like, I don't know. <laughs> but like the things that we could do to be like, okay, we'll forget all this, or if you do this, we'll do it for y'all. Right. But at least. So it's paused at twenty one twenty. And before I jump into these next questions, just just noticing the time. Do you want me to go to about ten thirty, and then? It, it's up to you. I was actually just going to say whenever you could find a break in the next five minutes or so. Okay. It's up to you. Okay. Sounds good. <clears throat> This particular section, Mr. Grusing, um, was she able to recount um, details over this five-year period that her and Mr. Stout had been together? Yes. Did she indicate any trouble on remembering these details? No. <clears throat> Did she also even uh, give you recounting uh, silly arguments that they would have, that kind of thing? Yes, she did. Did that indicate to you that she appeared to be able to recall things fairly easily? Yes. Do you remember um, talking with her about uh, where she starts talking about people are being upset and she, she, she uses the words hard part, this is the hard part? Yes. Okay, let's go ahead and watch that section. And this is uh, from 2345 to 2551. I'm actually going to start at 2335, and then we'll go to uh, 2551. From a distance going through that, because I still deal with dads 14 years later mm -hmm. who are looking for their daughters right. at bus stops and malls and whatever. So. And see, that's the hard part is, like, people are, like, you know, being upset. And, like, I haven't had the opportunity to, like, even just sit down and be, like, okay, well, this is. I've given my life to take care of these children. I, I have. They should You know, right. and that, that I, I've done that. Mm -hmm. It's so hard because inside that, I don't get to express that emotion to have, you know, to say to anyone, anything like that. And that's the most difficult part. Yeah. Because I've had to just be like, how can I, how can I make the situation back, you know, like, let's be honest. I'm John. I'm John. Saying, yeah. I mean, like Albert was talking about, and again, whether you make mistakes or not. I mean, literally, woke up on Christmas, I always make it about the kids on Christmas because they don't get to spend Christmas with them. So, like, if they went home for holidays, you know, they might leave, you know, school gets out. We might not see them until, you know, January. So, I, I always spent my time trying to make sure every time, I didn't believe in certain holidays, I did Halloween, but to make sure every, ho every 
holiday was like revolved around the situation. So for if you look at the situation, I went, you know, we have every house and cars and we have whatever. So I worked my entire life in education. Not a mm -hmm. So to me, it's like everything I worked so hard for, everything I worked in you know, the military or, you know, service and things like that, no matter how much we had did on that, it took us everything to get to right. and, and that was where we were at in our safe spot. So for a person who can you know, take care of everyone and do everything for everyone and then just cannot do it for a split second, that's the hardest part. Mm -hmm. You know, knowing that this is an image getting fed on me, all these horrible things, all these things that are just not true. Well, that's what we'd like to get to today. And, that's and so, Mr. Uh, Grusing, where she's talking about, I've given my life to take care of these kids. Is this building more on that grievance portion that we talked about earlier? Yes, I, I was asking her about, well, I was talking to her about when kids go missing, how hard it is on parents, families, society, et cetera. And then she, you know, talked about herself again and then what she tried to do to be a mom. And yeah, yeah, I would see that as, and then she went from there to holidays, you know, so she wasn't going where I would like her to go to see the, again, the gravity of us looking for an 11 year old child. Is that another indication of trying to distract away from the main focus of what this investigation was about? Yes. <clears throat> uh, Judge, this might be a good time. The next section is about 13 minutes long. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will take our morning break. If I can have everyone back in the jury room at, say, 1045, we should be able to start on time at that point. Again, don't discuss the case among yourself. Don't discuss the case with anyone else. Uh, don't do uh, your own investigation about any aspect of the case. Uh, with that, we'll see you all back at 1045. All rise for the jury, please. You may all be seated. Mr. Grusin, you can go ahead and step down if you would like. Um, I just want to alert counsel. I think uh, this afternoon, uh, at some time, we can either do it before we start the afternoon session or towards the end of the day. Um, I would like to go through, uh, because I think we're uh, fair amount into the evidence, I want to go through and compare admitted evidence exhibits make sure that we all have the same ones. Um, and then uh, that way, if there's something that is amiss, you can think about it over the weekend and we can, uh, figure out some sort of solution. But with that, we'll see everybody at 1045. Okay, thanks. All rise.
Case DR 1358, People versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury's not present in the courtroom. Um, is there anything we need to pick up outside the presence of the jury at this point? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I'd like to bring the matter up. Go ahead. With respect to the uh, agent that's fine now. Um, agent Grusing? Yes. Okay. But he's in, uh, testified that he's a, you know, essentially an FBI profiler. That, uh, you know, he's got a lot of experience with that. He's, been an agent for a long time. He's mentioned some lots of the cases. He compares a very experienced FBI profiler. Your Honor, um, under People v. Stewart, um, Colorado Supreme Court, uh, I would object to any, in essence, or tantamount to. agent any I'm talking about we're talking about language of oh well these are grievances that lead to the uh, pathway to violence and stuff like this this is expert testimony and this testimony was uh, or this information uh, that is being used in this testimony was gained by being an FBI profiler and uh you know regular people lay people this isn't a lay opinion they don't go around to, to go around talking about pathways to violences in this grievance language that leads to pathways to violence this is this is information and testimony that comes from and is directly from being a long time fbo i uh this you know we have to speak in expert reports about this fbi play the material not endorsed as an expert. If we had known that this testimony was going to include this expert FBI profiling type testimony, we would have done a Shrek hearing. There's, you know, a lot of information out there uh, in other reports that, you know, talk about uh, some of the problems with profiling in general, that it has a lot of holes in it. There could be a lot of problems with that. So based on that, you know, I know he's got a lot of good, uh, relevant information to testify to for the people, but them trying to elicit this, this pathways to violence and grievances leading to this and, you know, this other uh, information I think is uh, wrong. I think it's, moreover, uh, you know, we work. information and testimony and opinions okay so in summary what i understand is that uh first of all do you have a citation on Stewart? uh i do <coughs> oh and while you're looking for that um as i understand it the summary essentially of the argument is that uh, mr grusing was not endorsed uh, to testify as an expert has not provided any um expert reports uh regarding the pathway to violence, uh, which he has referenced. Um, is that accurate? And I could kind of clarify one thing, Your Honor. Okay. He actually was endorsed as an expert. He um, was endorsed. He was endorsed as an expert. I have filed a motion for expert disclosure for support for mm -hmm. um, I asked for a summary of their opinions on the basis for them. Um, we were then told that all of the opinions of the expert were provided in the reports. Nowhere in this agent's reports does he mention anything about FBI profiling or that this was a pathway of violence or that this was um, remixes or any of this type of information. It's not disclosed in any of his reports. Um, and so we specifically asked for that so we could be prepared for expert testimony um, to rebut some of this um, type of information. And we're told that any type of information was provided in reports and this is Okay, so now I understand that he was endorsed as an expert. Yes, I, but I'm sorry, Your Honor, I this, misspoke. But this information was not provided in his expert report. He, we, he wasn't even, we didn't get an expert report for him. All we have is his FBI, the reports like every other agent gave him. And we have no report, we have a CV from him, but nothing in any of his reports that he was going to be given this type of opinion testimony. Mr. Allen? And your honor, just while I have it up in front of me, yes. the Colorado Supreme Court, as I said, mm -hmm. and 
55 P third 107. Thank you, Mr. Allen. So judge, um, he was endorsed as an expert, obviously didn't move to have him qualified as an expert. Uh, in discovery released his CV, which was starts on page 45 dash 0168. It's a 24 page um, CV, which is might be the longest um, CV that I've uh, released in discovery, but it's got extensive information about his background and training and, and uh, things that he's done, including things with BAU, uh, talking about serial killers, all that kind of stuff, uh, school shooters, Scott Kimball uh, investigation. And the basis of his testimony has been, and in, in, in my intention is to continue to have him testify as to his experience and training and how he is using that in this interview to gain information from this defendant to continue on with this particular interview. That's been the entire basis of these types of questions. And a grievance is just really somebody feeling like they have a grievance. That's all that is. There's no specialized training for that necessarily. If somebody is complaining about something, people understand that to be, they think that there's a grievance that, they're, that they have. Um, we're not asking for expert testimony. Didn't qualify him, him as an expert. Went through his background because that is important. It does inform how he does this interview. And uh, I would ask the court to, well, one, I'm not sure exactly what the, the, the objection is from defense because we've had both attorneys talking about it. And it's been different um, statements from both of the defense attorneys. And so uh, just allow us to continue to, to uh, go through his direct examination. And I'll, I will clarify exactly what my objection is. Okay. To the degree he is testifying as a lay expert, his opinion based upon his training and experience is banned by people who steward. Um, to the degree that he is, they want to qualify as an expert, we have a violation of the court's order regarding experts. Okay. All right, um, is Agent Grusick, he is back there. Okay, yeah, good. Um, here's how I see this. Um, I did enter an order uh, that required that if the uh, witness were going to provide expert testimony, um, that a report regarding that expert's testimony uh, needed to be provided uh, so that it could be disclosed. Um, I understand that Mr. Grusick has been endorsed as an expert um, he's not been offered as an expert at this point in time, uh, but he's been endorsed as an expert. Um, it's not clear to me. It appears to me that uh, Agent Grusing uh, did offer uh, some, or he's mentioned in the reports, or he has some reports, but apparently does not have um, or did not disclose the opinions that the uh, defense is requesting. Um, what I would order uh, is I think that uh, Agent Grusing needs to stay away from the phrase uh, pathway to violence. Um, I think he can testify as to why he was directing the interrogation uh, in certain manners. Um, I think the issue of him saying, well, I wanted to keep her talking, I, I don't really know that that's any different than anybody else, frankly, that's testified here. Of, I was telling her this because I was hoping that I would get her talking. Um, at one point, I think it was in the video. I don't think it was independent testimony from uh, Agent Grusing, so I think it was in the video. At one point, he mentioned something about uh, the Dylan Redwine case, but I think that was in the video and he was trying to get the defendant talking about that and trying to explain his experience. Um, I think all of those are appropriate. I think it's appropriate for the, uh, for Agent Grusing to say, to an extent, this is what I was trying to get her to do. I think it is inappropriate for Agent Grusing and Agent Grusing would be prohibited from saying, for instance, in this case, well, I was doing this investigation and because of a technique that I learned in the Dylan Redwine case, this is what I was trying to do here because I think at that point, um, he's trying, a jury could conceive that he, based on his education experience and training, is equating Ms. Stauk with Mark Redwine and that does not appear to be the case here. Um, so I think that there are things that he can talk about um, I've not heard him say that even though he is a profiler, I did not, I've not 
yet heard any testimony that he developed a specific profile about the defendant that she had certain characteristics or certain traits which would be consistent with for instance a serial killer or something like that i've not heard any of that i remember we got an objection about that um and uh Mr. Allen assured me that we were not going there. We have not gone there. Um, so I think that he can say, I was trying to get her to talk. I was trying to get her, and, and my hope was that so long as we didn't directly, I, I'm not sure it was Agent Grusing, but somebody at some point in time said, um, so long as we did not directly accuse her of uh, murdering Gannon, we thought we could keep her talking. I think that's appropriate. Um, so far, I have not seen anything from Agent Grusing's testimony that is outside the parameters that I've already mentioned. Um, so while the objection is there, um, at this point in time, it's overruled. If it becomes more prevalent or you think you need to lodge an objection, um, you can and ask to approach and I'll deal with it then. And the only other thing that we used to at this point in time, too, we are objecting to this agent giving an opinion regarding her sanity under rule 403 and the reason being is we've had a lot of he went in for quite a length about his training as an fbi profiler as his experience with solar killers all of this kind of stuff and i think because we've had all of that under 403 i think the jury would give more weight based upon his training and experience and i don't think under 403 that's cured even by saying in your lay opinion because i don't know how you take out 20 plus years of FBI profiling to give a lay opinion on this. We've had a plethora of lay witnesses testify that it's her sanity. This witness, because of the background that was given at the beginning of his testimony, um, I, I just think under 403, I'd ask the court for you. I'm gonna require Mr. Allen that you not ask that question until we get to the end of uh, the testimony and then we can take it up then. I wanna see what other foundation is laid at that point in time. Uh, regarding his contacts with Ms. Stauk, it appears it's primarily this video. Well, no, that's not accurate, Judge. Um, if we're saying contacts, we've got a plethora of uh, recorded phone calls. Uh, we've admitted 16 of them, but there's even more than that that we did, didn't did decide to admit. As you know, there's some that are over an hour long. There's some that are shorter in length. We're talking with this interview, uh, which is almost five hours long, plus all of these others, that it's uh, as far as uh, law enforcement investigators, some of the longest contact with this defendant of anybody. Okay. You, um, I want to wait until I get to the end of yeah. direct. And before you ask that question, ask to approach, and then we'll see where we are there. I think I understand the issue from the defense is not so much contact as it is because of this witness's um, background and expertise, they may give more weight to his opinion than they would to just a lay opinion. So and yeah. no, I, I, I understand that as as well, Judge. Um, I think that if, if we are making that sort of decision, and, and I can, we can talk about this again later, but if we're making that sort of decision that based on we're guessing that the jury is going to give a particular witness more credibility or less credibility, I think is we're, we're invading the province of the jury they get to understand and, and make those decisions in private in their deliberations. And, and we should not invade that. And I think case law is very clear about that. All right. um, one last thing, Judge, just so that the record's clear on, on the uh, prior cases, um, examples that Mr. Grusin gives during the pendency of this interview and that sort of thing. You notice I haven't asked any questions about serial killers or anything like that, trying, trying to draw parallels. I'm not even asking about prior cases even though it's um, prevalent in this particular interview. Uh, if there were concerns from the defense about those issues and, and topics coming up in this interview, this interview has been out in discovery for, you know, years. Um, this is the first time we're hearing about it. Uh, in the midst of trial, in the midst of testimony from uh, Mr. Grusing, I just think uh, it's improper to do it now uh, under these conditions when there was plenty of opportunity to do it prior to with the caveat that obviously I'm not drawing special attention to these issues. It's just going to continue to, to flow in this interview. Okay. Mr. I'm not objecting. The fact that he mentioned red wine in the interview is not the source of my objection. It appears to me 
that he's inferring some traits as far as the serial killer. He's saying like the grievances lead to the pathway of the violence to lead to somebody committing these type of horrible acts. That's the kind of opinion test one that without word objective. That I'm noticing she had these grievances, and that would then be a motive for her to commit this type of violent act based upon the training and experience. And it's not all the way there, but we're getting to me, it's getting pretty close when we're talking about grievances lead to the path of the violence. And that's specific one, and we were unaware of it until this point in time. I'm not the stuff in the interview technique, that's fine. And the stuff I need to keep her talking, that's fine. It's the stuff that's I, you know. I've noticed this, I've seen this in other people, and it seems like he was leading up to this type of thing. That's the specific thing that we're Okay. All right. I think we've all made the argument. Um, I've given us a pathway forward, um, and that's uh, where we will go. Um, uh, Agent Grusing, do you have any questions about the parameters that I expect? I do not, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Are we ready to bring in the jury? Yes, Your Honor. Defense. Anything else? Yes. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring. Do you want Mr. Grusing back on the stand? Yes, please. Uh, agent, if you uh, special agent Grusing, or I'm sorry, it's now Mr. Grusing. If you would, only Mr. Grusing. If you would resume your feet on the witness stand, I remind you that you're still under oath. All rise for the jury, please. Thank you. May I be seated? Court will recall 20 CR 1358. People versus Letitia Stout. Record should return to the courtroom. With that, Mr. Allen. Judge, we just need the screen back on. All right. So, Mr. Grusing, <clears throat> um, in this next section that we're going to watch, which is 25 minutes and 55 seconds through 38 minutes and 28 seconds. Um, you discuss victimology. Just so that the jury understands what victimology is, will you explain that? It's just simply the study of the victim. So for someone uh, like Gannon, we just try to find out as much as we can about him to maybe lead us to what happened to him. Okay. We'll start that now at 25.55. But first, let's go to Gannon, because what we do is called victimology. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of that before? Mm -hmm. So victimology is we find out as much as we can about Gannon, the victim. Mm -hmm. And even if he's safe somewhere, even if he's not, knowing more about him, especially since you were the last person with him, helps us to try to figure out, like, say we don't have a suspect, somebody killed, but we have nothing. Mm -hmm. Then we will look at that person to see what drew that, that homicide that homicide there. Why did those two people interact at that time? Okay. And then we'll also do things like uh, it's, uh, the, the subject, the situation, and the location. So something happened. Gannon's here. You have someone or something that did him harm, and then you have why the location. Okay. So we have those three things. And, you know, we've looked through your house and, you know, done the CFI stuff and looked at all the, you know, body fluids all over the house and garage and whatever else. So that's all been done. Um, I'm curious to see your challenges of Gannon uh, here when you had to be a parent and then there. Challenges, successes, whatever else. What special attention did he need? What can you tell me about him? Well, here it was, he was younger, you know, um, it started to a little bit hitting towards the, you know, like six grade. Uh -huh. So, like, here he was more so of, like, um, let's see. Not, like, at that time in situation here, okay, so prior to that, we never got to see him at some, like, every other weekend for a long time. Okay. Right. All right, so then when um, Albert, we finally paid all the money, got the or whatever, um, 
Albert had to choose between getting out, you know, getting out of, um, sorry, getting out of the military or the kids in a way, kind of, because mm -hmm. mom wasn't given anything or whatever. Um, so then that's when we step in and say we're going to keep them here in our home here and I'll stay here with them and then, you know, we'll go from there. Right. But during that time, he also didn't get to see his mom. Aisha didn't have a place to live. Aisha also, she had had a baby, but then mainly to her, not to, I'm not going to trash her. I'm going to say she was married to someone who didn't take care of who, mm. who wouldn't take care of them like they should okay. with her being pregnant in right. that situation. So with mom not having that foundation support, she wasn't able to come to the house a lot. And when she did come to the house, there's time she came that she was like, oh, you know, she just that wasn't in a good place. So I let her stay at her home. And Gannon had a tough time every time because in his mind, he just wanted to be like a stepsister. You know? mm -hmm. What? Stepsister? Yeah. You mean Harley? No. Or? Oh, Harley. Landon's? Yeah. No. I don't. Mia. Mia. Mike's yeah. daughter. Got it. You know, Mike, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he wanted it to be like Mike's daughter, which was they go to um, the dad's house for a week. Right. You know what he said? Got it. That was Gannon's mindset when he was here. Grandparents, amazing people, which is Landon's family. Um, amazing people, Grandma, I think I'm going Nana and Poppy. Great people. They would always come get them on weekend and things like that so that I'd have time to, like, you know, do whatever I needed to do or if I wanted to go shopping or go hang out with people, whatever. So we had all that, you know, going on here. The missing piece was, you know, Albert had to, you know, there are country. Yep. Um, Gannon would do his schoolwork, very smart. I think he made always here in fourth grade. I'm pretty sure he made all here. So made always here. Didn't have, like, an issue at all. What was he like when he got home from school? Because Albert's out. You're having to take care of him. Well, to be honest with you, I got him from after school, which was about like 5, 5.30ish. So by the time we did homework um, and all those things, it was almost time to like get ready for bed. Are you doing his homework with him? Is he doing it right. on his own? What? See, the difference between school, and I'm not trying to talk about Colorado, if you're from Colorado. No, no, the difference between Colorado and South Carolina schools, like, South Carolina did a lot more with history and, and those type of things for Colorado. Mm-hmm. So he had a, he did struggle with history. So we had to sit at the table a lot of times and like really work on like he was a mathematics. He's, he's so like like his dad. Gannon is just like his dad. He is so mathematically inclined, you know, like engineer type brain. So when it came to anything, history and right. reading science stuff, unless it was something he liked, he didn't like. So we spent hours sometimes, you know, working on those things. But with knowing the curriculum, it was easy for me because I already knew. And so by the time we did that, it was time for him to go to bed. You know, yada, yada, yada. So that was... That's here. So yeah. And what about in Colorado? So, that different? well, when we get to Colorado, of course, I start them in school, which would have been August. Okay. So I start them in school. It was a big help because Gannon is at this point a little bit more mature. And he knows he stay with us. Because, see, I took him to Alaska and homeschooled him before we got to Colorado. I homeschooled him for those two months. And then we transitioned into Colorado. Actually, it wasn't August. I'm sorry to tell you the story. It was, in, it was that January that we got here because I homeschooled in November, December, not of this past time, but of the year got before. Okay. Sorry. So January 2019. Yes. Yeah, so I homeschooled in 2018, November, um, Christmas time because mom couldn't get them in mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reason. Then we came on to, um, but I think she ended up getting them and she flew them back to Colorado for a week or something. She got them for a week maybe. We went back to Colorado. So January 2019, we would have started school in Colorado. Okay. Right. So get them in school, which Colorado, I mean, I think it was like May, middle May, they would go to Colorado. Right. So February, March, April. Okay. So it was pretty simple in the terms of we would do like, you know, uh, he never had to work in Colorado for some reason. Um, so it was always Albert would be like, make them ride their laps or, you know, make them ride their It was time for him to go to summer. What time did he normally get home from school? Well, around that time, he went to another school because this new school wasn't built. Okay. So it would have been like 3, 45, 4 o'clock, maybe just because it hadn't come from the mm -hmm. And then come in with the fall. Oh. Oh. Yeah, so they came back in August. So we went on, 
And he went with us on a big cruise in the summer because he wanted to, he didn't want to go home. Right away, he wanted, we gave him a choice. You want to go on a family cruise or you want to go, you know, to, he said he wanted to go on a cruise. I was a big fan of Craig, then he came, and I forgot a couple of words. So it was right. just me, him, Harley, and Albert. So it was just the four of us, right. Lena Dingo. So we all went on the same cruise and had a great time, whatever. And then, of course, they come here for the summer, and then they get ready to come back for fall. So they come back for fall, and at this point in time, I was, I was working. Albert was doing, like, one of the like, three, so, two. You had your teaching job and Yeah, time? three, two, three, two. He was working and all these things. Okay. Well, um, Harley was working, I think, and starting uh, Pike Peak College. So we were all pretty busy, like, throughout the day. And then the evening, it was kind of like, come in, grab this, grab this. But then I was coaching. So as I was... What were you coaching? Softball. So as at, I was... At your school? At the high school. At the high school. So as I was coaching softball, you know, um, I probably didn't get home sometimes. So, like... 30, maybe sometimes later, just mm-hmm. depending on if it was a game or practice or something like that. So, honestly, most of the, a lot of the help had to come from either Harley doing a lot of it, if Albert was working, or Gannon had to independently, like, you know, do a lot of it himself. Which, How did he get home? From which school? we were teaching. At this point in time, they were in the new school. Right. So, the new school, because we lived 1.5 miles out, the new school allowed him to uh, take If not, they had the, the, the rest of the way they had to. Okay. Um, so, um, coaching was over, you know, probably around, I think it's weird because they do softball, right? I mean, not right, do softball. So, coaching was over maybe around, like, or whatever. You know, Gannon started having a hard time because he didn't want to go home for Thanksgiving. Or, you know, when I tell you, Gannon, he loves his Nana. Like, that's his, that's his, if he loves him, he would just, he'll just, he'll be, he'll be at Nana's house yeah. all the time because he loves Nana. Um, so he like wanted to go because he has two little boy cousins. If you know again, and four sisters, and he doesn't have any brothers, mm-hmm. so he, in his way, those two little boys are his like his brothers. Okay. So if he goes to Nana's house, you know he can spend a lot of time with his little cousins, and, things like that. and then they can all just hang out. But he didn't get to go for things. Even Albert had to work, so we kind of I don't really cook. It was always like eating out. It was never So I just said, hey, listen, you know, we'll go out to dinner. We did all this Thanksgiving. Tried to make it up the best that I could because I'm not, I'm not his mom. But he wanted to be there with, with the family, you know, because the holidays and that's what mm-hmm. the used to. And then, of course, Christmas came around. And same thing kind of happened at Christmas, but then we worked it out and I figured out a plan to get him home for Christmas. Bananas for Christmas. Then time with the family, yeah. Because okay. mom never had our like a house, house. So Albert said it's okay if they go and then they have to get me house. Um, and that was our biggest worry. Like, um, have you ever been here before today? Mm-hmm. Okay. okay, so like if you like look on the boulevard and things like that, there's a lot of like like not the best places and that was where they were staying at one point, you know, when they would come. And so that was why they were like, no, right. Okay. Yeah. So then, is Gannon responsible for taking his own? He has ADHD medicine, right? right? Does he do that on his own? Do you help him with that? Um, most of the time, like how this how it worked is, I got all lunch boxes ready, set them on, been in the house with the stove that's in the corner by the refrigerator. We would set you know, the lunch boxes out, snacks, and let them pick. Can I use it? always take before Lena because. He just knew that he could get it. If he beat her up, he could pick the snacks he wanted. Mm-hmm. You know, so if he would pick the snacks that he wanted. And I would lay his, if Albert wasn't getting them up, I would lay his ADHD medicine. His Vyvanse, 20 milligrams. I would lay his Vyvanse on time. So what he, form is it? Is it just tablet? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I would lay it on the counter okay. and he would know, you know, come in and take it. How right? does he take it? Is it with water? Like, or with, yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't even use water half the time. Okay. He just, Right. He's been taking it since he was five. Okay. So. Is there any other that he's on or no? Like uh, Adderall or anything? No, I don't know. I think when they were, when he was like five, they like tried one medicine, but the Vyvanse worked. That was it. Like that was the, that was the one. Any of the other kids on medication? Mm-mm. Hardly. Or, you know? okay. yeah. What about you or Al? 
Do you I don't know anything other than what I told you yeah. about mm-hmm. um, the lorazepam. But see, the thing about lorazepam was they might give it to me and I might not get it again. I mean, 30 tablets, but it was only for, like, panic attacks or things like that. As far as Albert, I know he has the gout. So I know he... I'm right. sure it's nothing that... But nothing that he could, uh, again, could mix up medications with or whatever. Like somebody else was mad or anything. Not, not that I'm worried. Now, there's stuff in the counter from, like, probably old stuff. Or, like, you know, like, uh, probably had a wisdom teeth taken out. I think Albert did, but I'm not sure if he might have been smart and get rid of that stuff. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but none of us had, like, any, like, a... Uh, right. Anything like that. Okay. So, in that particular uh, recounting of, um, you, you lead into asking challenges with Gannon. Again, from your perspective, does she appear to be able to recount things and, and have strong memory recall ability? Yeah, she walked us through uh, his childhood, South Carolina, Alaska, Colorado, when he got home from school, um, what courses he did well and what courses he struggled in. So. Yes. Did it sound like fairly normal family life? It did. Did you ask about uh, bath salts and the hike from Sunday, January 26th? Yes. So let's jump to that section. It's going to be from this point up to 4330. I'm asking you that because of the bath salt deal that he came up with. You know, that was on the hike day. Wasn't okay, it? so the bath salt thing was just totally because they did the drug classes which is the same class that my sister grade did too. And it's where these people came in and they dressed up in like, a, they, I say dressed, they were professionals. They are medical professionals. They dressed in their outfits and all those things. And they let the kids like um, pretend they were working on, like, uh, what do we call it? You know, like as if they were in CPR and all that. Uh-huh. And yeah. during that time frame, they went over all these different drugs. So they talked about what it, what your life is on crack. They talked about like all these. Like it was very, very like in depth for fifth grade. But at the same time, you got to think it was probably a good thing to. to so was Gannon telling you about this, or did you find out from a teacher, or how did you find out they had this in depth conversation? Well, I knew because they did it at our school first. So they did it. Our, it. They did our school first. Mm-hmm. So it was something once they found out they did our school and they saw like all the cool pictures and things like that. Other teachers wanted to know about it. So when the other teachers want to know about it, they you know went around different schools and they signed like I think Albert signed a permission slip or maybe sent an email to the teacher or whatever that it was okay for him. To do. So was Gannon fascinated with the bath salt thing, or how what how did that conversation happen? Because I know that seemed to be important. You know, during the hike and afterwards. Well, it was like, okay, so my parents would deliver these. And we never knew what they were. They were told meat. They were told whatever. We don't know. But Albert would always talk to um, Gannon about anytime people had anything, like drugs and, and things of that sort. He would always say, like, these are bad people. Things like this. This is bad thing. So, right. Gannon already had, like, some sort of uh, base foundation, mm-hmm. you know, and because he had, like, a, like that sort of base foundation, he always had, like, uh, questions because, like, right. that, and that was, that was, that was always the thing, because is that he was born? Is Baby Nova going to be okay? Is Baby Nova going to be okay? And that was like his main concern. Like wanting to know these things because he he was just curious of how like all these So were you guys on the hike when he brought it up or where were you? He had already brought it up prior to the hike. Okay. He had already said something when he came home after the Was it a concern for you? Uh-huh. Tell me what he said and how your conversation I don't was. honestly sir, I don't remember. I just remember he was telling us about the different things that they were talking about. And then I was like, oh, did you guys do this? And they'd be like, yeah, then I'm like, oh, what did you do? So it kind of like mimicked the same way. Mm-hmm. So we did talk about that a lot. Was that before hike, you said? Yeah, leading up to it, before the hike, there was a lot of talk about it, you know, for a little bit. And then, of course, um, I think you said a few things. What did you say? 
I just I just remember he was talking to me. And was it concerning me. to you? Like what he was he, saying? Like he really wanted to try these things or what? Like I didn't think anything about him wanting to try any of it, do anything with it. Um, I know that he uh, said something about it, and I gave him a bath bomb. When he said um, something, what did he say? He just asked me about in general about if we had bath bombs. Because to be honest with you, he had already pooped how many times. So he said that after he pooped on the hike? He pooped a couple of times on the hike. Yeah. Like, when I say poop, I don't mean like. Don't like a just a little bit, bit to where right, it's comfortable. Right, right. And right. And so it was the whole thing about that folks was just, I think he just wanted to like relax. Because it took two, you know, taking two baths. So, now, I think you he wanted to. And this I don't want to be weird, but are you giving him baths? Is he taking a bath? No, no, no. Okay. And then it goes by himself. And he's very, like, helpful, independent. Like, I've taught him so many independent skills where he can go in there and just now he'll forget to, like, bring his clothes up or, right. you know, simple things like that. But okay. So he, he takes two baths that night or one bath that night, one the next morning or... I think when we got home, we took one. Me and Lena went to go get food. And then I think I used the bathroom again. I took another one. I think when me and Lena got back. And then she took one somehow. So, Mr. Grusing, in that um, portion of the interview, we're talking about the hike and, and bath salts. Again, did she appear to have uh, ability to recall those details as well? Yes. Is that markedly different than when you're talking about trying to get details as to what happened again? Yes. In what way? She's comfortable talking, and uh, as you mentioned, she's giving details, and she can clearly remember what was going on, just even from her uh, comfort in talking to me. And this is from what she's describing here is from the hike that occurred on, on uh, the afternoon of January 26th of 2020. Yes. Did you ask her about um, what does it look like if her and Gannon argue? Yes. So let's jump to that section. We're going to jump to uh, just a little bit ahead, 44 minutes and 45 seconds. And we'll play this through 49 minutes and 12 seconds. <laughs> so what does an argument look like with Gannon? Have you guys ever argued? Um, like, maybe like in Rural Beach, you know, uh, we would have been like, we had a, we're so much alike. So we are so much alike in terms of we both have stomach problems. Really, really bad. Um, we both have like uh, anxiety, so, like, so to speak, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, he's so like, he's so like kind and, and like uh, kind hearted. To, and then the point of like, we can get upset about something, but then the next minute he'll be like, I am. He'll be like, oh, look about something. We'll just say something. Or, and he had tremendously increased the amount in Myrtle Beach. I don't think I ever heard him do it. I love you. Or like, you know, like, I mean, like, the holiday might come, you know, they just think. But like since having him all the time, it became more of like I I would hear I love you all the time, you know. And so I feel like it was on the, the holiday, the Christmas before. Is that what you're saying? He disappeared. You what now? When you said around the holiday, he was saying I love you. I'm saying like once, yeah, well, yeah. Once we started more and more having vision, he and I became a lot closer because of just like wanting to have that connection with both the kids. You Surely know? you had some arguments with him though. But did you ever have to discipline him or no? Well, I never ever have never spanked any of the children, never. Because I just don't believe in spanking other people's kids. So we never had that. Now, as far as like, okay, you are in trouble, you're going to do this. Yeah, that's any kid. With any well, what's, them, what's the biggest disagreement you had with Cannon? The, the biggest disagreement Probably because he doesn't 
And again, he probably shouldn't have this on him, but not like seeing the light. How he couldn't get home. He was so like, you know, kind of like forgiving. Uh, it's okay, mommy. Don't have money. You know, if I said anything like, well, and I probably shouldn't have, but I did. I would be like, well, she quit doing this. We could, she could pay for it. And I would always figure out a way. But then it was like, you know, I'd say I, I wanted him to see that. Was this a certain incident? Incident. Like, what now? The biggest disagreement you had was this a certain time, or you? No, we never talking? had like big. Like there was never any like uh, big all out. Are you when you say disagreement, like clashes or like screaming, shouting? Well, I'm a parent, so I've had mine. You mean disagreements, like, like disagreements, yelling at the kid. Like, like that kind of disagreement, but never not like a... So what's the most disagreement. upset you've been with Cannon? Where we like... Where you've had to yell and we, had to yell at my kids. I got you. I see what you're saying. So like where we've had to like fuss at each other mm -hmm. over whether or not he did something. If he that, did something or that not. That has to happen if you're a parent. I'm right, right, right. I'm I just joking. I was saying. I thought you were asking Again, me like... No, I'm, like more, I'm more looking at this from Gannon's point of view. Or I'm not judging you. No, I thought you were asking me more of like, you know, like... Uh, like whipping or like switches or, like or, or like or like something like that. No. Well, what's the most intense time you've had with Gannon? As far as you're yelling, he's yelling, that sort of thing. Uh, that has to have happened, especially with that kid. I mean, yeah, of course. So uh, what what time do you remember? Uh, probably times that I don't remember this time I say all around around Albert. Like not being disciplined. Well, when out, you know, when Gannon was just doing something that's totally irrational, unreasonable. I have a boy. I know. Yeah. They don't behave all the time. Right. So what did Gannon? I don't know of any like specifics. I just know that we would have, you know, like if it would have been something that wasn't in what our teachings were, we would have, of course, yelled. So at you each never other. had to yell at him that you remember. I said. I just said. I just but, said that to you. I said I. There have been plenty of times. Yeah, but I mean a specific one. So, Mr. Grusing, in that portion of the interview, when you're asking about the biggest disagreement that she had with Gannon, she referenced um, Gannon's mother. Uh, did Gannon's mother and the relationship that Gannon had with his mother become a, a fairly consistent theme uh, as it relates to uh, her feeling like she wasn't getting credit? She mentioned that a couple of times, yes. Okay. And in that particular one... Um, she mentioned uh, that he's very forgiving to his mom and she wanted, she being the defendant, wanted Gannon to see that his mom wasn't doing the right things. Yes. Almost uh, seeming to want to discredit Gannon's own mother. Correct. In Gannon's eyes. Yes. Okay. Did you ask, um, or, or did she eventually give a description of um, Gannon being in a very upset rage and having some sort of a knife or box cutter? She did. All right, let's jump to that section, and we're jumping ahead about a minute to 50 minutes and 10 seconds. And we're going to play it to 55.32. Gannon wouldn't, like, yell back. Gannon would not, like, yell back and be, like, uh, you know, like, confrontational. So Gannon would not, like, he might say something smart. Well, how did he react? Under his breath. Do you or... have an incident you remember or no? no? And you had to put your foot down and say, Gannon, that's not acceptable. No, like, if I said that, he pretty much listened to, to, to what I said. Yeah. It was, like, not, I don't remember us him screaming back at me at any. Or just going in his room, slamming the door. Situation. Or anything or, like that. Uh, slamming the door, room. Me? Mm -hmm. well, no, Maybe no. more so me like saying something that Albert might have been more of the if there was slamming doors or anything. Like going back to him. Albert, you need to make sure he's not doing this and then you know, both in there in that situation. Mm -hmm. You know. Like Albert was teaching him how to use a, a, a box cutter and like different things like that. And there were times that I might have been like, Oh, Albert, I don't think you should have done this because he was acting weird in this way, but that would have been early in the beginning before we started getting in like counseling. 
So once he started getting, you know, like. No, remind me the counseling. What was that for? Do what now? The counseling. Um, so Albert said that he should get counseling uh, through the military just for like all the transitions and being like in and out of school and like, all the different things like that, just to make sure that his uh, mental like, like well being was fine. And Albert said that anytime he would, you know, of course counselors can't tell you, you know, what was going on unless it was something, you know, pressing. And of course Albert would always come out and say that, that everything's fine. And then Dana would come back and tell us what he talked about. But as far as like, did, I, did uh, Gana never come at you with a knife or something? Wasn't there an incident? Well, that's what I was just telling you about. There was when Albert, I told you Albert was trying to teach him how to use the... That's the box cutter the box thing? box cutter, yeah. So he, the Gannon had this, this thing about the knife, and he was doing like this, and whoever told you that it was coming at me, that was not... That's why I'm asking you. So <laughs> yeah, I'm getting the real story no, here. No, 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 you've got stories from everywhere and you yeah. probably are not looking at me for mine but my but that is not what happened again it was in a, a upset which the video was shown to the counselor lady okay. and albert was upset because he was like um, you should have let me get the video or something like that but gana was in more of like a an upset rage because this was in the very beginning when he had to first transition yet to a yet another school was this fall no, so this would have been, I don't know if it would have been fall, but, okay, so fourth grade, new school, uh, home school, then they went to the first school in Colorado, okay. and then the new school opened. Correct. So it was somewhere between that time frame of, again, it was, it was too much transition for him. That had nothing to do with him being mad at me or being mad at Albert or Landon or whatever. It was too much transition for him that he was so upset, like, you know, like, where was he when he was doing this? Was he in your room? I, I feel like it was in the kitchen. I, I, I don't, don't really remember. Ask me something that was, that was a while ago. I don't remember. Yeah. I mean, Were you threatened by Gannon doing that? Did well, it make you nervous? Well, I told Albert. I said, it, I said, it has a mentality. Like, in my mind, I said, it has a mentality of, like, he's going to want to not hurt himself, or not specifically hurt someone in general, but to, I mean, specific but in general and so like i was a little worried because i thought he had so much anger and aggression for what was going on because mm -hmm. it, it honestly was albert hadn't even got there yet i feel like i feel like albert had just either got to colorado or hadn't got there yet right and so he had to go from being with his mom back to me and then albert wasn't there mm -hmm. and then it was okay like, I got to go to, do, I got to start a new school, I got to get make new friends, you know, like all those things. How did you handle it? How did you calm them down? He yeah. was typically always. I was, with, I'm specifically with the box cutter thing. How did you calm him down? I don't, I don't know if it, it was a knife he had then. I was just saying, oh, like, yeah. he had been using a box cutter, so that's how he, like, I was okay. teaching him. Right? So I remember I took his amiibo. He loves amiibos. And I took his amiibo, and I just threw his, ami his amiibo out in the front yard. And I told him, I was like, we're not, that the amiibo's gone. We're never getting it again. And I made him call his mom. Mm -hmm. And so she, I don't remember what we exactly said, but I know she was basically saying, like, you know, you better listen. She gets upset and sends me a message. I send her a message back, and we were both, like, mad at each other as in me and Landon. And then it was kind of more of like, okay, it's calm down. But this was a, right, a year ago, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so that, that was the, the gist mm -hmm. of that. It was, he needed that outlet. Mm -hmm. He needed that counsel. Well, that helps us. So pausing you at 55 minutes and 32 seconds. Again, um, she's showing a good ability to recall um, different events that have occurred during her time with Gannon. She is. She says that there's some video um, of some knife or box cutter incident. Did you ever see such a video? I did not. Do you know if one even actually existed? No. Was there a portion of the uh, interview that you did with her where she relays to you that she had somehow convinced Gannon to call her different names? Yes. Um, the way that she's talking about that with you, did that um, seem like that was a calculated move on her part, meaning that she's um, trying to convince Gannon to do this? Yes. Okay. 
Let's jump to that. That's going to start at 57 minutes and 15 seconds. And we'll play it through 57 minutes and 47 seconds. Sir, it's so hard because John, I'm sorry. I'm old, but I'm don't call me. John, it's so hard because if I get up in the morning and I have Dana would even say, You want me to take the dogs out so you can have 10 more minutes of sleep? And he, I convinced him into changing my name. Mm -hmm. So I had to go on board of like calling me a different name. I didn't ever like my original name, so I had to go on calling me a different name. Um, so the helpfulness. So as it relates to those, um, that different names that she's referring to, the reason that she gives in the interview was because she didn't like her original name. That's right. Did she ever talk about that in any other time, um, either on those phone calls that you were a part of, or even during this interview about how she would go with any, go as a different person or a different name? Not that I was a part of, no. Um, did this appear to be the way she's describing it, a voluntary act on her behalf um, to get Gannon to call her a different name because she didn't like her original name. Yes. Did you ask her about the um, candle incident and the fire in the in the basement and keeping Gannon home? I did. Why'd you ask about that? We as investigative team were very unclear on what happened with the candle incident, and she ascribed uh, a lot of injuries to Gannon, including... Uh, burns on his arms, blood, that sort of thing. So I wanted to see how she would talk about it to me. Okay. So we'll jump to that section next, and we're going to jump to one hour and one minute and 20 seconds and play through one hour, 26 minutes and 58 seconds. Uh, the candle incident. Can you tell me about that? Okay, so Gannon wanted to, I don't remember if he wanted to stay up 30 minutes. I can't remember. There was something he did that allowed him to earn some extra time. But there was something he did. But Albert had grounded him from playing the Switch. So he wasn't allowed to, you know, play a Switch or whatever. He was only allowed to, like, he wanted to watch Switch. Right. Well, on the hike earlier that day, he was so helpful with me. People think he was sick and he's still whatever, but I have serious stomach issues and still have to operate. But he was so helpful with uh, taking care of the dogs and stuff. And I had told Gannon that, you know, yeah, so it was like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. so, um, yep, I so we sat around and, you know, we had like, before we left, we were like, on the sofa and I'm just like crying. Like, he didn't know who that was. Like, he knew the name, mm -hmm. but not, like, growing up in, like, my generation to, like, know who that was. So we just sat there and, like, talked about it. And I told him, like, you know, Kobe had all of us. And started relating in the terms of being, like, oh, you know, like me, I have all sisters. And so, like, you know, we were talking about that. And in between some of those questions, might have been certain questions that led to what he was asking me about what went on school. In the, thing, okay. right, in the talk. Right. And so that led into on the walk, on the hike that day about what we talked about. So then that evening, I don't remember what he did, but I remember he said he had 30 minutes of something extra. And I knew, I knew it wasn't his um, Nintendo or things like that at the time because he wasn't supposed to earn that back until the next day. Um, and so then um, it, we had, I think I was upstairs, you know, Carly wasn't there. Carly had to work on the like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had to work until I think it was like um, and then um, Gannon had what was he doing? He was doing something else. So I go back upstairs then I hear the machine was saying like beep 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 like it was only coming in the house. Okay. So I put the code in thinking the last alarm thing went off open or you know, none of that stuff. No doors open. Um, so then I go back where Lena was at, and I see she's faking something, but not really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, um, but she had like the cover of her head a little bit, and so like she was doing like whatever. And so then I hear the thing saying fire, like the 
Did it actually say fire? It said fire. Okay. So that was the crazy thing because I never had heard. I didn't know what. I thought it would just be like that. Right, like the sirens. But I don't know if it was the detector thing saying fire or if it was the actual. Um, but it was just like fire, 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 whatever. Um, so then I run back in there and I look and I see, I don't see anything, like, Joe, I don't see anything that looked downstairs and I don't see anything. And it was just, it was still going. So I grab Lena, I'm going to tell you exactly wrong, but I'm pretty sure I grabbed Lena first and I grab the dog. I think that's how it went. Don't quote me on that. But I'm, I'm sure it was in that order. So. Yeah. And we run out through the truck with the lake. Either I open the door. I don't remember. Somehow they get to, to the truck. Okay. Um, and then I run back downstairs because at this point I already know I'm up there. And so I run back downstairs and run back downstairs. And Deanna was awake but not awake. Like, you know how you can almost, like, be asleep but not asleep type mm-hmm. thing. And so I, it was bad. No, no, no. He wasn't in his bed. He was on the sofa. On the sofa. Right, right. So um, he was on the sofa. And so, like, he, when I pull the cover, I pull Gannon with the cover. And so at this point in time, then I put the, the fire that's out. So what did the fire look like? Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't, like, huge. It Where was, was it? In the carpet? On the sofa? Uh, I feel like it was on, like, one of the covers. On the covers? Was the cover on the sofa, though, or was it on the floor? I don't remember. I just remember it was in a small location. It wasn't a big enough fire to... to um, what color was it? Do you remember? Was it yellow, red, orange? I don't remember. It wasn't in a color to win. I mean, I think that, well, I because I think what, blue burns the hottest, and then you yeah. have stuff, if stuff gets involved in the fire, you have a yellowish or reddish color. Was, I don't remember. Don't remember? I don't remember. Oh, can you show me how tall it was? Like, do you I remember? remember? It wasn't tall. I don't feel like it was that tall. I mean, but my tallest might be different. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't. It's still, a fire is going to freak you out, right? right? Yeah. So I, when I pull the cover, I pull um, him with the cover too, and we run out. Did you put out the fire or no? I know that we took the covers, both of us. When, when he sees what's going on, we took the covers and like we smash down, on the, like on it, yeah, because. My own thought was oxygen, put it out. Right. That was all I could think. No, put it out, whatever, whatever. Did, did it take much? Sorry to interrupt. Did Did it take a lot to put it out or no? Or did you just smother it and then move? Or was it, it something was, in between? You, was there what now? Something in between. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. Something in between? Like in between, just it happened real quick, or you had to fight it for a while? Or? Oh, it wasn't like fighting for a while. Like, there was already a bunch of covers on the side that we had, t- that I had grabbed them all and put over here, which is why the whole thing was bottled with covers. There was okay. like co- covers bottled up everywhere. So it was like stuff there. Um, and then I run, and he's running behind me. So as I'm running up, he like trips or whatever, it's, but he's right behind me. Mm-hmm. So then I think I exit. Back out of the garage, I feel like. Um, the truck was in the garage. No, 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 no. It was out front. Oh, I'm no, saying, no. like, I think I, I, I think I exited back out the garage because okay. um, I feel like I just ran back to that door. I'm not, I, I'm not 100 percent positive. I know we ran out. Then Gana runs right, out, right out behind me, and when um, I'm, I turn around and I, I'm saying something to him because I'm like, hey, because in my mind, I, I don't remember if I had gotten. The dogs, even though I had already right. had grabbed the dogs, and so like he's, I don't remember what we were saying, but we were all in a freak, you know, whatever. He jumped in the driver's, I'm sorry, passenger side, and I'm in the driver's side of the truck. Okay. Lena is in the back, and at that point, we drive off. So we drive off for I don't know, a minute. Maybe. We drive back, but there's no gas in the truck. So was anybody burned from that? So Gannon yeah. had. You or Gannon? Gannon had a little, like little burns on his arms uh, from that, and then, um, but at the time, Gannon always lays with like his uh, either like his underwear on, mm. or like or like something like that. So um, at the time when we ran out, I feel like did he have a shirt? I don't remember if he grabbed a shirt or grabbed another cover. But I knew that he had some burns on his arm, but I know they weren't like they weren't bad, like. Burns that were bad. They were just like, uh, you can fit a little bit or whatever. Were they discolored, though? 
was it skin reddish, pinkish? What was it? Did, did you see it then? Or not, no, it was not till later that I really like paid attention and should have been like, okay, well, because I did later on mm -hmm. on it. Which, okay. um, so yeah, so like our arms, I mean our arms, um, his arms, and then we get in the truck or whatever. And we'll drive off. So then we come back. And so I'm, of course, and like I text Harley, I text Albert, you know, what had happened. And I said, you know, this is what happened. I tell Harley, this is what happened. Don't panic when you come home. Because the house, at this point in time, we get back in, it smells like nothing but smoke. Mm -hmm. And so nothing but smoke at this point in time. And it was just like I couldn't get the smoke out. Even opening up the like windows and all these things, I couldn't get the smoke out. So that was. So what, like what happened with these covers that you used to put out the plane? Well, the covers were either left there. Um, I remember getting the stuff, some of the stuff and putting outside in the trash can, which I even showed the people when they got there that I put in the trash can. Do you guys have singular trash cans for each house there? Or just do you have a dumpster or what? You really like it. It's a big trash. It's just a big brown trash One of the wheel ones you pull yeah, out yeah. and put by the curb. Okay. Yeah, it was just one of those. Um, it was no one was like whatever, but we did want Albert. So like, like come home, like come not necessarily come home and leave for that, but we maybe like had updated a little bit to Albert because we were like thinking, you know, like said whatever. You know, like whatever. So in mean, my message to Albert probably was a little bit like uh, a little more over exaggeration. Just because I was when you say we, did you talk with the kids about let's get Albert home? No, no, no. We 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 did sit down, and because when I was asking him, like, was this, you know, did you do this on accident? Was this an accident? You know, whatever. And so we were just talking about, you know, like the whole thing. Everybody was in one room. We were all in the bedroom at the time, which was our bedroom upstairs. Okay. So we were all in the bedroom upstairs and talking, you know, whatever. And I said, I got to let your daddy know. And then I was, I was not going to tell him. That was the original thing. I was not to tell him. It was just to fix it and not tell him. Mm -hmm. um, because then I was like, if I just do that, then we don't have to, we don't have to worry about it. Right. Uh, but then that was just an opportunity to be like, oh, well, maybe Albert would be like, well, it was hard, like, you know, always, all of us just there, going through all these memories and, and doing all these things without him, you know, mm -hmm. like being there. Oh, no, I get it. So that was, that was So did Gannon it. agree that was a good idea to kind of play it up a little bit? Did he agree? Yeah. We all, we all were in, like, an agreement. So. Well, how did you play it up? Was the fire really not that big and you made it like it was a big deal? Or well, to, to whenever just we to were... Get, Al to say, hey, maybe I should get back home. When we were explaining it to, to people in general, like, that was our whole, like, oh, my God, whatever. Like, like, oh, you saw that, like, if we, the people that we messaged, we made it more of, like, a situation, like, than what it, than what it really was. Yeah, because I couldn't understand how a, a candle could make a big fire. Because my wife lights candles yeah. all the time around the house, and if we knocked them over, and if you knock it over, kind of nothing happens. Yeah, I mean it might singe the carpet a little bit. But, yeah, uh, I've seen the pictures, and I'm surprised that you know that much of the carpet was burned. Well, it was probably because I, I mean I don't know, but I know that we did go like push down on the carpet, and it was on the cover, which was the cover was wrapped up on you. Right. So I mean I don't know like that's what. I was just curious about the burn itself on the carpet because that yes. looks awfully big for a candle. I didn't even be... think that would be big. Was that well, really big? Yeah, I mean, that um. big for a candle because, like I said, my wife, we look like a, a church sometimes with all the candles she lights. Yeah. We have dogs running around. Yeah, 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 no, it was. So I was just surprised a candle could make, you know, a big black thing in the carpet that much. That it might have been held there for a little while. Yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. he tried to set. The yeah, I don't know. But see, the thing is, I don't know that Gannon would try to, like, purposely, like, set something on fire. I don't know. I know that he did tell me later that he thought that I was coming downstairs, and he had he was playing his game. So, I don't so he know. was playing his game when he knocked the candle over? Yeah, so he did tell us, he told me and Lena and all of us that 
we were all talking together. He told us, thought I was coming down the stairs. I think they catch him on a game. Oh, that's why he knocked it over. I don't know. I don't. Off. I don't know if he accidentally or thought. You know, whatever. I just know he said that he thought. But did he take any responsibility for knocking the candle over, or did it just play it happened, or what? No, he did say that. Okay. He did say that he had that he had done it, that he had started it, or whatever. And I asked. That's why I kept asking him, like, did you do it on purpose? That's what I'm curious about. Or did you? You know, was it an accident? He told me an accident. He thought I was coming downstairs. So, and to me, sir, we could have sort of by another. Yeah, for sure. So fun uh -huh. in another. Now, that's not like that's not a problem. Like, I mean, you're talking about like things that we had and nice things, but we can afford to buy that. So that's not that was not a point of contention. And Gannon very well would have known. Well, did it burn? It burned the sofa, also. I don't think it burned the sofa. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, like in general, in the area, whether if it would have burned sofa, PV, all that. Right? Did he light the candle? We could afford to do it. Candle? Do you know? The candle was. He had already lit the candle because the dogs were, and so he had already lit the candle, which we Does allowed. He normally do that. Yeah, we allowed him to. Be, he could light the candle if he wanted to. He was allowed to open like packages that came. That's where I was telling Albert taught him how to use like the box cutter and stuff like that. He was allowed to do those type of things. Um, as long as, you know, he, he was usually within reason, like, okay, I'm not going to go light. You know, like, mm -hmm. when I was little too, like, I was, I did the same thing about curious about my shoes. But we had already given him enough of you know, like, safety talks about, like, Albert, when he talked to him about using the box cutters and knives, he always showed him the right direction, you know, not to just go to, like, you know, cut them from boxes and stuff. So he had already had these, you know, talks about the correct way to do right. these things. Okay. Well, explain to those two, so about the bath salts, the candle, and now the foot injured in the garage. Tell me about that. That... The foot injury. Oh, sorry, before I go there, so we don't forget, you said peeling these later. I just, that. I just remember that on Monday his arm had a little bit of peeling to it, and and that's when I said in my mind, and like I told the earlier here, that I did at that point say, hmm, I probably should like think about if this is if I need to if if later on after I put stuff on it, I need to think about if if it gets worse, you know, monitor the situation. You know, like those type of things. Did you put stuff on it or no? Well, we had took that green aloe stuff and we had took and put the little, cause the dog had just had get bit before, so already had that little wrap stuff. In it. Okay. And so we had already done that in that situation. Did you put it now, in both arms? I think it's on the right arm, I feel like. And then um, when did you do that? Was that Sunday night, Monday morning, both? I think it was Sunday night. Okay. Um, no, actually it wasn't. It was, it was through the night because we stayed up late. So it would have already been Monday morning hours, like into Monday morning. So why were you guys up late? Because no, it, we couldn't we couldn't breathe. The smell was so like it like stuck in the house from the smoke. We couldn't breathe. And I don't want to so where did you guys hang out until the you could breathe? We, we slept in our room, and then we opened all the windows downstairs. Okay, and uh, all four of you slept in. So Lena, Harley. Lena, Harley, me, and him were in the room for a while. Then Gannon went to Lena's room. Yeah. So then Gannon went to Lena's room for a while, but then he was in his room by the time he woke up. I don't know if he got something. What time do you think and you went to Lena's room? Is it after midnight? Or? I don't know. When did you call him in sick? It was pretty early in the morning. Right? Well, we didn't. What happened is I didn't. We didn't. All I did was I called an app. About his stomach. It was nothing to do with anything to do with the fire. My my question was, I'd already given him Miralax, which was like, you know. Mm -hmm. So we had a, a prescription uh, over the counter. I say whatever it is, prescription Miralax, whatever right. or whatever. And I had already given him that. And so then also had X left. And I thought, you know, at what point can I not? How much is enough? If I can't get him to pass, this, at what point is there enough, or can I go ahead and do it like a month? 
ever can tell you, I've given him an enema before. And like things like that. Because they get so bad and it, they're just so big and they get clogged up. So that was the, the concern about how to get him to pass. Because mm-hmm. like for me, I have to like, I can drink 10 scoops of Miralax. And won't it won't affect me at all. Yeah. yeah. And so I didn't want it to be where it was. And then also, I didn't, the, the combination is different than my stomach because, like I said, if I take 10 of them, I, I'm okay. So he's having the squirts, from the, and he started having those in the hike, but he couldn't pass that whole evening. Is that right? Right. He would get out, but, like, couldn't get, like, the whole thing out. And that was sometimes if he finally, and then when he finally had to be painful, one out, yeah, wasn't it? Or? For me, I lay in the bathroom, and I'm in pain, yeah. like, whenever... Was he telling you he was in pain? Well, he sits on the toilet. His common thing is that he'll sit on the toilet and just sit there and sit there and sit there. So as long as he's got something to focus with, again, his pain tolerance is very, like, high when it comes to just sitting there and focusing. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he... he well, he spent a lot of time in the bathroom that evening, just sitting there? Yeah, often on the bathroom. And we got kids meals, but he came out and ate a kid meal. So better, so I see... McDonald's or what? No, we, um, Carl's Jr. Carl's Jr. Yeah. Okay. So I had really said Bird King, but that's not Bird King right there. That's Carl's Jr. Got it. Carl's Jr. Yeah. Because yeah. um, I never go to Carl's Jr., but we got two kids know, and I think I got one or two. Lena went with me to go get it. Um, so he ate the um, kids meal when we got back. But he still hadn't passed. So. Well, he, if he ate, he had done something. He had already used it some because he wouldn't have eaten and did, had you given the Miralax before the meal then? I had already given Miralax like, throughout the week. We always had this thing where if I went in there and took one of my shots, like of a uh, baby berries or something like that, he would take one too. So it was common for me to be like, okay, here, mix. And Albert would always say, go mix him up one of the drinks because mm-hmm. we put an orange juice. Well, he didn't, he didn't like juices as much unless it was like Kool-Aid juices. Like um, so it was a common thing to always try to give Miralax to the, the regulate system. But the problem is, if you don't take the Vibant, that you don't take it for a day, like he didn't take it on Saturday. Because um, family was in town, and say so you don't take it on Saturday, and if you don't take it on Sunday, that's when, that's when it starts to happen. Mm-hmm. So that's when the con- constipation and the diarrhea kind of can go okay. So, like, let's say if he would have took it Saturday, and let's say he would have took it Sunday, he wouldn't have been as bad. Right. But then the problem is... Albert always would want him not on it if we're going to go do like a big time activity because instead of having him like, you know, zoned out, I mean, you know, like, mm-hmm. zoned out. Yeah. That was for, the by then. So. Right, right, right. Yeah. And, and so, like, the thing was if we go somewhere that requires him to have like things, then, you know, that yeah. we, would, we don't want him to be under that. Five ants and just have to be like don't do mm-hmm. We want him to be, especially like on the hike. I wanted him to be able to like run around and do things. But then him, we're always on the top of all. Like if we had hiked, we were always on the top of hikes. We were always the one, like, right? You know, bleeding, doing everything. But was he bleeding that night? Do you know? From rectally, from anally, yeah. Um. So what happens is from him bleeding. Uh, Okay, I'm trying to but, figure out yeah, things right. that are going on with him these right. last couple hours. Yeah, so like, from his bleeding and stuff like that, his does the same thing as mine does and mine doesn't. So that's why I told you we're so much alike. And we'll get relate on that because it was like, oh my gosh, you know, why is your butt? You know, and then just from squeezing and, yeah. and things like that. And that wasn't like, oh my. Okay, so like copious amount. Yeah. Just, so, because of him struggling with that all night, or that evening into the night. Yeah. You don't know when he eventually felt good? Or? How it works is he might feel good, and then he gets to where it's hurting still, until he gets it all out, but not until he returns, like, 100% and being like, okay, I'm back to, I'm back to game. Did he get back to Gannon that night? For Sunday? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, he was fine when he I told you he earned extra time right. to be able to stay up and stuff. Yeah, but I thought, was he not struggling with this after the candle incident? Right. But it comes, like, what happens is, is, I mean, if you want to call him a GI person, but he gets where he, 
okay, and then a little bit more, okay, and a little bit more. They happen every once a month or right. where he goes through those episodes of his stomach and mind those same thing. So when that. you guys were up in the bedroom, how was he? You mean like after after the flame and fire and smoke? And he was upset and like crying because he thought he was going to lose his switch like for a long time. Like he thought, you know, the biggest thing was, I don't care, we'll just do whatever. I knew, I knew whatever. I would be quicker to cover up mm-hmm. because. We just related on the same the same page, more so than Lane, because Lane would be kind of crafty and sure, you know, whatever. Anna could be more of like, we can have a secret and talk and say. Right. Yeah. So I'd be more inclined. I don't tell anybody we'll fix it. And so that was kind of like our, our conversation, what we were talking about. Yeah, he was he was upset, like, like very, you know, like upset and hurt and just kind of whatever. But we also kind of. Just, so how like do you think he stayed up with you in the room until he finally left? I, I don't know. Was it past midnight or do you know? I don't know. I just when he left, he was gone. I just went. So whenever he um, went to Lane the room. I think he walked down. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but I know we all, because all four of us couldn't fit in the bed plus two dogs. But at one point in time, we had to switch. The whole. And I feel like at one point, Harley was sleeping on the sofa, and then Harley and Lena switched. Because we were up, like I said, we couldn't breathe. It, mm-hmm. was, it, was, it was very spooky. Um, so we were all like, when Lena went to school, I'm pretty sure she probably went to school. Like, it's off then. Right. Because my good thing. So, Lena was real sleepy, but she went to school? Yeah, like, what I'm saying is when she when she woke up, she probably was, like, really, really, like, like felt like she could have used a couple more hours. Mm-hmm. Like, so, why did you call what? Gannon in sick and not her? Well, she wasn't struggling with stomach problems. So, he still had him in the morning. Right. right. So he it wasn't, I even had messaged Albert through the night and said, hey, I asked him. Mm-hmm. Like, I asked him, is it okay if Gannon thinks out? And so that was. Yeah. So but you, he didn't respond because he was on a different time zone. So you called in sick, though, too, for your word. Judge, that's at 126.58, on which was where I intended to stop, and this is probably a good time for lunch. Yes, it is. All right. Um, Mr. Grusing, you can go ahead and step down. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will take our uh, noon recess. If I can have everyone back in the jury room uh, a little bit before 1.30, we could be able to start on time at that point. Again, don't discuss the case among yourselves. Don't discuss the case with anyone else. Don't do your own research about any aspect of this case. Um, with that, we'll see you at 1.30. Have a good lunch. All rise for the jury, please. Thank you. May I be seated? The record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. Is there anything we need to take up outside the presence of the jury at this point in time? Prosecution? No. Yeah. That's yes. yes. All right. Court being recessed. Thank you. All right.
Judge, just briefly, in this is really sort of just a continuation of the last um, conversation we had off the without the jury being present, yes. and it relates to uh, Mr. Grusing's uh, prior testimony, at least as to its his qualifications, okay. and was part of the basis for why um, defense was uh, was basing their objections on. At the beginning of his testimony, we went through his background and. Um, experience and trainings and whatnot. He started talking about um, having trained with BAU and being trained by profilers, but he said that he's not himself a profiler. That's on in testimony. And I think it's important to keep that in mind too when we're talking about the things that defense is bringing up. Well, I actually was thinking about it over, um, sorry, I was thinking about it over uh, the lunch hour. And if uh, we get to that, um, if we get to that place in this testimony, um, I have an instruction that I'll be giving that essentially mirrors 168109 and in addition informs uh, the jury that Mr. Grusing is not being offered as an expert on the subject of psychiatry or psychology and you should not accept his, t his testimony as expert testimony. And yeah. So, and it, it gives them the language of uh, 168109 that he can give an opinion regarding conversations, context, those sorts of things. But that was the last sentence. So, yeah, and in, in relation to, I think what you're talking about there, Judge, and correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm on the wrong track on this, but it, as it relates to that question that we've been asking some witnesses about, did you develop an opinion as to sanity? Right. Um, again, just for the record of what. Mr. Grusing's basis for any opinion would be in this interview, and we've already heard part of it, where he's asking her direct questions about mental health, and she says in her own words that she was of sound mind. He asked the question, are you of sound mind? She says, right, and then she gives an explanation. She gives explanations about having anxiety and being on lorazepam, and so any opinion that we would ask of Mr. Grusing would be based on those phone calls in this particular interview, which there's, I think, enough record being made for him to do that under that 16-8, and, and you just said the statute number, but I'm blanking on it. 16-8, 109. 109, thank you. Um, I think there is a sufficient basis already for him to do that. Obviously, we're not to that point yet to, that I'm going to be asking that, but there certainly is a sufficient basis for that. All right. Well, we will uh, cross that bridge uh, when we get there. Yep. Um, is there anything else that we need to address at this point in time? No, Judge. Defense. Yes. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring the jury in. Mm. Yeah, that camera's right. Yeah. No, that's true. Yeah. No, that's true. You can't. That's that's over here. I don't know what it's related to, but I the buttons are mine over here, so you don't have to worry about that. And Judge, when we get started, we'll need the screen turned back right. on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh Mr. Grusing, if you would resume your seat in the witness stand, I remind you, sir, that you're still under oath. Okay, Pam. Okay. You need gloves. Oh, that's right. Okay. The court doesn't have blankets to hand out to everybody. No, I was I was about to suggest that everybody can keep their jackets on. <laughs> All rise for the jury, please. Thank you. You may all be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358 People versus Letitia Stauk. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. When we took our break, we were in the midst of uh, testimony from Mr. Grusing. That's where we will resume.
Mr. Allen. Thank you, Your Honor. And, and just so that we're on the same page as far as the record, we just listened to a and watched a portion of the interview from uh, timestamps one hour, one minute, 20 second through one hour, 26 minutes and 58 seconds. Um, in the beginning of this portion of the interview, um, you asked the defendant to describe um, that fire uh, in the basement. Do you remember that? Yes. She gives you some extraneous information there, uh, specifically like Kobe Bryant. Um, was it consistent that when you would start getting into particular points of interest as it relates to the alleged crimes here that she would give these extraneous details? Yes, and that was consistent through the phone calls as well. In your, from your perspective, uh, was that another distraction attempt to sort of create these tangents off of the main path of uh, what you're trying to drive towards? Yes. Cell phones, please. Apparently the cell phone wants me to repeat it, Judge. I don't know. That's the year or whoever. Uh, you had asked about details about this fire um, in this particular portion in like color of flame, those height of the flames. Why were you asking those questions? Well, as I explained before the video, the candle was a significant incident. Uh, she had been talking about that since February 13th that I came on that Gannon sustained uh, serious burns from that that caused him even to bleed. And I wanted to see how she described the, not only the candle, but the fire itself and how he was injured. <clears throat> what was your perspective of that either reluctance or unwillingness to share details of the fire, the, the, the colors of the flames, the height of the flames? Uh, why, why is that potentially significant to you in this interview? Well, I tried multiple times to get her to explain to me what she saw. And I, I tried to give her different prompts on maybe even motioning with her hand how tall it might be or how hot it was or colors. And she was not comfortable doing that. Okay. There was also discussion about the burns on Gannon. Um, she describes on one hand that there were little burns on his arms and then says by Monday they're peeling. Um, any significance to that for you that seems to be some divergent um, statements as to the severity of these burns? Yes, in our phone call on February 13th, she was saying that Gannon was peeling and peeling his burns and that they were very bloody. And that's a lot different from how she was describing those to me in this interview. In that particular, and you're referring back to a different one of these recorded calls that we listened to. Correct. Um, did that appear to be, from your perspective, a way to explain why there would be blood on his walls and in his bedroom? Yes. So, again, to explain away important details in the investigation? Yes. In this particular uh, discussion of the fire in the basement, um, she gives a long description about opening windows and how people are sleeping upstairs, everybody is, but then Gannon ends up downstairs. Uh, did that appear to be um, an isolation of Gannon um, based on the way you're hearing that? Yeah, it didn't make sense uh, to me at the time on why he would be back down there, but I decided not to press it. Um, does that also, um, I guess, building on that, the fact that she describes all the windows being opened, we're talking about mid to late January, likely very cold in there. And we're going to play from one hour, 27 minutes to one hour, 29 minutes and 42 seconds. What I did was I said, um, I told Albert, I said, hey, I'll just stay at home. Back or um, but the plan was I wasn't going to go back. But that was. Like the plan was, I was not going to So starting, when was that a plan? I don't think it was like December, so I was just going to try to use like day, you know, whatever, because I didn't feel one. Right. What did you tell your school as far as why you didn't show up that day? For that day, I didn't talk to them about anything that day. 
your school, you didn't. Mm -mm. Thank did you. Did you just not show? Was the yeah. classes waiting on you? Or? No, 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 no. The, okay, so what happened was I transitioned to, I was like, okay, I wasn't going to teach anymore. And I was like, okay, I have to do something until the like, whole plan is in the So I had to do something and just not mm -hmm. have money or whatever. So I got on DAV. I would do a long term position or the regular sub in position. And then, so then I just, at that point, was going to just call in whenever I could work. I have it in my email. Right. Um, I could just call in whenever I worked. So were you scheduled to show up then Monday morning? From the school that I wasn't going to work at anymore. I didn't even complete paperwork with them yet. So it wasn't even, I wasn't they even counting on you to show up that day or what? What do you mean? But I had like, I hadn't like, signed any contracts. I hadn't like done anything with them because the whole plan was, was not going to be teaching. Okay. Like, yeah, I like, get you didn't sign contracts, but were they planning for you to come in to do something on Monday and you had to call in? I, I never called it on Monday. I already told them. Did you text down or No, on Thursday or Friday, I had already told them. them. Okay. On Thursday or Friday, I'd already told them that I wasn't coming in. Like, for, I didn't go in Friday either. Like, I'd already told them I wasn't. So it was like, you're asking me about if I told them Monday, but mm -hmm. I'd already told them prior. That oh, I you'd already told them, so you didn't have to tell them you're not coming in on Monday? Right, because I'd already told them because, see, on my dad's side, there was someone who passed away. The following, the prior week. So that's. So, Mr. Brucing, um, when she's giving you this answer, what information did you have already about uh, her employment on that Monday? I had, I think in the 4 o'clock a.m. hour, she had texted to say one of her relatives had got hit by a car and was killed, and that's why she was not coming into work. And the way that she's describing it, it sounds like she's saying that this was a text that she sent the previous week to a different school as opposed to the one that she was now supposed to work at on Monday, January 27th. That's correct. <clears throat> what was uh, significant of that to you? I was attempting to walk her through her own timeline that she had provided us on uh, the, the Sunday night burn injuries and then what happened Monday morning. And that was the next logical thing that she should have been describing to, uh, to me. And then, okay. like you said, she put it back on either Thursday or Friday. Okay. <clears throat> the reason that she um, gives in that portion of the interview is that uh, she didn't want to go back into teaching, right? Yes. Um, did, did she ever say in this part of the interview or any other part of the interview or phone calls um, having any sort of mental health anxiety issues as it related to teaching? Not that I listened to. No. Uh, was it more along the lines of she was just not happy in teaching because of the current environment in schools? Yes. Following that portion of the discussion, did you ask her to give you um, a statement about what happens on Monday, January 27th? I did. Does she then, in, in her answer, is this where she um, asks you, I'm going to need some help from you? Yes. All right, Your Honor, we're going to jump to one hour, 32 minutes, and 47 seconds and play through one hour, 46 minutes, and 45 seconds. That's kind of long. Thank you, Your Honor. Two. So tell me about the next morning. So now you're at home, Gannon's at home, right. Elena's at school. Tell me what happens now. Right. So this is where I need help from everybody. Yeah. And you can get help. Like I said, I've had some high level informants that have told me some horrific things, and we've had to relocate them. We can get different names. But to do that, to kick that in motion, we need to know the story. We can't just say, Right. Oh, someone, someone got really important information. Right. Well, that's where I would need someone to help guide me through this because I want to help 
more than anything. But that's I'm, why I'm here, because I'm representing I'm representing Denver FBI, and then I have the ability to pull resources from Quantico, which is our behavior analysis unit, everything comes out of there. Right. It's called CERN, which is our incident response group. So right. this, was, this was a big enough case that the supervisor of the FBI asked me to come down from Denver, you know, and I get all my training out there. So right. you, but you're not going to have better resources in this room right now. And I'm not bragging. Right. I've just been doing this stuff for a long time. Right. So if if you tell me what happened and then you need protection, we can do all that stuff. So DEA doesn't have those capabilities, ATF doesn't. Mm -hmm. No. DEA just investigates drugs and they're very good at it. Right. If the FBI were now worldwide and we have offices over to, to Russia, to China, to wherever. Right. We get a lot more funding because of, when September 11th happened, that changed everything for us. We, we, we were the nation's number one law enforcement agency before then, mm -hmm. but they gave us so many more resources since then. Right. And so I am specialized in missing kids um, and unusual homicides, including serial killings and whatever else. So I didn't get in right away on your case, but I did. I have been there for the past couple of weeks. No, it's not well, I'm here now, and whatever you tell me, what, I mean, the worst thing I can do for people like you is if you have a story that requires your protection for the FBI, it would not be good for me to run out and say, oh, Leticia told me this, and that's not how it works. If this can help us find Gannon, we'll do whatever we can. Okay. Not like I'm just I just need like protection or um, Okay. Well you can get that, but we have to know the story first. So how how am I supposed to get help talking to someone first before we talk to you? Because I'm willing to do that. Oh here's your deal. If if you need help and, and if you want to go through the court process, that's fine. We leave. And then you, you work through the court process. But then it just becomes the, the whole focus of this, Leticia, right now you're the only one. You're the last one. You're the last adult with him. You're the last adult we know about with him. You have not told anybody anything else to lead us. We have been trying to work with Val to say, what does she say in that? Yeah. You know, and the Quincy Brown thing and yeah. whatever else. I was and, mad at him about all that. It, but a lot, a lot of it was keys to help me. But it should have been. If I could have just reached, like, reached out to someone to be, like, terrified for myself. And it would have been. Also, what I can help you with can also help you with something else you might learn with me. I'm just saying, I... Well, Leticia, you've got to give me something here to work to work with. If, if you want to go through the court process, like I said on here, the last question, if you want to stop at any time, you are more than welcome to stop. And say, but okay. it, says, it says you can have one present to talk to you. Yep. And that will kick in the court process and then we're done, which is fine. And if that's what you want. Okay, but the whole... If you need protection and that sort of thing, I can't get you there without you giving me something. So, here's, I listen to all the calls with that, and I've seen the crime scene reports. Mm -hmm. Okay, what happened in the bedroom was not Gannon slinging his blood on the wall. Well, that, that's totally, like, not even to do with anything. Yeah, that's but, why I'm so, like, upset about bedrooms and, and, and all those things. Because I understand you're an expert. I know that. But I'm telling you that just, I'm going to need, like, protection. That's, that's it. It's not me. I'm not the person. So, if, but if you're not the person, the, ch the charges won't be different. Okay, if you allowed someone else to come in and do the things to Gannon that we know happened to him, you're just as guilty. I didn't allow anyone, and I don't know 
of anything like you're talking about to be happening to you. I do know that there's something I can tell you that can help you or help me help everyone. But I don't know. So, let me tell you where I am. Okay. Like I said, I've been 23 years with the FBI. For the last 20, I've been working violent crime. And I've worked some of the worst cases. And okay. it kind of messed me up a little bit, to be honest. Right. Seeing what I've seen. Okay. And I worked 20 years of bank robberies. Mm-hmm. So, for, I always thought that you were going to have, I'm the FBI, I'm the good guy, bad people go rob banks. Mm-hmm. And that's not how it is. I had to help arrest other FBI agents, police officers, people from the church, school resource officers. I mean, it doesn't matter what you do. Mm-hmm. And on the other side, some of the bank robbers, one of them came out after serving a 10-year sentence, and we had it off just fine, even though you know, we were on mm-hmm. opposite sides of the fence. The thing that I have seen, though, throughout is when something very bad happens. People think they can't recover from it. And I do not think you are a bad person. I'm not. That's why I'm here. No, I don't. I I've, do I've, bad seen, I've seen bad people. And I know people. you tell people not to get them to help you, but no, I'm, I'm not. not. <laughs> I would not have this approach with you if I thought you were a bad person. I think something bad happened. And I think that what I've seen a lot, it's whether it's you think that you can get out if you do this or this or this. That's where you are now. And you're hoping that one of these things can save you. They're not going to be able... What do you mean? What, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. There's no, there was nobody else there. We, we've looked at the alarms. We've looked at the motions. We've Wait, looked at the sir, detectors. The alarms are already covered up. The alarms were already covered yes. up. Yes. Okay. But sir, I'm telling you, there, what you have... Is not you. I know you say you wouldn't sit here and say this to me if I wasn't. Whatever. I'm telling you, it is true. I would not, and did not, would not, did not. And oh. with you guys having my phone, I would have thought that you would have had some of the apps you've been to. Now I would have thought that sometimes when we talked to Albert, you might have listened to him or whatever. It could have been some help and indication. Um, I really did. Because I couldn't come at you and just tell you if I, you say there's somebody not involved. I could walk you through it and prove it to you. And you guys have already had this predetermination. I don't mean you. I have the first time I spoke to you. You guys have already had this predetermination. That's what's going to happen. It's already in your mindset. Yeah, because we have no other evidence pointing us elsewhere. So if there was a shred of evidence, Leticia, that pointed us to some other person, we would be all over it. As soon as Quincy Brown came out of your mouth, it doesn't take long. So you know 100% he's in Mexico right yes, now. Yes, we do now. Mm-hmm. All right. Because we did get our league at, we have what's called a legal attache. Mm-hmm. Okay. Where... That alone, and I get that you're saying you have someone who looked into that and knows that, that's where I know in my heart that I can't trust to get help. That very me. You're saying Quincy Brown's No, I, that's, that's not what I'm saying. But you would have said another word, like something in between that, that would have gave that off. Like, you wouldn't have said he's just in Mexico and doing things. You would have said, oh, did he come back here for a reason? You you wouldn't have said any of that. You would have known some other things, too. Or maybe you have and you just can't tell me those things. And that's okay. But. Well, we don't. In a case like this, so tips will come in. Mm-hmm. You know, the public will call in. And then, of course, you and Al are primary interest because you're the parents of the missing kid. And most, mm-hmm. 90% of the time, when a kid goes missing, it has to do with one of the parents. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that we we work we work on probability. Okay. So and especially with you, then you're there. You say he went to a neighbor's house. Okay. That's that's the very first thing you say. And then there's no thought that somebody took him. So you said there's no thought. There's no thought for law enforcement. 
But you when don't you, see when you, what happened leading up to the days before. Nothing to do with Ganon. Nothing to do with okay, in terms of me and Ganon. I love Ganon with all my heart. And so you can sit here and say 90% parents, this, this, this. I'm not saying you don't love him. I, I love him. I'm <laughs> saying that even I have had times when my son rolled a basketball underneath that I wanted to turn around and right, do but, something, and but, then I would have regretted it later. But you're saying, what you're saying to me is, what you think is that I hurt Cannon. I hurt and I don't think it was intentional. Okay, but I didn't hurt Cannon. Okay. And I didn't either intentional or not intentional hurt Cannon. I did not. That's just not what happened. Okay? And I had this conversation with you just to see for a second if I could get help from you. But you can. But you, how can you expect me to help you, Leticia, if you're not going to tell me what happened? Because you you, you can't go, just so, so, let me I'm tell right. you. You can unlock the entire resources of the FBI right now. I've told you that. But then you say that you're not willing to do it, whether you don't trust me or you think that there's these. But you already involved. told me someone wasn't there based on the alarm. That's from what we can see. Yes, okay. movement in the basement, right. movement upstairs. But you've already told me that based on that, okay? But what you're not realizing is there's two sensors on that home, okay? Two. Two that can easily be manipulated, easily, okay? And if you even knew anything about prior, you would be thinking a lot differently. But see, that's why I can't talk to you about these things because you already have predetermined what it you think. It doesn't matter what I you, predetermined. What you listen, said intentionally and unintentionally, and that's not the case. I'm not saying I'm right 100% of the time. It doesn't, you need to just disregard whatever I think or really whatever anybody else thinks. If you have a truth and if you have something that will help us find him, really the hell with me and everybody else and what we think. You should just cast that aside. All we, all I can follow is the facts of the cases they're told to me. And so for me to go somewhere else besides the facts, I have to then go back to the facts to check it. So okay. when I say something I'm like... I'm private, but you can't tell Albert about anything that led up to it or anyone else. Albert will but not I know will, anything. I understand that, but I will, but I need your help, and I need to know that you tell me those resources, you tell me whatever, okay? I know you're saying you got whatever, this, that, and all that. But I, I really am going to need help. Like, a lot. Where do you? Don't base it on some alarm report. Because they can easily manipulate it. Well, we're not just they easily I know I'm saying when you're saying no one else was there. So, when you say that, don't base it on that. Please, I'm begging you. Because that was not. Even remotely, I'm not even. Mr. Gerson? Mr. Gerson, I just remind you that you're still under oath. <clears throat> At the beginning of that portion of the interview, Mr. Grusing, um, you go through a description of if you allowed somebody else to come into the house and do bad things to Gannon, then you're just as guilty. Why were you going down that path and explaining that to her? Um, well, it had to do with the numerous stories that she had told us and Al over the phone. And just whatever complicitor she was going to make uh, with me, I was wanting to move more directly towards her involvement. So just saying that if she was going to introduce yet another person, uh, like the last one that she introduced was the pregnant lady and it didn't really have any legs to stand on, we weren't, I didn't want her to go down that path again. So was, was that you trying to encourage her to talk about her actions as opposed to pointing it out to different people? Yes. Okay. What about the discussion you have where you're talking about the good guys, the bad guys dynamic and that whole thing, arresting bank robbers? What was that purpose of that? Uh, to tell Letitia basically that she was a good person and that good people can do bad things. In that portion of the interview, she says um, she couldn't just come at you and tell you what had happened. Um, what was your take from from that particular point of the interview? Well, I don't I don't know if this is the same thing you're talking about, but she told me that she had keys 
or some type of keys she was trying to give us, but that she couldn't tell us directly what happened. And to me, that meant that she had been giving us hints along uh, during the different phone calls through Al, because she had already told me that she knew that I and others were listening. That's exactly what I was talking about, where she's um, telling you basically that I've been trying to give hints throughout this whole thing. Um, were there, in fact, some hints in her various statements? Absolutely. Can you give us uh, examples of that, please? Well, she mentioned that uh, Gannon was not in Colorado in either the, the phone call on February 19th or 21st. I think it was the 19th. And then she told Al that he's not in the U.S. And we later learned that it's close to being true. Uh, she also, as we've spoken of numerous times, described the injuries and she was even describing uh, time periods that we were interested in, like the the night before the two trips to Costco and what had happened in between those two trips. And then when she would come home, what happened after um, she arrived back at the house. And yeah, so if when you compile them all together, she was describing a lot of what had happened uh, separately through the investigation being done by El Paso County Sheriff's Office. And, and when you talk about that it was almost true that Gannon wasn't in the United States, are you referring to where Gannon was later found uh, on the essentially banks of a river that flows into the Gulf of Mexico? Yes. Okay, down in Florida. Why did you tell her um, that you don't think it was intentional? What? And, and the way you're implying it in that statement is you don't think what she did to Gannon was intentional. Why'd you say that? Well, in her first statement that I was present for with Al on the 13th of February, she said that Gannon, Gannon's first injury in her timeline was that he cut his foot on Saturday. And then and she went on to other things that had happened. And uh, in my experience with domestic violence, uh, I had seen that an accident might precede something intentional, and I was giving her the opportunity to say that if she wanted to. Was that a essentially you building it out for her to uh, feel better about telling you what actually happened again? Yes, and still just trying to find any factual information from her on injuries to Gannon when they might have occurred, and it's much easier to talk about an accident than something intentional. Okay. Um, the next section um, that I want to talk about is right after this. Uh, do you remember her talking about she reached out to people to go places? Yes. Um, let's go ahead and play that. It's at uh, timestamps 146.45 through 148.30. So going from directly from here to 148.30. Hey, you care about Gannon. I care about Gannon. I have reached out every day offering for people to go in these certain places to get to get even insight to see. I, I every day ask, hey, can you go do this? Can, can someone meet with you? So you've asked someone to go look for him? Right. Like I I reached out and I asked Albert. I said, hey, can you meet me? Let me tell you about this and let's go to this location to look. I've asked all these. What people. location do you think he's at now, Anna? No, I'm, I'm just saying like no, in general. No, but I'm asking you. In right general. Now. Where do you think he is right now? I can, I don't know exactly. I don't know. Well, where Where do you know him to lie? But to I am 99% confident in Dan is alive. Okay. Leticia, where do you know him to last be? I want to help her, but I, I'm in a room and you've already talking about all this and the courts and I'm, it's me against everybody else. So here's the deal. Once this thing goes through the courts, you talk about that. You're the only one to be with him. You think you're going to be able to tell a story. A story? It, 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 it might be a true story. <laughs> God, sir. But, story? but listen, I've listened to a lot of your stories, and I don't know what else to tell them. Yeah, okay, that's because I was mad at him. Had nothing, I already knew. But I've seen there. what you told the news reporter. I've seen what, I've listened to what you told El Paso about, right. the, about the sex assault that happened in the house. I already knew that you guys were listening to him. Yeah. So I said that because so, I was angry. But, but what I think I can offer you today is some help. 
So in, in the beginning of that portion, Mr. Grusing, she's talking about, uh, she's been trying to reach out to get people to go places. Do you know of any effort she made to reach out to give information, factual information that could be acted on? I don't. So in this, uh, Basically, in, in this uh, in this interview, do you also go through a portion where you're describing that you're looking at her stories and they're just not making sense? Correct. I'm going to jump to one hour, 51 minutes and 40 seconds and play one hour, 56 through one hour, 56, 24. And so I, I'm looking at your story, uh, the ones that you've told to Al, the ones that you've said in the media, of hitting your head. When you hit your head, you didn't see what happened. And then when someone else takes Gannon, or when he's riding a bike and he hits his head and stuff like no, that. No, I didn't do bike. I, was just, I just told you I was saying that to Albert because I was upset that he wasn't listening to me, that I did not hurt Gannon. I don't think you intended to hurt just Gannon at all. No, no, I'm not saying you did. Or he hurt himself. <laughs> Something bad happened in his ring. No. I've, have you seen? The, the, you've helped clean it off the wall. The, we know that. This here, what, what you're talking about is completely, completely irrelevant. About the whole well, then, thinking bad, well, whatever. Tell, tell me about, if, if it's irrelevant, Leticia, help me. Because there's a big blood pool in the corner, there's spray on the wall. Because if I tell you anything about any of that, all you're going to say to me is, hey, I don't know. If you didn't do it, no, I will be your advocate. Because why do we know each other? No, but I... Why would I care? If you didn't do it, and it helps me find Gannon? I didn't do it. Okay, well then help me find out who did. Who did what? That's a Gannon in his Don't room. Don't watch the Gannon in his room. There's a pool of blood in the corner. Okay. That's Gannon's blood. Okay. So you're saying that this is, this is where I have a hard time knowing what it is. You're like, okay, trust you or not, right? You're saying there's a pool of blood. Albert said saucer size. Because I'm sure you had not say all this. I'm sure you were there or whatever. Okay. In his room, and you said something about, what would you say? What would you then, if that's your your whatever your expert advice or whatever, okay. Then, where where do you think that I had any involvement with Gannon, and where did he go? That's where people. That's where it has to click at some point. That. And and that's what I listened to you do that to Al to where I you're making him guess. What happened to Ken? I don't want him to guess. Well, no, you, want, well, you're, you're, you're asking me to guess. No, 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 I was asking a question, sir. I wasn't trying to guess. I was just saying in general, asking a question. I want help with people understanding. I tried to give any insight, help, clue, anything, but I can't because they know my daughter, everyone, my family, my mom, everyone. And you can think that. But right now, Leticia, I mean, you can go down that road, but it's not going to save you in court. But, because you're the last adult missing. Okay. And nobody else, just let me, let me try to I'm protect sorry. you. I'm not trying to hurt you here. This is actually protecting you. If you don't tell us where to go investigate, mm -hmm. then nobody's going to investigate for you. You're the last adult missing. You told a lot of lies. About all these injuries. From Not to you. I didn't tell lies to you or to any police officer. Did a sex assault happen in the house? I didn't tell any lies to you or a police officer. So you don't have we don't have anybody to chase though. If we don't chase you, do you understand? But if you chase me, okay, and you do this to me, people are protected because you guys aren't going to protect everybody. People are protected. We can protect people. We can protect you, family, if this is involved. Now, I've worked South American death groups. I've worked gangsters. I've worked organized crime. Mm -hmm. None of that stuff rings true with what happened here. 
I mean, how how is okay. how is a very organized gang going to come into a house in Colorado Springs? Who said it? How? Why does it have to be in the house? See, that's, that's where you last was. Oh. Are you going to make me guess where he was then? No, I'm I'm telling you, you're not going to listen to me. You already just said that his last was in the house. But see, you're again, you're going back to you care what I think. You shouldn't care what I, I do. I think. Care what you think? You want to know why? Because I care about my how people think of me. Because I am not that kind of person. That's and if, why. And if you can point me to a different person, then I can help you. I gave him. So it stopped at one fifty six twenty six. When when the discussion about the riding the bike and Quincy Brown came up, um, she stopped you and and said. Uh, Basically, she gives a description of she was just saying that to Al. Do you remember that portion? Yes. Was that her basically admitting that what she had told in that particular story, that Quincy Brown, that whole thing was not true? Correct. What about the uh, portion of the discussion where um, you point out that are you trying to make Al guess? Are you trying to make me guess? What was your um, intent of, of making that distinction there and what were you trying to get to? Well, I had asked her a question about the blood in the bedroom, trying to get her to explain that to me. And instead, she posed the question to me that if she was responsible, where was Gannon? It's an open-ended question that only she knew. And as I told Letitia, I had seen her do this to Al. Well, I would heard her do it to Al while we were in the room multiple times. When it's a, a direct question, we need an answer or I needed one for the blood, and instead she's asking me where Gannon is, and she knows that I don't know the answer. Um, did it appear um, from your perspective that that was intentionally trying to not give you information as to what happened in the room or to Gannon? Yes, both. Did you confront her with uh, web searches um, that were done on her phone? Yes. I'm going to jump to that portion of the interview, and this is uh, one hour 56 minutes and 52 seconds through two hours and 10 seconds. Did you know in here I even have what you entered in your phone? The stuff that you've entered and deleted? Like um, blood is spurting from an arterial bleed? Direct pressure not controlling. Do what? I didn't look this up. It's from your phone. Blood is what? Spurting from an arterial bleed. No. And somebody did from your phone. I don't like my stepson. No. I don't like my stepson. Should I get a divorce? Stock cheating. I'll stock Instagram. I'll stock cheating in Colorado Springs. Catch I'll stock cheating. How to get blood out of sheep. Out of sheep? Mm -hmm. I want a mute. Yeah, the, blood, the blood out of the sheets was because we always had, like, every, always nosebleed. If I ever looked the blood out of the sheets, it was nosebleed. And I, I figured it might be something. I didn't ever look up anything about an artery or something unless it went from something else. It's on your phone. And I never looked up anything about my stepson unless someone else did it. The, the reason I brought up gangs is you, you uh, looked up, I want immunity because it was gang-related. And this sounds like... Mm, Find me a new husband. Find me a rich guy who no, wants to take care of his kids. The the new husband is just because he, Albert already knew that was about the lady Debbie Cheryl who had a who wanted to find a new husband after thirty five or something. He picked me about Amazon. And like a, a lot of these can have nothing to do with this. It doesn't. I get it. Um, and can, I spray, is, can I spray paint wood? Spray paint wood. Well, we always spray the wood. Yeah. I'm doing all the work for my stepkids and their mom doesn't help. Oh, that bothered me. Yeah. Yeah, I don't blame Oh, them. yes, because I wanted them to be mine. Like, like what about me it? to be their child. Hit and run? Mm -hmm. You Googled a lot on Leticia and traffic accident, hit and run. I didn't hit anybody. No? What was that? What, what date was it? it? I don't have a date on these. I just I was downloading stuff as I was coming on the plane. Yeah, no. I don't. My husband wants date. a divorce. My husband wants a baby, but I want an abortion. One day, some people will wish they treated you differently, which I get that. Parenting should be four people, not one. 
quote the suicidal person might say. I mean, these make me very sad when I read them because I can see you're doing all the work at home by yourself. Which I wanted to be there. Like, I wanted to totally have the kids as my children. That's the point you're not getting. Like, I wanted those kids to be saying to me that I'm their mom. Yeah. Like, I am the person who does it. Cares for them, loves them, everything. So you can think that. What about what do you do if you suspect a person swallowed poison? Did somebody actually swallow poison? Poison? I don't know. I always click things and read them. No one Did swallowed somebody any, swallow it? No one swallowed any poison. You will never forgive me and treat me like a princess. You'll never know when it's too late. Oh yeah, I mean, I always search for things when Albert. So in that particular portion, um, you mentioned the immunity. Was there a particular phone calls um, during the consensual recorded phone calls process where she was also saying the same thing to Al in those phone calls? Yes, there was. It was one of the earlier phone calls that I was involved in. Did you ask her to describe what injuries Gannon suffered a little bit later after this? Yes. I'm going to jump to timestamp two hours and 50 seconds. and play through uh, two hours, eight minutes, and 55 seconds. If you're not willing to go with who took Gannon, can you at least tell me what injuries he suffered? The true ones, as far as the cut foot, was that a legit injury? Yes. And where did that happen? Oh, he was outside in the garage, and when he was outside in the garage, he was running to go help me take the, tra take, take, take the trash out, come back and help me get stuff out of the car. And then he stepped on something, which I left the blood there. Like, I left it. Like, because Albert said, don't touch that fine wood or African wood, whatever kind of wood it was. What, what did the piece of wood look like? Okay. And it's still there in the garage? I, I had to drive over them all the time. Like, I always had to drive over the piece of wood. Right. But right. you didn't take that out of the garage? It's too big. You couldn't fit it in anything. Couldn't okay. fit the pieces. The long boards that were in the garage, you could not fit. I lift. The, okay, so there was the piece of board that I threw in the back of the truck. And then there was the two long boards that were sitting there. So the, the, the board that was about like this size and the board that was the long boards that were sitting here. I left the long boards because I don't, those, that was supposed to be the fancy wood and I didn't want to avoid or trying to get the blood off of it. The other piece of wood, was the wood that I threw in the back of Albert's truck. And what was that? It was, there was a bunch of pieces that were laying around that from that night, from us running through there, it was like little pieces. There was a piece about this size, maybe a couple pieces. But and that You had, threw it in the back of the truck? That that bigger piece? You said bigger like this. It wasn't that big. Okay. Yeah, it was um, cheap wood. Like, I knew it was not the wood that he would be freaking out over. So from Sunday, that's, he did hurt his foot from Sunday. And how badly was it bleeding? It wasn't. I say Sunday, Saturday, I'm sorry. From Saturday. Albert had just left, like, to drive to the airport. It wasn't even, he wasn't even gone long. Mm -hmm. He had just left to drive to the airport. Okay. So, so did it require a Band-Aid? You know, when he, whenever he always does something, he tries to be like, He's not like laying over. He's like, oh, I need a band aid or whatever. Gannon would literally walk around with toilet paper in the middle of his toe and it would have blood or whatever and just run everywhere to his room or whatever. Yeah. So, what did you do on this occasion? We, we literally took the paper towel, that's why I just told you about the toe, uh -huh. and put it in between. So, it was in between his toes, is where the injury No, was? he it was like wrapped here. Okay. Like we had it wrapped. And I don't remember if we got a band aid, to be honest. What? Gannon and well, that doesn't sound like a big injury. Either. Well, it wasn't. I mean, he it was blood. There was no big injury. Um, I left it on the wood because I said, I'm not going to clean his fine African wood. What did it look like and, on the wood? Drops? Streaks? Well, what I did originally was I was trying to take water to do it. But then I realized if I put cleaner, then that wouldn't do anything but cause the wood to damage. Because I would always want to build things with all the mm -hmm. wood that we bought. Oh, sorry. And if I use those pieces of wood and all that stuff. You know, 
Did you ever use that shop vac to clean up anything out there? No, I never used the shop vac. The shop vac was never, I couldn't even like move anything with the shop. Anything that would have been moved, used with the shop vac would have been out other than the times that we brought it, which would have been weeks ago. And we did spring cleaning or fall cleaning around the house, in the corners. And so that would have been the shock back. I never, there was nothing I ever did and vacuumed up something with a shock back. Right, like, that helps me. I'm you just know, asking. like any of that. Right. There, there, none of that ever happened. So the burns on the arms weren't that bad. The, the cut on the toe or the bottom of the foot wasn't that bad. And we still were able to go hiking. He was, he was able to still go right. hiking. It was bleeding on the board. But not after see. that, not over the house, that sort of thing. Well, he had the piece of paper and went down to his room. Yeah. Like wrapped around the foot. So, I mean, if anything, there was, they could have been dropped in the letter. No. What about the wound to the head that you talked to Al about? So, Albert was like trying to get me to say whatever, because I'm sure you guys are having to do that. I just have to do So, Albert was trying to get me to say that, like, talk about, talk to him about, you know, like, or, or, you know, whatever. So I threw off some stories to Albert because he was making me so upset, just like everyone not understanding that intervention. Flips from here. And there's, I mean, there's, a, there's someone intervening in this. And that's where people didn't understand and want to say anything. So I just started rambling stuff to Albert. And I even said to you guys, hey, I know you're listening. You know, and it was just to, but, whatever. but do you know what that sounds like, though, to a dad who's living a kid, and then you say, and a previous head wound happened where it was blood running down his face and that sort of thing, and it, you know, had to bandage it up. And well, I don't remember saying anything about bandaging up. I think you said Quincy Brown tried to bandage it up. Oh, because he was making me mad about him. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't remember me saying I did that. So he did suffer a head wound. A head? Yes. Head or neck. Okay. And that is what caused the blood there. And so if even if you choose not to tell us where Gannon is today because you're too nervous or whatever else, we would like to know where that was on him. So if we find him on our own, if you've given me the clues to go find him, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Where was that wound? Gannon is alive. He's alive, fine. Okay. But where was that wound? Okay. Was it his neck or his head? I, I don't know anything about a neck or head. Well, you had to clean up the wall. You went ahead. That was not. That, that is not even from what what you're talking about. There had nothing to do with anything from Saturday, Sunday, and whatever. That had nothing to do with any. How could it not? It did that not. Was a lot of blood. It did and not. You're going to have to explain that, sir. It did not. Well, just tell me how. It did not. I promise but you. But you're not going to tell me how. So where we can help you? With you're this. not going to help me. Though. How could I not help you? How are you going to get up, Leticia, on the stand after telling all these stories, which we're going to talk, ask you about, and then say, I can explain all that, and it's some party that I never told law enforcement to go chase. If Gannon is alive, we have an 11-year-old kid somewhere being held against its will, and you're not telling us. You might as well have done this yourself. That's why I'm saying... Let me hold you again, I'm right there. So I've paused it at um, two hours, eight minutes, and 55 seconds. What did she write down in your notebook? I just remember the first part, that the head wound was on Saturday. You remember it saying, uh, and had nothing to do with this? 
words to that effect, yes. What was your take on that, that instead of saying it on the camera, she wanted to write it down um, in your notebook? Well, whether it's by now, whether it's the, the argument that she didn't want to talk about, the, the burns, and even calling Gannon in as absent, you know, I, I wasn't pushing her. I would give her the, the opportunity to talk, and then she would not talk, so I would move on. And now that we're to the blood, and what happened in the room, I think it was too difficult for her to say it out loud with the head wound. When um, she's going over uh, the wound to the head and, and then she actually says, um, she just started throwing out stories because Al was making me mad. You remember yep. that so I portion? Um, what were your thoughts on, on that particular part of the interview? Well, that was consistent with what she was telling Al on the phone calls. And, and Al would continue to push her like, we need to find Gannon. And then she would say, what about our relationship? So she would move from finding out what happened to Gannon to her feelings. And that's what she was doing here again. Is this also an example of her blaming others for her behavior? Yes. Uh, did you ask her about uh, blood being found in the back of her Volkswagen Tiguan? Yes, I did. Okay, we're going to play that part, portion next. And just, just as I'm watching the time, is there a time that you want me to shoot for for a break? 310. Okay. Something like that. I'll just watch the clock on that. All right. This next section um, picks up from here and goes through 2 hours, 10 minutes, and 57 seconds. About the blood in the back of the Tiguan. Tiguan? Mm-hmm. The only blood would have been in the back of the Tiguan when we were sitting. We were we opened the car up in the car we were sitting there to do it to it. There's nothing to do with it. There's too much to be. No, uh-uh, no, but that, no, 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 sir. That is absolutely not true. That was where we were sitting on the back of the car when we were unloading the stuff. We were sitting in the back of the car. There is no, uh-uh, no, sir. Mm -mm. There's plenty in the garage, though. But there was nothing in the garage. There was plenty of times that everybody worked in the garage. It had nothing to do with. Not everybody. Gannon's not working mm -hmm. in the garage and bleeding all over the place. There was, sir, there was nothing about bleeding all over the place in the garage that had to do with anything. I'm telling you, what you're asking me was completely, totally different than anything has to do. Do you know what this looks like? Say you're telling me the truth again. Please don't think. Please don't care what I think. That you're telling me the truth right now. That Saturday had nothing to do with him disappearing and being gone for over a month. Do you know what that looks like for you? It looks like I am in the middle of a situation and I need help getting out. But, but you're not willing to tell me how to help you. So now you're saying that Gannon had a really bad head wound on Saturday. No, no, I didn't say that. That's not what I said. The, the head thing was Saturday right. and was the saying, amount of blood no, there? No, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying what you're talking about completely different than, than, than what you're saying. Right. Yeah. yeah, but this doesn't look any better for you because now you haven't told Al that he has a head wound. You haven't called the hospital. It wasn't like that. It was well, not. Like then you have like. to tell me. I mean, you don't have to do anything, but... It's not what it was like, sir. It's not... It's nothing to do with me. It's not what it was like. Okay. So in that particular portion um, where you're asking about the blood on the Tiguan, um, were you, had you been made aware of uh, when she showed up to the El Paso County Sheriff's Office for an interview and the condition of her car? Yes. What information did you know about that? That the car had been washed. Did you uh, ask her if someone else injured Gannon in yes. this interview? Okay. We're going to jump to that portion. It picks up here and goes through two hours and 20 minutes and zero six seconds. Someone else injured him on Saturday. That's an easy question. You don't even have to tell me a name. Did someone else injure him on Saturday? I want to bring friends. So that didn't happen. So, I'll ever tell you about any of these tasks we had to go on. Mm -hmm. See, that's where 
this is going to be whatever because you're going to take you're not you're not going to take my my version and my son. Right, well, but happens. Letitia, let me stop. If you help us, I will take whatever version you tell me, and I will actually take it. That's all I do is I don't chase. I am wrong most of the time. You, you have a way to pull up apps. Do you have a way to pull up the stuff on apps? Do you have that? We can do that while you're here, yes. Okay. Well, I know I'm saying, you said you have this. Yes, oh, we have okay. ways to pull up apps. Okay. What app? How do you have ways to pull up apps? We have technical people. I'm not a tech person, but we have plenty of tech people that are super smart to do it. If you tell me what to do, we can do that while we're talking, take a break, you can go to the restroom, whatever else. We can solve this thing right now. Why come I just can't talk to you without a bunch of people watching me? Then we can talk right now. Yeah, but come on, there's people here. Yeah, what, what do you I want do me to You tell me what you want to do, and I will have I you. I want to talk to you to tell you about leading up to anything. I want to talk to you because I want you to find Gannon, and I believe in all my heart you will help me. Not lie to me. I will help you. Not try to say, oh, you're telling the story and throw me somewhere. Okay. So is he alive? I under Let me finish this and I'll answer the question. I understand what you're saying about federal versus law, local, whatever. Okay. So the first set, the first thing I'm going to want to talk to you is that I don't want anything said before so to get me. If I provide you with 100% the truth to help you. That'll work. This is the first time we're talking, and it's for a reason. You haven't right. talked to the feds yet. Right. So if I can kiss, I don't want to be sitting here with all these people watching because I want you to listen at exactly what happened and go from there. Okay? Okay. And that's not, I know you're trained to do this and interrogate people and all this. I want nothing more. Nothing more. And for Gannon to be okay. That's all I want. I promise you. That's all I want. Mm -hmm. And I will take whatever resources, whatever help you want me to go do, if it, even if it means take myself in the middle of somewhere where someone wants me to go to get him. Make sure he's okay. I would do it. Because mm -hmm. I love Gannon. And I love my family. And I love the ground that everybody walks on. Albert, Harley, Lena, Gannon. That is my family. Okay. I know in the end, you might think you got whatever by this and forensics and whatever. And I'm not arguing any of that. Very smart to know that you're a smart man and not stupid. But I need the help, the resources to not be attacked anymore. To know something on stupid app was a doing. Okay. So you brought someone in. So I, I'm not. I, 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 know, I know. I get it. So I'm representing law enforcement from Colorado. Right. Okay. And if you tell me something, even though. You know, we started a recording now, whatever. And if you say we won't talk unless we turn off the recording, that can happen. But I'm going to pull in all those resources. No, I want you to pull in resources. I'm not denying you to say pull in the resources. I'm looking at you from mother to a father. I have been scared because I don't know what's going to happen. Not with because I did something. I wouldn't have told you that there was people. Random people intervention or all these things, if there wouldn't have been, okay? I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. Could have easily just been like, hey, if, if there was truly what you guys had thought about, I don't think you intentionally done it. There was an accident. Common sense, well enough to know, stick the phone and say an accident happened. I'm not stupid, okay? Might be freaking out because... I don't know how to get this help, but I'm not stupid, okay? And that's looking you dead in the eye to tell you I did not hurt Gannon at all, okay? Where are you? So if you're willing to give me the opportunity to talk to you, I don't want to be, like, watched by people. I don't want to be, oh, 
Whatever. This is the second recorder. This is mine. Right. And so does the Merkle Beach Challenge. Yeah, they do. Right. But I need the help. You'll get the help. Okay. All we're focusing on is finding the truth. Okay. And that's what I want. I don't want to look at, like, you look at me like I'm just this bad person who doesn't want to find our child. That's not it. it. I just don't. When it, when it came at me as an attack, okay, because that's what originally happened, okay, and I get it. They have to do their job. And guess what? They're probably parents, too, right? So they have to do their job, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I get that part. You can ask me about any of these, whatever, whatever. I'm sure it was something I saw somewhere, and I don't never look to think about some stepchild. I've looked up how I haven't got help and how I wanted help and how I wanted to be the person that they always were. Well, I didn't even want them to go home. I didn't even want them to have to go to their mother at all, at all, because I had to see the pain and agony out of them. Worry. So you're going to take my character based upon no, I'm not. whatever. That's just part. Listen, when when a kid goes missing, we don't only look at the person. We look at the entire neighborhood. Right. We go through people. Well, right. we go. Everybody's lives is right. turned upside down. And I'll tell you right now, since if any of this is since then, of course, I've looked at what people said. If people said something about the FBI, I Google but, but FBI. Again, <laughs> you worry too much about what we think. If you will get us there, we can protect you. Okay. So then I talk to you. And I don't talk to Myrtle Beach Police Department and all these other people. I talk to you and I explain to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because the, you are already saying you are charging me with something. It's already been charged. Okay, that's what I'm saying. You're already saying that. Okay. So. How do I know that when I get you, when I give you this here information? But that's that's what this recording does. It protects you because I've already told you we will do this. Well, we used to not report things, but we do now. And the, the only people sitting in there is the district attorney and some of the El Paso people. Myrtle Beach has nothing to do with this. They helped us find you. Right. So they have to be involved in this. I understand. It. Nothing is Myrtle so Beach. Myrtle Beach is not in on it. Okay, well, if someone else took Gannon, we can find him. Here, I don't like that. I want to be able to have an emotional, raw conversation. Let's do it now. I can't. I mean, we can't go anywhere. Where do you want to go? I Because I know people are sitting there. Nobody's here. sitting there. Okay, someone's watching from there. They are in the other room. It's okay. the district attorney. Do you want me to tell them they can't watch? No, I want to talk to someone in a raw, real conversation that you can see truly. In my heart, the situation. That's what I want. That's what this is. No, it's not that. But how can I make Who is it? That the decision? district attorney from Colorado? Yes. Yeah, see? Hmm. I can ask him to leave the room. No, it's not about leaving the room. It's about I'm asking for, instead of going through all, you know, this, whatever, sitting here wasting our time or whatever, I'm asking. I'm taking your word that you're going to help me and you're going to provide the resources from wherever you said you have them. Before I do that. So at, in this portion of the uh, interview, starts out with you asking her about, did somebody else in, injure Gannon? And then she went on the discussion about apps. Do you remember that portion? Yes. And you asked her to give the name of the app. And then it led to that long tangent. Was that another distraction attempt away from potentially things that may help? Misdirection, yes. Did you ask her about trips uh, that she may have made to Palmer Lake area, so northern El Paso County? I did. So we're going to watch that next, and this is short. It's from 2 hours, 20 minutes, and 10 seconds through 2 hours, 21 minutes, and 20 seconds. Let me ask you some questions, okay? Because this is our investigation. Right. You're taking all these trips up to Palmer Lake, multiple trips, mm -hmm. different cars, mm -hmm. renting a car. Okay. How are you not involved in this? First off, I didn't ever get the drive to rental car anywhere because immediately once we, let me, let me go ahead and correct on this now. Once we got the rental car or whatever, 
the National Guard was there. Everybody was in the house. We went in Albert's truck the whole entire day going to come and go and all these places. So I never drove the rental car anywhere. And it's already been corrected from budget about the rental car situation. I had to get that corrected yesterday. I never even drove it anywhere because I didn't get to. So what, whatever GPS you get from the rental car, it never was driven by me anywhere, but literally up the street back. I didn't hardly drive it anywhere. So there's no rental car driven to any kind of places at all. The only time I went anywhere in the rental car might have been maybe 40, 50 miles. I don't know, no more than 100 miles, counting there and back. And that was just driving it through the day because I didn't have, I went back to get my car. But what information did you have about rental cars when you were asking that question? Uh, we had that on the day Al returned back in town, which I believe was Tuesday, uh, the Tiguan had been parked at the airport and Leticia had rented a car for that day leading into the next day. But then she had actually came, came back and picked up the Tiguan Tuesday night. Uh, I don't remember or not if I had the mileage. Uh, she is correct here, and she drove it between 50 and 100 miles. I think it was about 70 miles. It came back that the rental car was driven. And uh, like she said uh, correctly, you, you could see the level of detail here. I believe she's being honest. And it probably was not driven up to Palmer Lake. Uh, so, yeah, it was uh, factually correct what she was saying. Were you aware of her having access to any other rental cars during the early days of this investigation? Yes. Like the Nissan Altima? Yes, I believe her Tiguan was seized, and then after that, she rented the Nissan. A, a relative rented the Nissan? We've right. got that in evidence. That's okay. came from a different witness. But also, uh, did you later learn that she also had access to um, two different types of rental vans? Yes, I learned that later. Okay. Yeah. Did you have a discussion about uh, PetSmart slash Petco that leads into a discussion about um, blood on the walls and on her shoes and that kind of thing? Yes. Right, we're going to jump to two hours, 24 minutes, and 51 seconds and play through two hours and 28 uh, minutes and five seconds. Because everything that I've looked at in this case, when you see the blood spatter on the wall, you see a big pool in the corner. Okay. You see your shoes that we collected mm -hmm. with Ganon's blood on okay. the bottom of them. Okay. And then you point to Eduardo, who doesn't exist, yeah. or maybe he did exist, and we don't have a last name. Okay. Then you point to Quincy Brown, and then you say Uncle Matt, these, these names and okay. stuff, and it's like... I've seen it before, mm -hmm. and that that was Harold. Mm -hmm. That was. But the, I'm not Harold. I'm not saying you no, are, no, but I'm no. saying I'm, this is my experience. Right, I got you. I'm not saying you are, but it didn't go well for him because right. his attorney got up. He's one of the best attorneys in Colorado. Right. He cost six hundred thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Greg Truman, and he started he paid six hundred thousand dollars. Okay, with his dead wife's money, and uh, Greg got up and said. Harold is not a murderer, but he is a liar. Right. And that's what I was worried about when I first got the case, because mm -hmm. they asked me to come in and work that case, because I had worked other cases like it. And Harold's just sitting there all confident, whatever else. Please don't say this is you. I'm just saying this is my experience, because Harold told all these different stories. But when you start out with your defense attorney saying, my client is a liar, he's just making up crap. Mm -hmm. That's to the victim's family on how right. Tony died. That's to his friends at church. And all of them got up and testified. These are the different ways Tony died. But again, it's not him. But he might be today. <laughs> you don't know that if someone is willing, if this, whether it's related or not, the head thing, if someone's willing to hold a kid for 30 days, how are they not willing to kill him? Can I ask you something or can I say something? Yes. Even if the scenario would have been me just I'm going to go talk to the life the lady here and tell them, hey, this is what happened. This is who did it. I know that he was hurt by someone. You know what the next question you're going to say to me? 
who was this person? And all I'd say to you was, oh, well, can you help me figure it out from this app? Or can you help me figure it out from this? And you know what you would say to me? Oh, yeah, sure. Right? That's exactly what you would say to me. So finding, the unless I can take you directly to where Gannon is, safe and sound, that is the only way that you're going to be like, oh, look at what she wants to know the truth about. So well, this person is telling you that he's safe. So that's the only thing. I've even asked y'all, or I say y'all again, I mean, you're back. I get it. Okay. Hey, please help. Why is it never the word? Please, please, please. You're not understanding. Like, I beg that. I have begged that completely. Like, day in and day out. Big deal. Begged it to let I me. Don't, I still don't understand. So, in this discussion where you're trying to find information about how could there be blood in these places and on walls and Eduardo and Quincy and all that kind of thing, um, is this consistent approach from her in that she then doesn't want to give you any answers? Yes. When you, when either in the, in the recorded consensual phone calls with Mr. Stauk or this interview, um, did she ever give you any explanation like, you know what, I just woke up and Gannon was hurt and I don't know what happened? No. Did she ever um, say that she blacked out and Gannon was just gone and didn't know what happened? She said once what that her head was hit and she was unconscious during part of this period, but not that she didn't know what happened. Okay. Um, did she ever say she woke up in some other place and didn't know what happened? No. Um, some point, there's been a couple of references now where she's wanting to go off camera and, and she does it here again as well. Some point, does one of the uh, uh, DAs that was with you out in South Carolina actually come into the room and have a discussion with her about going off camera? Yes. Uh, was that Martha McKinney? Yes, it was. Who was the other DA that was with you out in South Carolina? Do you remember? I don't. Was it the young lady sitting here with us, Angelina yep. Graziano? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> she look familiar? Yes, she does. <laughs> I'm going to jump to that section. So jumping to two hours, 34 minutes, and 20 seconds through two hours, 44 minutes, and 54 seconds. And before I jump, as I'm typing in the that timestamp to get to that exact point, is it shortly after this uh, where um, you actually leave the room for a little while and have a discussion about can we do this off camera thing? Yes. And th when you did that, was that leaving her in the room, the defendant in that same room by herself for some period of time? Correct. Uh, did she do anything unusual during inside the room during that time? I recall. Starts talking in Spanish or anything like that? No. Okay. So we're at 234.20, and I'm going to play through 244.54. Sounds about like 20 minutes. Yeah, it is, Judge. And Mr. Bruce, you can step down. And Thank you. I think uh, going forward, how many more of these do you have to play? Well, the whole thing, like I've told you before, Judge, is... Um, well, let me rephrase my... Let me give you some guidance. I think if he's... If it's going to be longer than about 10 minutes, Mr. Bruce, you can step down. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um... I can just make notes of when they're going to be longer like that. And then this should get us to about 310, Judge. So okay. well, maybe we can take the break right after this one. I'm with the district attorney about this. Just so you know, I looked behind there. This, this place is under construction. There's no one back. I can okay. walk you back there if you want to look. Oh, no, I believe you. I'm just talking about all these people watching. Yeah. And Mark has been watching. Yeah, I have. Yeah. yeah. John said you want to talk to me? About protection? So I I don't have any trust in anyone. Obviously, I know I've told him that I said things to Albert because I was not or whatever. But how do I know that I'm going to get help? Like, because I didn't hurt you at all. But I need the help to figure out how let me read you what she wrote okay. or I'll, I'll just show it to you and i was saturday i probably 
I had things Saturday and I've nothing to do with those chickens. So that's what it's fun. So we do have your phone. And mm -hmm. we have gone through, like, these are keystrokes. Right, right. I'm talking oh, about like it's a like, it's main just, gallery. Did you have a different phone beside the one that was in your van? Hmm? Did you have another phone, like the second phone? Yeah. And no, 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 no. It's the same phone. It's the, the same. same yeah, phone? yeah, yeah. No, not the same phone. You guys have the the phone. That was just a really good phone. Okay. Yeah. But at this at this time. Like yeah, yeah, I'm saying that's the same. The eight four three is a okay. five five number. But you didn't have a second one that this app might be on. No, 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 no. I only have this phone. So, oh. and let me explain, Martha. My understanding of what Latisha is asking is, how does she know, since I've said, if there's a bad guy or guys out there that did this to Gannon, that she can tell us where these guys are, and she's concerned for not only her safety, but the safety of her family. Right. And how can See, she... See, when I trade my life for Gannon... And I said, yes, but I said, it's also other people. Like, how do I know that everyone else is not, is not going to be in this? And how do I know that you guys aren't just trying to be like, whatever, if I walk you through anything or can help you with anything, I don't want to be just thrown somewhere, like, being like, okay, well, you didn't tell me this, and I want to be able to help you and work together because I'm sure you have kids or grandkids or whatever. I do. I don't want to sound like I'm cold hearted and I'm just tired of being like the person chased instead of being able to have someone to actually have compassion to help me. Well, I, I was a little bit confused when I was watching it because John talked about how they're the FBI and they're the premier law enforcement agency that could protect you, could protect your entire family. Um, and they, if Gannon's alive, they. Okay. I can't make you any promises, right? Um, because obviously, there's a lot of information that you have that we don't. Okay. So there aren't any promises. I can't come in here and and promise you anything regarding the court case or um, the the arrest warrant or your involvement. Okay. But I can tell you what the number one priority is, right? And it's to find Gannon, right? And so, if you were talking to some small law enforcement agency. And they said, sure, we'll protect you. I mean, I can see how you would be right. suspicious of that. Well, I didn't, you guys are the elite agency. That's why I was that's asking. It. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're the most elite agency there is. Oh, okay. And so if there was a time for for you to feel like that you could protect um, the Jack reporter, we can. Because I know you have yours. That's yeah, what I'm saying. There's a backup. So, um, if you want the recording turned off, you need to tell us really explicitly that that's your choice. Because the recording um, have been put into law so that there's not a debate where he says you said one thing and you said I didn't, right? So it's to protect the person being interviewed. Right. But if it's something that you... It's not that I'm, I'm trying to... I just don't... It's just I wanted to have, like, a conversation with right. him, just him, and try to explain to him in complete detail about everything because I do want the I want the help to the next level to find out where he is. I really do. You guys have looked, you went to GPSs and all this, but you haven't found in because you're coming after me. And I understand you're gonna say, well, this is what we have to go on and I respect that totally. But it was the first time I ever get to sit down with people to actually to say, okay, this is what happened. This is what I know. Please help me. Because then I feel like if I don't, if the I easily would be like, hey, just give me an attorney and call it a day. I really want. So do you think I want to waste time if I got resources when that's all I've asked for? I don't want to waste time. And, and if there's a chance, it can be saved. Everybody wants that information. But the only people who can save them are the um, I don't want you to think that this is being broadcast to the whole world. Right. You know, there's another DA with me. There's no half of that impression. Right. Um, and they're the ones. What the reason that we do that also is, I might miss something, and I probably do. And so then I can go talk to him and say, "What am I missing?" And 
Right. And then also it protects you because yeah. if I make a promise that I can't deliver on the FBI, then Martha gets to right. hear it. And then she would knock on the door. But as soon as I give you information, what's going to happen is someone's going to say, well, you were involved with this person. You were cheating with this person. You were doing this. I'm just giving you scenarios. But that's, that's a, a lot better situation than you're but, in right but now. But what if I wasn't? That's my thing. And that that's where the burden of proof, I can't. I can't depend my life on the burden of proof to be involved with just someone thinking that I'm just a bad person. I did not hurt him. Okay. There are any promises I can make you about you. Um, I, I can tell you that we're looking for the truth. And it seemed to me from listening to it that you had information um, but I can't make you any promises. But well, what I'm saying is, if you're saying to me, I have information, you're going to come and say, well, you should have given this information when I did nothing but attack. But That's what I'm saying. You, oh, can't, you, you see can't, what I'm saying? You can't armchair quarterback yourself, though. Do you know what I'm saying? You, you can't look into the future and say, well, we're going to say this because you said that. If what Martha and I are saying are true and that our only focus is gambling, we don't care who leads us there. We just need Gannon. Then you are protecting yourself by telling us this. If you never give us this information, then you don't protect yourself. And then we have one person to prosecute for Gannon. Well, and our focus is you took him and you hurt him. Not with when people came forward with information. How do I know that? Because but, that, that's, my, that's my biggest thing. I know you're saying that. But, like, whatever I can do to help, I can help you. But I'm saying, how do I know that if, let's just say, if the, whatever, I tell you a specific person, okay, let's mm -hmm. just say that, okay, then my my thing is, what well, you, your thing is going to be like, well, you held this information for me, and I'm having to utilize my resources, okay, and do all those things, not understanding that maybe sometimes there are people who are afraid of any other things going on. Uh, every day in my work, there are people who report things later than some people think they should. Every day. Um, and we try to focus on the violent crime. And we certainly try to focus on the kids. Um, I know that you want assurances and you want me to be able to say, you know, I will or won't do this, um, and I can't make you promises because I'm in the dark, right? It would be foolish for me to make you promises, but I have people who late report sex assault all the time. We have people who come forward years later. Our interest is in the truth about the crime. This is really all conversation I have. Um, and I know that you wanted to have a frank conversation with them where you could really tell them. Well, unless you need me, I'm going to step out. But you're still going back in the room. Unless you want to turn it off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, we'll turn it off. Um, Not, how do I know that? Not that I want you to know no. anything. I want to be able to, like, really talk. Know that I can sincere see in your heart. You're going to help me. I can bring you back there and sh you can see us turn it off. But the truth is, I could just turn it back on again. I know. I mean, there's a point where no one can verify everything you want. Well, plus, that's her life. She has to tell the truth, just like I to you, when you don't want her to listen to you. You kind of have to look at logic here. Okay. I don't think Martha would throw away. I don't, I don't want no. you to know. I want <laughs> you to have all of the information. Yeah. That's well, it. So just, what, are you okay with the reporting continuing? We just won't be monitoring. No, I don't. He said that we You wouldn't. wanted to turn off? He said I could just talk to him. Okay. Um, so we're just going to turn off the reporting, and that's your choice. That's okay. what you want, right? Okay. Yes. Um, and so he controls the turning it off from here. Or are they? No, you'll have to ask. Okay, I'll have to. Do. Someone and so it's it's just going to get turned off. Okay. And then once it's done, then I'll come back out and we'll turn it back on. And it'll it'll be a conversation between the two of you, and it'll be like the way um, law enforcement. All right. Anything else for me? Yeah. I'm gonna go get him. Turn it off. No. So that's that portion, Judge. Do you want to take the break now or go a little bit more? Let's go a little bit longer. Okay. Mr. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's go a little bit longer.
some point, did you have a discussion with the defendant during this interview where you're talking about ransom? Yes. What, why was that part of the discussion? She had brought that up. I think it was on February 15th that Quincy Brown had, was demanding a ransom. And also, since we were talking about a group possibly having Gannon, there was, I couldn't see another reason why someone would have him. He would still be alive without them asking for something in demand. But but why bring it up in that in that particular interview? Or, or why confront her with that? Just to change tactics a little bit and see if she will move somewhere else. Really. Okay. Um, in that portion of the discussion, were you um, also talking to her about uh, in ransom cases, kids don't actually turn out to be okay? Yeah, and I hadn't. Maybe I'd worked one ransom case, if that. Uh, we just we don't see that very often. Normally, our rule is that the the twenty four hour rule, the forty eight hour rule. The further the further away you get from an abduction, uh, the less likely the child is going to survive. And so now we were at over a month. Does that same hold true um, for a missing kid? So the longer you get away from the point that a kid goes missing, uh, the chances of survival go down as well. Correct. Did the defendant bring up a who she describes as an FBI agent named Barbara? Yes. Um, what was your take on that portion of the discussion? I did not know a Barbara who was involved, and I asked the Colorado Springs office if there was a Barbara working in the case, and they said no as well. Okay. The next section, Judge, that I want to get into is about a 10-minute video. Do you want me to go into that, play it, and then? Let's do that. Then okay. Uh, so preceding that, uh, she's already sort of challenged you on, uh, because you asked the question a particular way, um, that shows that she couldn't trust you as it relates to Quincy being in Mexico. Do you remember that part? Yes. Uh, does she bring that up again about that's why I have a problem with trust? Yes. All right. And so I'm going to jump to... Two hours and 49 minutes and one second. So this is a 10-minute section, Judge. And then if we're going to go directly to break, maybe he can come down. That's fine. You can step down. Thank you, sir. Um, minute half in February 5th, I think. So what happened was I got all the messages when I logged back in for my iCloud. I got all the messages that were like just sitting there. And so I took that message and I forwarded it to a student people and I sent it to Albert. And I said, hey, I said, can you get someone to like look into this? I said, it could be just people, you know, sending random messages or it could be creepers, you know, like people, whatever, being stupid, or it could be just in general, you know, um, the actual person. And so, no one ever said anything to me about it. And then I get the Snapchat. Okay, so that's your... Let me... Let me see, there's an 11-year-old kid. Again, we have to go back there. 11-year-old kid, injuries in the house. Now we know that. Taken. And... You don't come to law enforcement? This was, this was a law enforcement but, person. No, there's I no did. Barbara. I mean, how did you get in from, except through your friend? You had she Amber said, from the FBI. Right, but she said that she worked with the FBI and she was going to send information. She said that she worked with Amber. I assure you, if you call Amy, you can get the number from her to find out what, what Barbara, who, who the Barbara lady was. And she was actually emailing her today. But, um, but if you told them back then... And you trusted them with that information. This is why well, I... No. Why are you not today? When, when because I'm, no one has helped. I tried since February 5th. But then, today's March. That's why you see I had such a problem with trust. Is because I, been, that was there when you were talking to Amber, though. That was your chance. And to Amber. Yeah, that's the right. legit FBI. So then... Is that what happened when I was talking to Amber? I got a message back from the attorney who said not to talk to you guys because you guys A weren't the lead agency or something like that. And then B, not to say anything else unless he was present. That was when I was trying to talk to Amber. But why wasn't that with Barbara then? 
because I gave it to my friend Amy, who was, had this relationship with Barbara, like trying to check on her. But see, like, and I've, again, this sounds like a lot of your calls mm-hmm. to where you're you're pointing fingers in different directions, but never giving specific things. Right. I gave right it. now, I mean, if Gannon is somewhere, and you can get us there. And they, he sent proof of life or a picture of Gannon or whatever else. It makes no sense for someone, for some man, to That's have an 11 year old child. That, it wasn't that. It was because we thought it was someone playing games. And if someone was playing games, we were trying to say that that person would have been like, like obstructing or whatever. That was the whole point. Not some somebody had him and they were like, here, come get. My point was, it was that we thought it was someone. Hey. Here's someone playing games. Could you find out who this person is? Yeah, but do you see where that's going? And all your talks with Al. Those are distractions. Those take up time. Yeah. And Gannon's over here. Somewhere. Yeah. And you are misleading law enforcement. No, I didn't mislead them. Well, you're misleading anybody who would report to us. No, I didn't mislead any of them. Who who did I mislead? With all these other stories. That was to Albert. It wasn't misleading law enforcement. But you knew we were in the room. Because yeah, because that. I, and I, that's, I wouldn't have said stuff like that if I was trying to mislead. I was just being whatever to Albert because he was making it sit. That's all. The dad of a kid who is not finding his son. Because, because I'm also the stepmother who helped him get the kids, and he wouldn't have gotten them without me. So, yes, he wouldn't have. You're willing to do that to Al, though. No, I already had apologized to him and said that was awful to say that to him because I was angry. I've already done that. But before we kick this thing in motion about all this protection and whatever, why haven't you said one thing, though, today? How, how in the world would he suffer a head wound on Saturday that required... I didn't the, say it was a head wound that required... The head thing. Thing. I said the head thing you're talking about when I said something to Albert. I said the head thing you're talking about. That's what I think. So the bike accident thing? You already trying... The bike accident? No, the head thing talking to Albert. Never mind. I'll just I'll just wait until you are ready to talk to me with from beginning to the end because I already said that that is completely irrelevant to anything that what you're talking about. Completely irrelevant. I told Albert something else that was just story to, to be whatever to him, and it was wrong. And I already had apologized. So to the Albert. things that you told Albert were that he was peeling these burns. Was that happening? I'm not going to answer any more questions because you're asking me about things telling Albert out of being upset. There was nothing happening that I was telling Albert. Nothing. I was literally just saying that to Albert because I was upset for him not standing by me and was figuring this out. This had nothing to do with me wanting to purposefully do whatever or tell you guys anything. That was not what it was. It was me being upset with Albert. Let me go back to... A kid missing is about as bad as it gets. Oh, yeah. I had a bank robbery 15 years ago to where a female went in the bank. She robbed the bank. She got the money. She came back to the car, and she drove away. Mm-hmm. She was prosecuted for that. There were guys in the car with guns. Mm-hmm. Okay? But what did... She could have gone into the bank and locked those doors. Those guys are making me do this. Right. Yeah. Yours is now we have thirty some days of Gannon missing and you haven't talked to one law enforcement officer to say I know where he is and he's safe. I never I never did not try to talk to you guys. I never did not. No one ever when I did, felt like I was beginning like a completely like bam 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 part in by El Paso. That's no one ever reached out to me from FBI to like have a conversation like you did. No one. No one ever did. And you don't feel comfortable talking to El Paso Valley? It's not that I don't feel comfortable talking to them. I just feel like from point B to point B, they have taken this approach and you made even a comment about the lake and about this. Right. Because that, that's the approach that they've taken as if it's a person who is not alive. And that bothers me because I don't want well, we, we're actually the ones, we're the ones that told them that, and that's statistically true. What? You statistically told them what? From Gannon's age, mm-hmm. 
and from the amount of time that he's been missing, he is most likely dead. But what I'm saying is, as a parent, is that maybe because you're, like, used to saying that or something, but is that something, like, as a parent you would want to hear? No. But would you rather hear a lie? Would you rather hear statistically he's probably alive when it's about a, I would say it's less than a 1% chance at this point. But why? Him being alive, they would have asked for something. If but why? Kidnappings don't happen without a demand or mm-hmm. without it being a parental deal. Parental deal or a demand. Yeah. So you're saying that nothing else, nobody intervenes ever. Ever. I've seen one other time, and again, I've worked violent crime in Denver for 20 years, mm-hmm. a little over. And I saw one kid wander down the street. He had autism. Mm-hmm. And this was up in Brighton. And a guy took him in the house. He had him for a day. The guy was mentally disabled as well. So we had two things happening at once. We had a kid mm-hmm. with autism who just started wandering. And then we had a developmentally delayed adult who was just playing video games with him for 24 hours. Mm-hmm. But we ended up, the public said, there. Mm -hmm. And I remember knocking on the door. He had made little blankets for the kid in there. The kid was playing video games and nothing bad had happened. That's the exception. I've been to where kids have been dismembered. Ten-year-olds. That's awful. And from the blood in the house, that's what I'm thinking happened. I'm not saying he just got dismembered in the house. But -hmm. there's enough blood in there Mm -mm. that we don't think he survived. Mm -mm. How could you... Have like possibly and say that when you clearly began in walking, leaving on Monday. Yeah. See, that's that's well, leaving on Monday at ten. Yes, right. Correct. Right. Walking. Okay. But he comes back. Walking. Correct. Okay. Walking. Not okay. walking well. Totally fine. Don't like hurt. Walk with like this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but he's back at two. Back at two. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. If that's if that's what you say, then I'm just then this whole thing is like even pointless to even say anything because if you're saying back at two, but then you're also saying something about going legs and here and there and whatever, and it's like none of it is even making sense. It doesn't even make sense. So For between me, the two, two Petco trips is when he disappeared then. I, I, it doesn't make sense to me Leticia. to say. So let me tell you. I've been working for 14 years with mm-hmm. a guy named Scott Kimball. He's our informant that went around killing the girls. You remember me telling you about him before? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. When we first started. Not our best day because I have dads out there who still wonder if their daughters are alive. Mm-hmm. God taught me one thing very well. There's only two people that mm-hmm. can tell a story when someone either goes missing. Because one of one of these girls, Jennifer, is still missing. Like I said, we, we're pretty sure she's dead because it's been 14 years since mm-hmm. anybody's seen her. But Scott told me, John, only two guys, only two people can testify to what me happened between me and Jennifer, and that's me, and that's Jennifer, right. and you're never going to find her. He said that to you. He did. Wow. So I've got to answer to his dad for the rest of my life. And I'll probably be answering to his dad after I retire because dad has my cell phone. Dad calls me on her birthday, on the day she went missing, on Father's Day. How was he able to say that to you? Because he's like, there's no other witnesses. So when when I take a guess, and that's Mm -hmm. a guess that he came back home, that's because people that looked on the video said he probably did or, you know, mm-hmm. I don't have the information you have. And I hear you do that to Al mm-hmm. by saying, oh, so that's what you think. Mm-hmm. Well, let's no, know. You know. Because I have. That's <clears throat> three hours. Oh, wait a minute. Did I stop at a minute too early? I think I did. My eyes are getting bad. We got one more minute. <laughs> All right. That way. If I don't be that way, then no one's going to help me. I don't. It's I didn't hurt Gannon. I didn't. That's fine, but right now you're the only one who's with me. But I didn't hurt Gannon. But how are you going to get past <laughs> these charges without help? How does that work? When without you, help? Without you telling me. Like, again, it'd be like someone, I told you the story about Jennifer. If somebody knew where Jennifer was, 
Mm-hmm. And they're not telling me or Bob Markham that I that. didn't say I knew where Danny was. You said not, you know he's okay. No, I said as a parent, I'm never going to sit here and say, look at you and say, he's not okay. That's not what I'm going to do because I didn't do this. So why would I look at you and say that? Like I'm dead looking at you in the eye saying, I would never as a parent say that. No way could I ever say that because I love him. And did not hurt him. I told you. All right, now it's really three hours, one minute, and 35 seconds. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will take our afternoon break until 3.35. If I can have, hold on just a minute. Okay, we're good. Um, we're going to take our afternoon break. Um, if I can uh, have everyone back in the jury room and say 3.35, we should be able to start right on time at that point. Again, don't discuss the case among yourselves. Don't discuss the case with anyone else. Um, all rise for the jury, please. Thank you. You may all be seated. The record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. Um, with that, court will be in recess until 3.35.
outside the presence of the jury at this point in time. Prosecution? Oh, yeah. Defense? That's right. All right, let's go ahead and move on that. Might as well bring Mr. Drusing back up while they're coming in. Fine. Share up some powers. Yep. Uh, co host rights. Oh, oh. So she that's what was going on. Yeah, she couldn't. I told her it was, I said, that's okay. Yeah. Not a problem. Hey, Mr. Allen, yes, if sir. we could stop in yeah. 10 till. 10 till? 10 sure. till 5, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Are you doing it? Yeah. If you want, if you wanted a little bit of cushion, I could stop it even quarter till if you want, just to give us that extra. No, it's just going to be a longer instruction for them because I, since it's the weekend, yeah. I read them the whole thing and um, I want to go over exhibits. Okay. <laughs> that has been a constant problem, hasn't it? What's that? Is it good or it's okay? It's just an extra step. Right, no, but I mean, it just is. I remember it. Is it just happened to be that way? Yeah, extra step when they're transporting. Oh, we don't want oh, oh, that's what that's right. Oh, it's because it, 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 un it undid itself one time. Okay. About, oh, I can't I'll rise for the jury, please. So it's just an extra step. Yeah. So one section of it. Yes. I do. That I do. Because transporting other centers. Yeah. And Irwin's been so good at yeah. If I forget it, yeah. he takes it on. <laughs> Thank you. You may all be seated. Recall 20 CR 1358, People versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect fully return to the courtroom. Mr. Allen? Thank you, Aaron. We'll just need the screens turned back on again. Thank you, Judge. <clears throat> in that last section, and also in the section um, where the other DA was in the room, um, appears that defendant used misdirection again. Um, again, was that fairly common throughout this whole thing? Yes, and she was very effective at doing it when we brought uh, the district attorney in and she couldn't promise Letitia something that was yet just another obstacle that we had to overcome to get to the questions we were asking. Um, similar to the idea that if uh, she would put conditions out there that may maybe even be difficult for you to meet, yeah, the witness protection, the, the DEA involving other federal agencies. You know, she she had a very organized way of thinking about how I might not be able to do the things she's asking, and thus she might not have to answer the questions. When when the when the misdirection would be employed by the defendant, was it around specific points of interest in the story of what happened to Gannon? Yes. Such as what? Well, right now we were trying to figure out who had him to get at the identity of that. And that was where we were focused. And then instead of giving a name, she would give conditions. But looking back at the phone calls, she would do the same thing with Al. Uh, it was a condition of their relationship status first before she would give a location of Gannon. Do you remember her making a statement right after what we just watched where she says, I'm not the one? Yes. Um, and you then go through a, a description of extradition to Colorado and being in jail. Yes. Okay. We're going to play that next. And that starts at three hours, one minute, 41 seconds through three hours, three minutes and 33 seconds. I'll just play it directly from here, actually, because it's only six seconds later. And most of these happen. They happen in the house with parents I who get, love their parents. I get what you're saying. Okay. I understand. I appreciate what you're saying. I appreciate all the work and time and dedication you put into all of these things to have this. But I am not the one. But then if you're not the one, you're, you're going. So do you know what happens from here? What? You go to a local holding cell. Okay. They hold you for 24, up to two weeks until you get extradited back to Colorado. Okay. You're in jail, Leticia. And unless you tell me that somebody else did this, you're the only one that did it. No, I didn't do it. But I'm telling you. But I didn't. But that's what would be horrible, is if someone else did this, 
And you're going to let them skate because you're scared? Not letting someone skate. If what I, could you possibly be scared of at this point? I'm not letting. Do you think I would say here and let someone skate if I could take you directly to the person right now? Why do you think I would need resources? You don't need resources. Right now, what you need is that if someone took my son yeah, and I know who it is, Am I going to go to jail for the rest of my life because someone else took my son? No, absolutely not. No, and would I be afraid of my own protection going to jail when I could be free and that person could go to jail? That yeah, doesn't but she make any sit sense. there. Even if I walked you to the person, she just sit there and said, oh, well, I can't make any promises. I can't make promises. What's it better? To go to jail for the rest of your life and, and hope that we find a person or to point us to a person? If I'm in your position, it makes no sense. Right. What could you be scared of at this point? Reprisals? No. Um, the fact that I'm, you don't have... Apparently, you would have found some of this already if you would have had the resources. That's what scares me. So stopping you at three hours, three minutes, and 33 seconds. Um, after you explained the extradition, you said you're the only one that did this. Um, does she then use misdirection again to get you off topic and move you away from trying to press her? Yes. What about the, what's your impression of that very end where um, what scares me from her perspective is you would have found this if you had the resources. What's your take on that? It's uh, what I explained to her earlier that she's expecting me to know answers to the questions that only she has the answers to. Is she also in a sense um, challenging whether you even have the, the ability as an FBI agency to provide her the things that she's putting down as conditions. Yes. Did you confront her by saying uh, right after this, her story makes no sense? I did. So I'm going to jump, jump to that section. It's uh, three hours, three minutes, and 49 seconds. And it goes through three hours, four minutes, and 59 seconds. So your story makes no sense. And what it goes back to now okay. is that you can't take responsibility for what happened to I, Gannon. I didn't do anything to Gannon, sir. You can't insert someone else in here unless you're going to tell me who it is. Okay, I didn't do anything to Gannon. That's fine. But then you would tell me who it is if you I did didn't it to someone do else. anything to Gannon. Did he do it to himself? Okay. I didn't do anything to Gannon. I'm not asking you if you did. I'm asking you, did, did Gannon do it to himself? Do what to himself? the head injury, the neck injury, whatever that was that caused that pool of blood down by the bottom of its bed. You know, the, the sheets and all that stuff, the blood seeped down in. And what now? The blood seeped down that, through that corner. Sheets? Through the sheets into the mattress. I have no idea what you're even talking about. You cleaned it up off the wall. So wait, wait, wait. There's, you How know where the head of its bed was? I don't know anything about blood and sheets, okay? I did not take any sheets and clean them. You told Al on the phone you cleaned up the wall. So now paused at three hours, four minutes, and 59 seconds. Um, you start to confront her about the head injury and the blood and all that sort of thing. Um, did she use misdirection there again, directing away from the head injury? Yes. What's What was significant about that to you? By this point, you know, none of my questioning was effective with her. So every time we would go to one of these and she would misdirect, um, the significance just was that I was going to have to change course yet again. Again, was this happening as you're trying to dive into what actually happened again, but then she diverts over to the sheets? Yes. Um. Uh, What's happening here where someone's come in and said something to you and then you're getting up to leave? So Letitia had requested to talk to me off camera and the uh, police department could not turn the camera off. So they had decided to get us a separate room and myself and Special Agent Cohen were going to speak with Letitia off camera in this other room. Oh. And so is there a period of time where the room is just empty while you're off with the defendant in some other room? Yes. Okay. So we're going to talk about that. And so the, um, let me, 
I'm going to play it until both of you are out of the room and then we'll pause it again. Okay. And the teacher, for your request, you can leave that recorder in there. We're going to a room that doesn't record. Are you sure you don't need to go to the restroom? Okay. You need anything to eat? Take your water with you just in case. Okay. okay. So uh, before we get into this off camera discussion that you had with the defendant, that little portion where she was inside the room by just herself, what, did you see anything in there that caused you concern as to her mental faculties? No. Did she appear to be acting normal to you? Yes. Okay. This off camera discussion, um, Let's talk about first the just the process that was undertaken here. Who was involved with it, first of all? Uh, well, Myrtle Beach arranged for us to have a, another room to talk with her in. I, I believe chairs were already put out. It was a lot bigger room than this one, from what I recall. And uh, myself, I introduced, uh, or I guess Special Agent Cohen introduced himself, and we just sat in the middle of the room to see what she had to say. And when you say Special Agent Cohen, you're talking about the guy sitting here? That guy, yes. That guy? Should we call him that guy from now on? <laughs> uh, how long would you say that portion of, of your interaction with the defendant lasted? I recall about 30 or 40 minutes, maybe. Was she talking to you in that room much the same way we've been seeing in this recorded interview? Yes. Can you give the jury um, some ideas to what that means? It was more of needing protection that I recall. Uh, the, the primary things I remember from this was that this person or people that she was uh, saying was responsible for Gannon might have been associated with an app that was on her phone and that Al had wanted Letitia to participate in a threesome and this person that was part of the threesome might be the person responsible for Gannon's disappearance. When you say um, these people, is she pointing her finger away from herself saying these people or is she saying these people that are inside of herself? No, it's another person or, and why I say people is when she's talking to me, it sounded like a group. So I'm leaving that just kind of open, but she was referring to this threesome as like it was another female who was involved that if we find who's in, in this app, we might find the person who abducted Gannon. And the, when you're saying app, you're talking about, was she saying an app on a phone? That's correct. Okay. And when, when we're talking about these other people, um, just to be very clear, she's not, well, is she saying that these other personalities that are inside of her own self, no. other persons or personalities? No. Okay. Did she describe in that portion of your interview, this off camera, uh, a different way in which Gannon suffered a head injury? Yes. What was that? I believe it was the pushing the beds together. 
Okay. Uh, did she describe that as occurring on Saturday night? So that would be January 25th. Yes. Do you remember um, her giving you any description as to her looking at and assessing that injury? Yes, Leticia said she looked at the injury, assessed it, and said it wasn't uh, very egregious. Did she include specifically that it didn't even need stitches? Yes. Did she give a description as to where on the head um, that injury occurred? I don't recall at this point. Okay. If you saw your report, would that refresh your memory? Yes. Okay. Hold on just a second. 11721. No, I'm not seeing it in this particular report. So let me come back to that in just a moment. Um, <clears throat> did she talk to you about taking a SIM card from her phone? Yes. What did she say about that? Yeah, I don't remember that either. Sorry. Okay. Well, that one is definitely in this report that I've got in my hand right now. Um, before I get to that, though, were you aware uh, from the investigation that her cell phone was seized by El Paso County Sheriff's Office uh, on January 29th when she tried to leave the Sheriff's Office during her interview? Yes. Um, do you know or are you aware of cell phones having SIM cards that are in them? Correct. Uh, and so her indication that she still had a SIM card from that phone, would that be uh, factually possible? It should not be. Okay. I'm going to show you again. This is 721. I'm sorry, 7219. Some card sections here. Um, this is paid pagination 11 7220, page 3 of 4. Look at that when you're done. Okay. Did that refresh your memory? Yes. What did she say about the SIM card? She said that it was the SIM card she had previously, but she had placed it in her friend's phone. Okay. Did she describe getting a bunch of messages then at that time? Yes. Was this another distraction in your mind? Yes, it was nothing that we thought was possible. I, I don't even know if... The investigation was able to verify it or not because that happened after my involvement. Okay. And then going back to um, that head injury issue that we were talking about earlier, uh, where I asked if it would refresh your memory to see the report, I just didn't pick up this one page. It's 11, 7, 2, 1, 8. May I approach and uh, have him review that page? Okay. Go ahead. This is the last paragraph on this page. Thanks. Okay. Did that refresh your memory? It did. Um, where did she describe that head injury um, that was caused by pushing the beds together occurring on Gannon's head? She said it was a gash in his left temple. Did she also give a full assessment of other injuries during this portion? No. Okay. Was there some discussion here about um, Angel and Petco? Yes. What do you remember her saying about that? Well, we discussed Angel later uh, on back on camera uh, but uh, i remember angel coming up 
as a result of this app and the threesome that happened is Angel was a female who may have been involved in Gannon's disappearance. And this Angel is potentially the one that the defendant was suggesting might have been contacted for the threesome issue? Correct. Shortly after that portion of the discussion, do you come back on camera with the defendant? Yes. All right. I'm going to retrieve that page of the report from you. And jump to uh, the next time that you're in the room, which is three hours, 13 minutes, and 25 seconds. Is this um, immediately uh, after you get out of that separate room that's not recorded, do you then discuss Angel on camera? Yes. Is that what we're about to watch here? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to play uh, three hours, 13 minutes, and 25 seconds through three hours, 25 minutes, and 41 seconds. Judge, this is about a 12-minute gap of time. So maybe you want Mr. Grusing to step down? Okay. All right. For the, for the district attorney, the, for this protection thing with uh, Angel, we have to know the last name, all that stuff, how you met her. I mean, I know you say that app and whatever, but how else do we identify Angel? Yeah, I would say just reach out maybe. Can you describe her? Yeah. What does she look like? She looks like a house. Yeah. <laughs> Like, she's but where all have you met her? When did she come to your house? Did you say in September? And then who, did, who all did she babysit? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Quite a few people that live here. So these messages that are coming through to your phone, the you know threats or whatever they are, are they coming from her? So we can get on the What is her Snapchat name? I would need to have my phone. But do you remember? Did it have her name in it? Was it a numbers? That's why I asked for help, but he's not going to help. So, to, to tell you about it, but we have to know. I don't and if I'm not going to get any help, I would have to get help. I trusted you. Well, we, we went in there. I know. And, and I don't know, Leticia, if it's just the way you're used to communicating right. over a long period of time. But yeah. when, when you're asked a question, you don't really answer. You, you kind of go in a little circle. So right. if I, I said, like, hello. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, like, where did you last see Gannon? And then you said, well, it's supposed to drop off, you know. Yeah. So we're just used to asking you a question, mm -hmm. and then you tell us an answer. Mm -hmm. and it's just, you know. Mm -hmm. I just don't, you know, I've always, like, just, okay. So, are you, that's just how you've always done for like the last, what, five, ten years? I mean, most of the time, I didn't feel like I was going to help me. Like, you it, know... It's going to look bad. No, I'm not. That's not what I'm talking about. I will... It's not even going to look like that. 
And here's what it's going to look like, is that you were the last one on the scan, and nothing on this angel thing, we, can, or we, we can't authenticate any of that. When you say it's all off camera, like with the black and Paula in the parking lot, we have cameras for that whole place, and we don't see you meet okay. with anybody. Well, can, can you, like, show me that so that I can show you where, what direction? But you would know where it is. Where did you, you said meet? what direction, because I'm not going to show you. Did you talk about what direction? Like, where it would be at, then maybe you could pull, like, a few buttons and pull the camera off another place. And then you said there's lots of places you could pull the camera off of. That's all I'm asking for that. That's, that's offering help. Yeah, it's it's well, but Gannon goes into what, this car. I mean, this I is the person that you trust, I do. right? That's the thing. Why am I saying Angel. Do So then, why would yeah. you go home and say that he's here? That he's now gone away. You're never, leading. I never said he was here. Now gone. Well, that you were. At, he was at the house. Yeah, but do you see where I'm going? With that? Why, why would you make up that story to law enforcement? That he was going to a friend's house. Because if her nephew was a friend. I mean, I don't understand how that's a problem. Angel's nephew was a friend. Oh, that's right, that they had played together. But she was, did she live in your area? Where did she live? I mean, Thing is, I'm like constantly, like stuff will come through, you know, people sending stuff, saying stuff. But the people, are they different people from Angel? I mean, are they acting on her behalf? Because that doesn't sound like a friend to me. Obviously, if, if they're not helping with your child, they're not friends. But how do you think that makes them trusting people? You see, it doesn't make them Irresponsible. Yeah. Do you know who tells the story from here on out? Your story? I asked for help. But do you know who tells the story? Could how this works out from here? Could you to open the There is an angel. Well, just like we found Quincy Brown right away, we can find Angel. But if there's not an Angel, that's the last story you're going to tell law enforcement about Gannon. Sure. Well, but I mean, we'll be able to get, we'll get your warrants for that threes thing, whatever else. We'll go interview this Angel. And if it's like what I think Quincy Brown is, then Angel is just going to I will help you. Okay. I tried to get your help. When I gave you the wrong information, you tried to but I think I can help you. How is that? But I'm happy to chase down anything. You can. And I can. It's what I think that I'll left you alone. Because he's gone to Alaska for so long, and then he's on this trip, and you're left raising Gannon, and something bad happens. I don't know if it's your fault or Gannon's, it doesn't really matter. And you panic. And you ask, was I the person talking for Al? Yes, I was. But I think the closest you came was talking about his head injury. And then, because you asked Al, you asked Al. I would have, like. No. If someone took your son. You would have called. I did call. You should not call the police. Yes, I did. I that's called the police. The Petco, right when they, right when he was taken. No, that's not taken. He was supposed to be playing. I, as soon as he was at home, I did. But you, did, you were supposed to meet her what the next morning? No, I called immediately when at six o'clock at the time he was supposed to be home. I called the police. I did. And then what did you tell him? You already know what I told them. Yeah, but that doesn't make it. That doesn't make any sense. Why doesn't? Yes. Because you, I told you, I have talked to a lot of people that are sitting in the same chair you are right now, and I've seen them. And, and I'm sorry if it offends you if I say story, but that's the only way you're coping with this right coping. now. Coping. Yes. Yeah. We all cope. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you did. I'm just saying that you're unwilling to come to the truth because it's going to be painful. I gave you the truth. I did hurt you. That's the truth. So the last truth you want to tell me, just to make sure, is the angel story. I'm not going to say anything else because you didn't help me. I will help you if you will tell me one concrete way to find Gannon. Okay. Letitia. You're not trying to help me. Yes, I am. I'm not trying to You can be a hero here. You can. I'm far from a hero. But you can be. Because I'm a parent. You are a parent. Do not hurt a child. You're a parent who was left behind to deal with his stepson and stepkid. Is this a problem? No, it's a problem when something like something like this happens in the house. What kind of problem will take care of our children? Then what happens? That's not a problem. That's not a problem at all. Like for you to say that to someone, it's hurtful. That's what's hurtful. It's not a problem to take care of children. It's not a problem to take care of children, but bad things happen in the house all the time. In the house? No. Yes. No, no. I mean, John, no. No. You want me to walk through where all the blood was, or do you know it I already? I don't. Hmm? I know for a fact that I did not hurt him. How was your the bottom of your shoe? And as long as I can, can live with that and know that God knows I did not hurt him, then I'm okay with that. Well, you could convince yourself of that all day. Okay. But, sir, that's not helping me, sir. Is there a way for me to help you? Even okay. if you're trying to convince yourself it didn't happen, okay. is there some way for you to say through a third party? Whatever you think. I don't know what else to tell you, but I did not hurt you. Did not. Then you won't tell me who did. Would not. All that blood would not be in the house if Angel just I met would. him in a pet coat. Like, that's far beyond what you're even talking about. What is far beyond? There's like many of times we've had blood in our house. Do you remember the spray that was on the wall? I mean, goodness gracious. I've, I've seen the markers from the spray. The spray went from the bed all the way up here. Well, you had to clean it up. Smear? No, it's not a okay. smear. Whatever. It's a spray. All right, sir. I don't know what you're talking about. Spray? I don't know what that means. It's called spatter. I don't, I don't, I don't know anything about that. Oh, okay. it, it comes from aspirated. You're going to hear all this anyway, so I'll tell you. It comes from aspirated blood. Okay. You know what that means? No. Nope. It means that he didn't accidentally do it. Okay. Okay. Whatever. Well, that's what we were waiting on for okay. the warrants because somebody struck Gannon in the bed. <laughs> no. If no. someone, if someone struck Gannon in the bed. Thank God, we we were all drugged. Then, if that's what if that's what you're saying happened, that's thank what the God, said. we were all drugged. Well, then, can you tell me how that blood got on the wall? Sir. That's Gannon's blood on the wall. Okay, well, I guess there. If you think you have all the answers, then you're making me guess. I'm not. I'm You've not, got the answers. I'm not making you guess, sir. I just I'm not. I'm going to be respectful to you because you offered to help me. You didn't help me, so I'm. Just going to sit here. So we've got it paused at three hours, 25 minutes, and 41 seconds. <clears throat> Mr. Grusing, um, this continuation of the discussion about Angel, was there any indication in the investigation that somebody by the name of Angel was involved in Gannon's disappearance? No. Uh, at the Beginning when you asked her for her being the defendant for a description of Angel, what did she say? She said that Angel looks a lot like herself. Do you remember the um, defendant saying that she had no motive to do this? Yes. Um, we're we're going to play that next. It's three hours, 26 minutes through three hours, 34 minutes. Uh, so about eight minutes, Judge. I don't know if you want him to stay up for eight minutes or not on the stand or not. Um, give me just a minute. Okay. Where is it? Um, you can, it's up to you, Mr. Grusing, if you want to stay there for the eight minutes or I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a step school, I think. Uh, 
<coughs> I've got it at three hours, 26 minutes and zero seconds. So having skipped roughly 19 seconds, and then we're gonna play through three hours, 34 minutes. If someone presents us with evidence, then we just follow the evidence. Okay. Right well, now, you're the last person with okay. cannon. Then mm -hmm. I don't do bad things to people. I don't. I don't think you do bad things okay. to people. I don't do bad things to anyone, and I didn't do anything bad to Gannon. I think something bad happened to Gannon, and I don't know of a way to get you to tell me about it. Okay. I tried through Al to get you to tell me about it. We've tried here. Okay. You came, and I think what I think you have a defense mechanism. What I think your defense mechanism was, you need to go into another room, you tell us. No, that was not no defense mechanism. I trusted you to talk to you because I thought you If you help. trusted me to talk to me, you would tell me where Gannon is right now. I don't know. Do you know where he last was and it wasn't at the code. Okay. okay. Well, so you, you can't make me guess. That's not I'm fair not, to me. Why would I keep not fair to Gannon. if you're not going to help me? You tell me how to help you. I already did. I already did tell you. I told you how you could help. And Nobody holds the kid like that. Okay, her. okay, that's what you think. No, it, I'm just saying. Okay. If sir. the sun comes up in the morning, it goes down at night every okay. day. We have sir. worked hundreds of these things. That's what you think. Okay. Me talking to you is not going to do anything else because all you're going to do is go think that you're going to get me to say something that I did that I didn't do. That is not what I mean. Because I did not do anything to Gannon. Why would I hurt our child? I had everything in the world. Why? I have no motive. None. Don't have the first motive. Everything I wanted in my life, I had it. Why? Does it make any sense? It doesn't make sense a lot of the time what happens inside yeah. of a house. I, sir, I don't even know what you're talking about. I All I can tell you is, I don't know. No reason to. In fact, to go on the record, I had a way better relationship with Gannon than I did with Lana. Way better. So much alive. We, we always like the same thing. We always have problems with our stomach. We always do all these things. Do you know that there's almost a correlation sometimes between how much you get along with someone and how bad things happen in the house? I'm telling you that. I don't, I don't. Well, maybe bad things happen in your they house. Happen, they happen in the house a lot more than maybe, they do out of public. Maybe bad things happen in your house. But do you, would it help if we showed you pictures of what we saw <laughs> on the wall? And by the bed? Uh, when you, you say nothing bad happened, you can't get around. Yes, Al, but we did not show Al that on purpose. He had to come get stuff out of the house. Mm -hmm. And he looked and saw the blood tool was about this mm -hmm. big on the concrete. Okay. And that is what? not from a little gash like okay. that. Okay, and then what? And then you showed this to him, or how did no. he see this? He had to come get stuff out of the house. I wasn't even there that right. day. After. You allow people to stay in this house for a week. I did not allow anybody to do anything. Someone did. Okay, well, that's not my call. Okay, so... So what I'm saying, though, is the wounds that you're describing okay. to him, even what? when you're saying what? it doesn't... Sir, I'm going to tell you now. When you say the head thing was Saturday. The, what I'm going to tell you now is people were inside of a home living, and it was not me. So maybe, maybe you can talk to whoever allowed people to live in the home, okay? Whatever you're saying that was done extra or whatever, maybe you can talk to those people who were allowed to stay in a home during this supposedly, okay? That's what I think. Maybe you can talk to people who were... You're saying that the injury to Gannon happened... I'm not saying anything except I know you're telling me this stuff and you're saying this about, oh, how bad these were and these things were. All I can tell you is maybe you can talk to the people that were allowed to stay in the home during this time. During this time that you have this supposed evidence, people that were allowed to stay in the home and people that were allowed to walk in and out to see it, supposedly. Okay? So Gannon was in all these wounds happened after he went. I'm not saying anything other than 
sir, you are you are telling me, you just sit here on record and telling me that Albert went inside somewhere that you were supposed to have as a supposed crime scene. I wasn't there for that. If you want, I can get an answer for you about who was with him. I, that's not what I'm asking you. I'm saying for you. You as a professional, you would have allowed that, supposedly? If he has to go get stuff, Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure that's As long as the scene had been processed. Okay, processed, sure. Okay. I'm sure, that's how, do that. I'm sure that's how it works in this country. Doesn't it sound a little bit weird to you? If the scene has been processed, okay. no. I had a girl that was burned alive in a house in Bailey. We scene not realized. The scene was processed supposedly when people were still there, day one, day two, day three, and the scene was processed. Day four, day five, day six, and the scene was processed. You're saying that people were going in and out of the house, civilians, while they were processing the scene. I'm, I'm asking you that because apparently you, you said the scene was processed, and then there's you want me to talk to you when I know that how shady that whole situation is, and you want me to give you answers for how shady that is. So you need right. to tell me in the scene that was processed, day one, day two, day three, day four, there was nobody going in and out. There was people living there. Right. Okay. When they thought Gannon was still alive. Okay. Living there. Okay. But you're saying the scene is processed because you, not you, but people surely were there. It's all on camera that there was crime scene people there while people were living there. Of course, because they didn't know the severity of the scene. Okay. They just thought Gannon was a ran away, like you said, okay. to go see a so neighbor. The point is, how am I supposed to put my trust and faith in any bit of the system like that? When that was going on, how? So you're trying to put faith in the system. No, or you no I'm, talking to, you. I'm right. talking to you. I'm saying if you would have told police the very first night that he was taken forcibly, everything would have been different. That's not forcibly. Okay. I said exactly what I said, which was he didn't come back at six o'clock. You would have said other people have him and they should not have him. It would have been different. You controlled the way that law enforcement responded. I did. So now it's my fault that they... Yes, by you saying he's going, walking in around there, to play with a friend. Had people in there doing a supposed crime scene, and now you have all this stuff after you let people live there. And now you want to look at me and say something. Sir, I did not hurt Gannon. Okay? Okay, well, who did? Did not. Who did? Did not. Just like all why of these you, other things. Why are you telling me you did not? I don't care if you did or not. I'm just Keisha. telling you. I guess you do care. No, I don't. You're father. You would care. I care about Gannon. I don't care if you did it or not. <laughs> or I didn't. Okay. But you're saying you did it, but that doesn't help us find you. Okay. Well, I didn't do it. I didn't do anything. I would not. No motive. No reason. I'm not asking you about motive or reason. A child. No reason. Who did? No reason. So we paused it at three hours, 34 minutes, Mr. Grissy. <laughs> Mr. Grissy, um, at the beginning you talked to, or made a statement about a defense mechanism going into the other room. What was the purpose of you saying that? Well, defense mechanism or misdirection. I was trying to, you know, own in on what happened that day. And neither I nor Special Agent Cohen found her story about Angel to be credible. This tangent that we're that we just witnessed happening where um you're trying to get her to give who hurt Gannon, right? That challenge of that. And then she's talking about the scene instead. What was your impression of that? It, it was another, yet another um, attempt to knock me off my line of questioning, another misdirection. As you can see, she's very effective at doing it. And um, I was telling her that the whole reason that law enforcement responded like they did was based on her initial report. But as you, she continues to talk over me and saying that because of the way she created Gannon just being at a friend's house, now that is a problem. It's, it's yet another big hurdle that I've got to overcome to get to what happened to Gannon. In that last clip that we played where it's the discussion about Angel, did, in some respects, did she actually revert back to Gannon is with a friend and didn't come home on time? 
Yes. So reverting back to the very original story that she told the police on January 27th. Right. Uh, that statement that she makes in this particular portion, uh, she likes Gannon way more than Elena, than Lena. You remember that? Yes. Uh, when you went through those searches with her earlier in the interview, did you find any, or did you recount any searches, I should say, um, to the defendant about uh, involving stepdaughters or Lena specifically? No. Uh, in fact, um, you read to her some of those searches. One of them, I don't like my stepson. Correct. I don't like my stepson. Should I get a divorce? Yes. Did you ask her um, after this portion of the discussion about Quincy and Eduardo and the mountains? I did. What were you trying to get to there? Well, as you could see with this story, it didn't take her long to get off of Angel and then divert to other people being in the house. And I wanted to just address the other stories yet again. And again, where we are at this point is we're still trying to find clues about where Gannon is. Uh, and I had already explained to her that I think the closest she came to describing Gannon's injuries was uh, when she spoke about Quincy Brown. So I decided to go back there and give that a try. What do you mean by that, that the closest she was to describing uh, Gannon's true injuries was when she was talking about um, Quincy Brown? Tell me what you're talking about. Well, I never saw the full autopsy uh, and to, of what happened to Gannon. I only heard about it secondhand, but when she was describing uh, the head, the the hands, the knees, and the blood uh, pouring. That's that's the most descriptive. Uh, she had she had come with us with with us meaning investigative team, even including here. So that was the the most descriptive as far as any potential injuries that she was willing to tell the investigation. Correct. <clears throat> so we're at three hours thirty four minutes and fifty seconds. We're going to play a five minute clip. Uh, three two, three hours, 39 minutes and 50 seconds. If you give me another name, I will chase that person. You've tried, you've tried Eduardo in the house, you've tried Quincy Brown up in the mountains, now you've tried Angel. I never stayed down by the mountain. Yes, you did. You were supposed to ride a bike oh, up there in the mountains with Quincy Brown. But I know, never told you that. You, were, you said you knew I was in the room. I didn't say I knew you. I didn't even know who well, you were. FBI. Never know who you were. I said I didn't never say FBI either. That's not what I said. Law enforcement. No, I said I know someone is listening. That's not gotta be us. No, it could be anybody. That's, 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 I, exactly. There's no there's no point of arguing that. You're not gonna help me. I think you could control this story by you, Well you you I'm are concerned about, about what other people you. think. I've been completely respectful to you and I have talked to you I've been respectful to you and kind to you I did all these things to you because that was just that's who I am so I was raised wasn't raised to be bad to people I don't think you're a bad person but I think bad things happen all the time I've seen why bad things have to happen because an 11 year old boy is not home and he's not hanging out with somebody okay sir okay I'm glad that you think something so bad happens all the time. I'm sorry that you have to have this uh, stood up of nothing but no compassion and all that. I'm sorry for that. I really am. But I have no reason, no reason, none, to hurt anyone in my family. None. None. Can you tell me why there's blood on the bottom of your shoe? The I don't know. they were covered in the garage. In the garage? Or, or in the top of the washer or something. People were, did you think I didn't walk around in shoes? It's with Gannon's blood on the bottom? What does that got to do with anything? It's, I've already get told you. We were outside unloading stuff. What has that got to do with anything? We are outside unloading my car. I mean, come on. That doesn't, that doesn't mean somebody's a bad person and done something wrong. That's her. No. Something like that. To hurt Gannon, innocent, loving, help me out more than any person in the household. More than Albert. 
more than anyone. Help me. Help Thank me. you, Andrew, that too. No, help me. You know how much you'd be helping me with everything, pulling everybody up the slack? Who did it? And I think that's why this is so hard. You're right. It's hard. You're right. It's hard because I didn't hurt you. Not having help with me, that is hard. Very hard. Knowing that right now, sitting at home, Anna knowing the situation, you know what Anna would do? He would wait on me anything I would ask him just to make sure I was okay. I anything. I doubt that. Oh, he would. Before even Albert would even do it, he would. If he was sitting here right now and needed anything from me to ask him to do anything, he would do. So there's no there's no intention, motive, reasoning, nothing. Again, nothing to hurt him in any kind of way. None. Nada. You did say on the phone calls there was no premeditation involved. Yeah. You said I I mean I was saying to Albert, like he was if you're talking about when Albert was asking me that, mm -hmm. I was simply saying, because you were trying to get him or whoever was trying to get him to walk me down some pathway of whatever it may be, whatever that may be. Come on, sir. I don't I didn't wake up and be like, oh, my life changed today. That's not how it works in life. Bad people, whether you say do this or do that or do that or do this, they just do bad things no, to people. That's not very true. Okay, well, I told you good people do bad things. I think, I are you a good person? Yes. And you do bad things? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But you have, if you had any key to telling us where Gannon is, you would tell it to us if you were a good person. Would you not? And so. So pausing it now at um, three hours, 39 minutes, and 50 seconds. <clears throat> At the very beginning of this, uh, you said, if you give me another name, we'll chase that down. Have you ever tried to go back and count uh, the number of different versions of stories this defendant gave during the pendency of this investigation? No, I have not. Is it too many to count? I just haven't sat down and done it. It's yeah. quite a few. Yeah. Um, and then variations of maybe like the Quincy Brown story has different branches of that story. Correct. Uh, the um, Eduardo story has different branches on that story. Yes. The Gannon was playing with a friend and didn't come home. Are there different branches to that story? Yes. Uh, and then we get the pregnant woman with a, a money in her belly story. Different story? Right. Uh, why did you tell her you don't think you're a bad person? What was the purpose of that? It's hard to get someone to talk about something bad if they think the person talking to them already thinks they're bad. Were, were you hoping that she would, that would maybe loosen her up and she would give you some information? Well, and yeah, I, I think she did not intend for this, whatever the awful thing was that happened to Gannon to happen. That's what you were trying to get her to Correct. believe you were thinking? Yes. Okay. Were you actually thinking that? Yeah, we didn't. I didn't know how all this started as far as uh, I was only taking my role in this investigation. I was not the case agent. Uh, my role was just to speak with Leticia, take in as many facts as I could for these interviews. And so I was taking in what she was saying, and she was putting it back again to me with a foot injury on Saturday and now a head injury on Saturday. So we've got a progression of things happening. And I was just gathering from her what I can and passing it on to the investigative team. When you said those things, um, you obviously didn't have, Gannon's body had not been recovered yet. That's correct. Hadn't heard anything about an autopsy and the number of injuries that he had suffered. Yes. Okay. Do you remember asking her um, right after this clip that we just saw about where did you last see Gannon? Yes. Why, why did you want to go down that path? In my experience, uh, especially if you have a 
close relationship with someone who has disappeared, you are clearly able to articulate the last time that you saw that person. And so far in the phone calls with Al and even with my time, she has not said what that very last sighting of him was. Okay, we're gonna jump to that section now. Three hours, 40 minutes and 59 seconds. And we're going to play it through three hours, 45 minutes and five seconds. Yes. Your, your argument isn't going to work, Leticia. Arguing about what? Your argument that somebody took him. You're not going to be able to tell that story. Okay. If you help us today, okay. find out where Gannon is. If you can, because I'm, I have 100% confidence that you can tell me exactly where you last left Gannon. Okay. Now you're accusing okay. me. I'm just telling you what okay. the research shows, okay. what our investigation shows. Mm -hmm. Then listen. You, it, will look good. it will look much better than you. I didn't do anything. So what do you want me to look better at? I didn't do Are anything. Are you going to tell me right now that the last place you saw Gannon was really him getting me. into an impala? I'm, sir, I'm not going to say anything because you're not trying to help me. Finding Gannon would help you. Oh, yeah, I know. Don't well, you think that? Then tell me. Don't you him. think that? Don't you? I know it. You really don't think that? So tell me where he is and let me help you. I don't know where he is. Where did you last see him? I'm not, sir. I'm not. You proved that you were not going to help me. Okay. You did. You proved you were not going to help me. If you tell me where you last saw him, I can help you. I promise you that, Leticia. I don't get it. Then her Gannon. I mean... I don't know how to like write that out, say it in 10 different languages. So what do you want me to say? You didn't hurt Gannon? Did you kill Gannon? No. No. Did you put Gannon somewhere? No. You didn't put him in a dumpster. Mm -hmm. Dumpster? What? Bad because we've been tracking your car, we've been tracking, even when your phone is off, it can be tracked. Good, sir. I'm glad. And so we've, we've been going through dumpsters okay. all through. Is Gannon in a dumpster? Sir, you can go through Just please. whatever that, you that want would to go save through. us. Sir, that would save us I didn't hundreds of days. Just tell I didn't me if he's in a dumpster. Anything. Okay. That's fine. But okay. will you tell me if he's in a dumpster? I, if I didn't do anything to him, how am I answering that question for you? Whether it's Angel or who else? I'm not answering this question for you. Really? You sit here and ask them that? Because sir. because we want to find him, I would not ask you that question I didn't if it wouldn't help us do find anything him. To me. Nothing. Didn't hurt, harm, kill, nothing. Again, did not. Would not. Where's the last place you saw him, sir? You've already asked me all these questions. But that's an easy question. The last place you saw Gannon, which can really help us find him. Why would you not say that? If you had nothing because to do... Because I've already tried to help you. No, but if you had nothing to do, if you did not hurt, harm, anything, why would you not tell me the last place you saw him? Okay. Because it's a memory you don't want to look at. Memory? Yes. Really? I would think it's a memory. Okay. Gannon's been missing now for how many days? You know when you last saw him, but you won't tell the one agency that can find him. You already said... You already basically lost my whole ability. That's not a true that. story. That's worse than Quincy okay. Brown. All right. Okay. What about the pregnant lady with the money in her okay. stomach? Sir. Okay. Leticia, tell me the last place you saw him, okay. and we can find Gannon, and you can, that will help you so much in this case. Oh. Yes, it will. What do you think is going to help you now? If I walk out of here and we haven't got a lead on how to find Gannon, <laughs> all you've got is the story of. The stuff on the wall. You've got the blood. You've got blood all over the house. You've okay. got blood on the bottom of your shoes, okay. and you've got about seven lives. Okay. If you help us find Gannon, that will help you tremendously. And yet you won't tell me why. Yes, I will. I've just. So we've got it now. Paused at the end of that section. Three hours, forty-five minutes, and five seconds. Why'd you throw out the dumpster? There had been searches in dumpsters, and at that point, since we had no leads, I was hoping maybe she could at least, I was being truthful there, saying, can you at least narrow our world?
on what we're searching at this point because we didn't have a lead on where Gannon was. You just, and you were just trying to get that from her at that particular point? Yes. Do you remember uh, going from, from that discussion into asking her about any mental health issues that she was dealing with? Yes, I believe I asked her a second time after asking her initially. Right. Uh, and so that's what we're going to get into next. And that's at uh, timestamp three hours, 50 minutes, and 20 seconds. And it lasts for almost two minutes. So it goes to three hours, 52 minutes, and 18 seconds. So I'm starting it at three hours, 50 minutes, and 20 seconds. The one, not the one. You know, if I asked you ahead of time if you're having anxiety or depression or stuff like that. Anxiety, depression, you know, any other thing. Because to be honest with you, that's it. But have you been? You said Gannon's been seeing counselors. Have you been seeing counselors? Right. About teachings. One time. Uh, maybe she did it too because she was going to give the emotional support animal. Okay. Yeah, it was the two times on base. And we talked about not wanting to be in teaching anymore and all that route. Stress on the job. That was what we talked about. You had searched a little bit on the suicide stuff. What suicide stuff? Was that you or was that just random heat stroke? Suicide? Have you ever thought about suicide? Who? You. I'm not thinking about suicide. What's the suicidal person might say? That's what I was yeah, because I have someone in my family before that I that had said that to me, and I've looked up information. But that's not you. <laughs> wow. Well, how do you have things in their family go on too? You know that you maybe want to look up and be like, "Oh, this is going on." How they're doing with this? No. So <clears throat> when you're um, asking her about any mental health issues, um, did she indicate basically only two times? Yes. And, and what was the reason that she was seeing this counselor? Counseling on the base regarding her teaching, I believe. Okay. When you left the room here, um, what, what, did, what were you doing? Uh, I believe she asked if she, want, if she could make a phone call, and plus I wanted to check with our team, so I wanted to see you know, what was going on with them. Okay. When you came back in the room, did you start to ask her about uh, the board that was found with blood on it? Yes. Okay, we're going to jump to that. So we're at 3.55 in zero seconds. Um, that period of time in between, so when we stopped at 3.52.18 till when you're about to come back in the room at 3.55 in zero seconds, uh, was she just in the room by herself? Yes. Was she acting normal? Yes. Any concerning behavior from her? No. Okay, we're going to start, start it at 3.55 and go through... Uh, four hours, six minutes, and 11 seconds. So a little over 11 minutes. Thank you. At some point, we'll ask you how many steps it takes to get back and forth.
the rest of the morning. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to call to see that Harley got home. She did. Yeah, they talked with Harley, they talked with uh, Dee Dee, they talked with Laura. There were search warrants at Laura's house, Dee Dee's house, your van. I think that's it. But yeah, they, they got hiding back on. <laughs> Really, Dee Dee? Yeah, I told them that you, you know, I met you out of the car and you said you'd like Dee Dee to be the guardian in, in between time. Okay. What, um, what, what, why are you still in the house? I mean, because you stayed there. I mean, I'm saying, like, they're not in trouble, are they? No. Mm -hmm. Neither are Dee Dee in trouble. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. Well, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm asking you to help along the teacher. I do want to help. And, and whether you did this or not, it doesn't matter. Well, the reason they asked me is because I'll find what happened again. And if I can't get past, if I can't prove the story, whether you tell it to me, Al tells it to me, whether it's El Paso Sheriff's Office, you know, I, I don't take anything as true until I can prove it. With all the evidence that they have, the reason why it took so long is the district attorney wanted to wait and wait and wait till they made sure they could win in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. And I've done nobody homicide before. They have more on this case than we do on most of them. Okay. I don't want you to be the the way you can help yourself out of this thing. Is to give us even though it's very. You just said you got what you need, so why do. You, why do you need to keep asking me? Because you have a lot more well, why, but, you know. but if you have what you need, why do you keep asking me? Like, because our goal is to find Gannon. Okay. Our goal is not to prosecute you. That is the district attorney's job. We're investigators. And like, you, like you've just seen, I do a poor job about half the time because I have to get. Because as much as we try to track you with your cars and your phones and whatever else, there are gaps. We do have, like I told you, the blood in the house. We do have the blood on, we have, do you know about the board that was thrown in the forest? The teacher. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry, sir, what? It's okay. The board that has Gannon's blood on it that was thrown in the forest. So I, I all right, so what? You got your DNA on it. Okay. But then how do you explain stuff like that and then turn around sure. and say, but, sure. but then turn around and say, I don't know. Sure. I, I lived in the house with Gannon. I was Gannon's main caretaker. I wouldn't be surprised if everything I done didn't involve Gannon. Okay, okay, whatever. But that board was okay. from the house okay. and then it's up all by Highway 105. I've already explained to you about any kind of stuff that would have been from the foot. I've already told you that. And I don't know what you... But I mean, Gannon didn't go throw it up there. Okay, so now if someone threw it up there. So, so now if someone threw it up there. That's wrong, or whatever. <laughs> How did that board get up there? Sure. Now you're going on about the well, board. Letitia, I'm and I've so, already called about this board. Because yeah. you were there, right? Yes. And the sock and all this stuff, right? The sock had nothing to do with it. Okay. But yeah, he said it's all. But he did say it's all. Right. But the board is true. Sir. The board is right where your T1 was. Sir. Hickelon. Yeah. Yeah, because we tracked it. I, you could have gotten all that from me easily. You just got into the app. It's not a difficult thing. Like. Right. But if you track from where your T1 went but, and you look at where that board went. Now, okay, so this is why it's so, like, backwards so now my tig lawn but i was driving a truck and then now my tig lawn and now i mean next and then you tried on the rental car but then no you had three different cars there's and proof on the rental car and i didn't even get to drive it so I'm right like, there's low mileage on it but we don't know where you went because you had your phone on watch on yeah but you had your phone but the, but the, but the watch, watch is up in the forest somewhere isn't it no, 
for us. You guys have to watch. It's at El Paso Detention Center. That's the watch there. I thought you had an eye watch. That is. That's where the watch was at. Mm -hmm. um, my watch says it's clearly sitting in El Paso County. Okay. But your phone was off for a couple of days. A couple of days. The 27th, it was off when you were at, between the Petco's. But I had my watch on. Right. But what I'm saying... The watch tells you where you go. I mean, it's, yeah. it's mirrored. Yeah. But I'm telling you, we have holes in our investigation, and you can help us with that. Sure. I didn't even drive my car anywhere, really, other than just going to meet friends. You drove the Tijuana. Yeah, other than to meet friends, yes. So who do you mean? Yeah, friends. That can be a lead we can help find Gannon mm -hmm. with. You, you guys already know all my friends, so maybe... No, we that, don't know those up there. That should be the ones that you, you really know. We don't know the ones up there, I guarantee you. And like the guy said, oh, tire pressure and all this, then you would have saw where if I stopped anywhere or done whatever. Can't you tell me, though? Sir, instead of, so you instead of making me... Like, I've already had to tell you everything personal about her life. You have everything personal. I don't have where you, what friends you saw up there on 105. Where mm -hmm. that board is. But, look, I'm not going to admit to anything. I'm not saying you need to. I'm just saying tell me who your friends are up there and we can go talk to and them. And my TIG line wasn't even driven that way until okay, like, so maybe it was the, I don't. Later. How much later? I don't even know. Before, you, before they took it. Okay, so was the truck up there? Truck up where? Up that 105 area. Oh, good. How did I I was going to Castle where he said this. But, is that where the board was? It was in the back Sir, of the I don't truck. know where the board was at because I don't know. I really don't know. That's like you're asking me a question that I really don't know. So we, but we have a board okay. up there where you were driving okay. with Gannon's blood on it okay. with your DNA on it. Okay. So, so my DNA, which would be what? Skin cells. Okay. My skin cells, which I lived in a home. If that's what Correct. you're telling me. Yeah. And I've already told you that there was all this word in the garage. Yeah, but you never to told me that you took a piece out of the truck and flung it up there. Or put it or flung it. And, and again, Leticia, I think yeah. you get mad when I, I say a verb or something, where you, whether you placed it, flung it, dropped it, hit it. I don't know. But okay. all I know is that our FBI evidence response team recovered it. Okay. Did you take everybody else to now? As far as for their DNA? No, not the DNA to see if they put it there. Because you remember, these are the people that were in the house when I wasn't allowed, when I wasn't there. Did you check all them? The people in the house. Yeah, did you check the people in the house? Then? You mean the crime scene people? No, I mean the people that you, I'm sorry, I'm afraid that because you don't like you, that was allowed to stay there when all this stuff you're talking about would have been there. Okay? Correct. Did you check all these people? As far as their DNA? No. Even? Did, did you check to see if any of them did this? Drove and threw that wood up there? Did you check them? Their GPS, their phone. No, 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 no. Did, did you check them? Because that is complete, doesn't matter. You, so you need to tell me you checked Veronica's GPS and her phone? Did Okay. Judge, that's uh, now paused at four hours, six minutes, and 11 seconds, and it's 4.49. Is this a good place for a break? It is, Judge. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will have our uh, weekend break. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we will have our weekend, easy for me to say, we will have our weekend break. Uh, again, you must not communicate with others or among yourselves about the trial as it is going on. You must not do any independent investigation or research about the case. You must not discuss the case among yourselves in any way during the course of the trial. You may not discuss the case among yourselves until after you have heard all of the evidence and you begin to deliberate on a verdict. That'll be after the closing and instructions and all of that. In fairness, you must keep an open mind throughout the trial and you should reach your decision only during your deliberations at the end of the trial. Do not permit anyone else to discuss the case with you or near you. If anyone, including one of your fellow jurors, attempts to do so, report that fact immediately. 
Do not talk with any witnesses or with the defendant or with the attorneys in the case. You cannot talk to them and they cannot talk to you, even casually. You are permitted, however, to explain to family, friends, and employers that you are on a jury and inform them of how long the trial will last. You cannot say anything else about any aspect of your experience until you are released from jury service. Do not communicate about the case with anyone else in any way, including in person, by telephone, cell phone, computer, the internet, or any internet service. This means you must not email, text, instant message, tweet, blog, or post any information about this case or about your experience as a juror on this case on any website, list server, chat room, block, or website. You must not read, review, or accept any communications in any form from anyone regarding this case or cases like this. This applies whether you are here, at home, or anyone or anywhere else. Do not read about this case in the newspapers or on the internet, or listen to any radio or television broadcasts about the trial. The law even prohibits you from consulting a dictionary to clarify terms that may be used in this case. Um, with that, have a good weekend. Uh, enjoy the weekend. I don't think it's going to be as nice as it was last weekend. Uh, but it's Colorado. Just, just love it. Embrace it. So uh, we'll see you on Monday morning, uh, 9 o'clock. All rise for the jury, please. Thank you. May all be seated. Record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. Um, let's go through the uh, witness, or I'm sorry, the exhibit list um, for a moment. I have exhibits one through 43. Oh, nope, sorry. One through, yeah, that's right. One through 43. 46, through 103, 105, 198, 201 through 211, 220. Let's stop you. We don't have yep. 206 in. What? I'm sorry. 206 was, no, 206 was, it, it is in. It was introduced uh, through Mr. Stauk and then was uh, brought in through actually Harley Hunt, I think. Um, so let's go, let's see, um, 206 to 211, um, 220, 222 through 224. 226, 27, 28, 230 through 237, 239. Some have, uh... Maybe what we should do, and the easier way to do this might be I can show you what I have because it's, what is it, 40 pages? 50 pages, sorry, 49. I can show you what I have. Uh, you guys can take a look at it, see where you agree or disagree. Um, and we also have Defendant's Exhibit A. That's the only exhibit I have uh, so far from defense. Does that sound right? That's right. Okay. Um, and then, um, so you can take a look at what it is that I have, who it is that I admitted it through. 
um, because I uh, tried to take uh, accurate notes on that. Um, and then we'll see where there's a disagreement. Um, is there anything else that we need to take up at this point in time? Prosecution? Oh, yeah. Defense? Um, what does next week look like? And I suppose primarily when are we anticipating Dr. Gray's testimony? So obviously it's going to depend on witnesses ahead of that, but. I didn't know if he was, if you were going to try and sandwich him in somewhere, or if he was last or what. Well, the debate for us is either Dr. Gray or Torres judge. Um, so okay. it'd be one of those two. And it's at least as we're tentatively looking at that, it'd be Wednesday morning. Okay. We do have, uh, just so the courts are aware, we do have some witnesses that are going to be flying in from the East Coast. Three of them, as a matter of fact, and that's going to require some uh, massaging of our presentation of these witnesses. Okay. And we've also got a witness flying in from Hawaii as well. So that's okay. Dr. Grimmett. Okay, well, we will work around whatever it is that we need to work around. I was just trying to get uh, some idea then. Okay. All right, well, we'll see everybody on Monday morning then. Okay, thank you. Court will be in recess. Yes. <laughs>